Ukraine. Ich bin nicht sicher. Das ist doch nicht hängen. 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 Thank you for starting the meeting. Just when I was calling the meeting to order, uh, a, delegate, a delegate called me regarding the legislation that's on today's agenda. And I was trying to uh, um, end the call. But I uh, thank you for trying to start uh, the meeting here. We'll call this meeting to order. But before we do that, let's do a roll call first to establish a quorum for the record. Ramona, if you would uh, uh, do a roll call for us, please. Chair Chairman Hingyo, good morning, Budget and Finance Committee members. We'll call for the Budget and Finance Committee of the Navajo Nation Council regular meeting, July 12, 2022. Honorable Jamie, can you? Good morning, I'm present. Thank you, Honorable Jamie, can you is present. Honorable Raymond Smith, Jr. Not present. Thank you, Honorable Raymond Smith, Jr. is present. Honorable Jimmy Yellow here. Honorable Jimmy Yellow here. Honorable Elmer P. Begay. Honorable Elmer I'm P. President. Thank you. Honorable Elmer P. Begay is present. Honorable Amber Kenneth Bot Crotty. Uh, Shada, this is Delegate Crotty. I'm on the line. Good morning, Yate. Thank you, Yate. Today is your Honorable Amber Kenneth Bot Crotty is present. Honorable Nathaniel Brown. Honorable Nathaniel Brown. Chairman, we have four members upon roll call and two members not entering. Chairman. Thank you for the roll call. Uh, we do have a quorum, so let's continue with our meeting. I'll call this meeting to order at 10 10 a.m. on July 12, 2022. And this is a special uh, Budget Finance Committee meeting. Uh, no, good morning, Shanta, Budget Finance Committee, for being on the call. Uh, let's continue on uh, this morning with the uh, invocation, a prayer. Would you lead us in that prayer this morning? Chair Henio, Akela, Sudazan, Ain't Ado, Ashi hit Sudazan, the Hododo, Ashi being Shahat Sudazan, Adish, Shanadad, and Tlayado, Pasanos, and Yat Epen. Dear God, Koda, Inan Shalodo, Machaya, special media party. Irritant <laughs> ebatsotsen <laughs> President Nezo, Katie Dasatagi, Vice President Leiser, Chief Justice,
Introduction of guests and recognizing guests and visiting officials of Ta. So I've not yet questioned that budget finance committee members, a Kona Sitra, the Antinita for so far, but Lashe and the Ate Holland in Little Dina. So I have not yet vice chair Smith and Sinatinch, and she doubt in the audience that is signed in Lashinda, tuning the Ila Hela, Dani Nidans and she saw. Vice chair Smith. Okay, lad, uh, Chair Henry, glad uh, to so the artist. She uh, has Vice Chair Smith, she has uh, Raymond Smith Jr., and then she has uh, uh, the passage in Don Kitachini, as she has one of the eight as she has done, and she has done my eight whole day, and she has been a good day. She has been a good day, and 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 she has been a good day. At the cheat days are the hint of Adam Bay, a kinkilo, say, told a yacht, a almost to get an afternoon. That was here. I hear that, sir. To shake her, sir, Snada West Chessman. I don't know, so hold the show. Snada, Jamil here, are you on the line? She nassed out, Snada, Delia Embrickinus Bakari. Don't get Amber, can I stop Crowdy? You see, I'm not so sure that they'll get Nathaniel Brown. They'll get Nathaniel Brown. No, 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 Delegate Elmer P. B. Gay. Today, oh, oh, I can hear you. Um, yeah, uh, so today, um, Chair um, um, Delegate Raymond Smith. I don't members of the budget finance committee don't I was uh set away dot um um Peggy. It's not kind of yet I don't should they do. Um it's not I don't think that's not like it on of course. Yet a Beniki Dish and Tray D um I don't know she didn't know this top of hands long or told it in but she's chin that in the she chain or she does another. I don't I feel though um uh Nashadi 
ਕੋਲਚਨ ਦਾਸਨੇ ਐਂਡ ਇਹ ਸੀ ਹੋ ਰਿਹਾ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਇਹ ਇਥੋਂ ਦੇ ਅਸਲ ਹੋ ਰਿਹਾ ਹੈ ਯਾਰ ਆ ਹੋਟ ਐਂਡ ਇਟ ਨੇ ਤਾਂ ਨੇ ਸਿੰ ਥੋਟ ਜੇ ਦਾ ਨੋ ਹੈ ਨਾ ਦੀ ਹੈ ਬਹਾ ਵਨ ਦੇ ਇਹ ਹੁਣ ਨੋ ਦੋ ਆ ਇਹ ਆ ਜੀ ਥੋਟ ਥੋਟ ਜੇ ਦਾ ਕੋਟ ਇਹ ਆ ਜੀ 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 ਆ ਤੋਂ ਵੀ ਹਾਂ ਆ ਜੀ ਸੀ ਯਾ ਇਹ ਚੇਜ ਇਸ ਆਨ ਦੇ ਬਿਨੇ ਤਾਂ ਆ ਤੋਂ ਕੋਈ ਥੋਟ ਐਂਡ ਸਿੰ ਹੋ ਰਿਹਾ ਹੈ ਇਹ ਹੋਟ ਐਂਡ ਆ ਆ ਰੋ ਦਾ ਥੀਸ ਥੋਟ ਜੇ ਯਾ ਇਨ ਟੈਕਸਿੰਗ ਆ ਰੋ ਦਾ in the world it was like i don't get that aid why can i have back it up okay i don't get a crisis with it to which we talk with you even as a once of the challenge yeah this is the one there yeah i don't say yeah jimmy he knew she said that i'm not saying it's sharing of budget finance i don't know that you are could have actually seen it's not for the team but she's seen so the cleanest chair that that was originally that that but uh, the the trochinde nasha and the compliments on a class of that was the dot coach le to so i mean um, it's so ad but the the shot that is so that could not so just any kind of change about the ash um is taking okay yeah yeah so that that is the 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 Yeah, today I've been a budget and finance committee. Thank you for this special meeting and thank you for the prayer too, Sitsila. Um, she legislative advisor, Dasha Janal, budget and finance committee, Bismashnish, Peggy Nakai and Chia, the Bethel Janin, Shlindo, Halsoi, Bashish Chin, Twadi Chini, Dasha Chido, Tachini, Dasha Nale, Lake and Hojonde, Nasha. Good morning. Thank you, Kiana. Kiana, Peggy. Our immersed Ramona Nelson. Yes, uh, good morning, Budget and Finance Committee members. She Ramona Nelson, the Shajanido, and the Dotnet, Tochin, Shlo, and the Rani Bushes Chin, the Laneda Cheshi, the Shanele, Dai Sanche, Leslie, Sister Aya. budget and finance but national yeah uh thank you for your introduction i don't know so though yes and the 24th navigation council so that is signed that i think i heard uh uh they'll get older so vice chair so oh yeah they've been a good morning uh members of budget and finance committee member chairman vice chair members of the uh, budget finance committee and staff all of you guys that's listening on the um call this morning yeah if been she yeah auto so in the yeah now could not to hit lynch and she said look at another to say to not jenny that's not the little one that's the big one that's an inch if any honey i yeah there's only ชาบีดอกซอนซอนโฮดิชิเอยากอนเอตคาอีกสิตาโดเนอีเดฮุดะเปสอันนี้เกลัดสเตชั่น 01 04-22 ชาบีดอกกดอสเลยเอาเราอยากเอสนาตัวสนาอาสไปสเตอร์อารันเดอร์ชมายาเจอันดัสสนาอาสโตสิจัดยาเจอโคโดกีอารันสนาหน้าห
um ebni ya kwa age atkha isas a do let today kwet so ni ange na do na na so just khachi ni pas chin khachi ni das che do pi bitoin das nala a kon so shana thank you this is Doug Yell here. Hey, so Doug Yell here. Uh, the, yeah, the floor to introduction. Good morning. Shay, Jimmy Elder, and she and Rachel Jim Hare. あれ、ネバナ、あの、しかおいや。ディーパ、ディーパの社長、プラクメーサ、アロフォース、レイ、ピニオン。コプワールド、ハートラ。ロート、ドーナンス、ケイ、ヤディ。ボーハネ、エン
Good morning, Mr. Chair and committee members. This is Luralene Tupahi with the Office of Legislative Counsel. Uh, good morning, Mr. Tupahi. Thank you for being on the call with us. Uh, the Navajo Nation Department of Justice, Sean. Good morning, Chair. This is Kristen Lowell with the Navajo Nation Tax and Finance Unit at DOJ. Thank you, Ms. Lowell. Thank you for being on the call. Uh, the, we'll go to the Office of the President and Vice President and Representative. Uh, good morning, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. This is Leonard Sochi with OPVP. Thank you. Good morning, Shonda. Thank you for being on the call. Okay, that's all from the Office of President and Vice President. Uh, then I, uh, let's go to the uh, Judicial Branch, Office of Madam Chief Justice Joanne J, Representative. Good morning, Chair and Honorable Members of the Budget and Finance Committee. This is Karen Francis. Good morning, Ms. Francis. Thank you for being on the call. Is there anybody else from uh, the Judicial Branch? Uh, then I, uh, let's move to the uh, Legislative Branch. Office of uh, Speaker Seth Damon. Yate yeah, Bennett, Chair uh, Henio, and committee members. This is Donovan from the Office of Speaker. Good morning, Donovan. Thank you for being on the call. Is there anybody else from the Office of the Speaker? Okay, uh, then I, let's move forward to the uh, Navajo Nation Chapter Governments. Is there a representative from the Navajo Nation Chapter Governments? Good morning. Good morning. This is Darlene Pino from Natis on Navajo Mountain Chapter Vice President. Thank you. Good morning, Ms. Pino. Anybody else from the Navajo Nation Chapters? Good morning, Chair. Uh, I'm A. Elmer Clark from Peaceful Chapter. Thank you. Good morning, Shananda. Thank you, Ms. President Clark. Okay, last call. Uh, then I, uh, let's move forward to our agenda. Uh, is there anybody else on the call for the record? Uh, Chairman Henio, this is uh, Thomas Walker. Good morning, Shinanda. I'll get Thomas Walker. Shinanda, I could I'll get Thomas Walker and he is listening in with us. Uh, the uh, Office of Nomination Office of the Controller. Good morning, Mr. Chair. This is uh, Elizabeth Begay, Acting Controller. Good morning, Ms. Uh, Begay. Uh, thank you for joining the call. Is there anybody else from your office besides you? Yes, uh, um, Emerson Horace, our um, senior uh, or supervisory accountant uh, is with me. Can you? Introduce yourself, uh, Emerson. Well, I guess he's not connected yet, but he will report regarding the Tulani Lake Enterprises. Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you. Uh, Good morning, Mr. Chair. This is Robert Willie, also from the Office of the Controller on two. Good morning, sir, and members of the committee. Good morning, Mr. Willie. Thank you for being on the call with us. Uh, let's move to the uh, Office of Management and Budget, Mr. Dominic Biel. Office of Management and Budget. Okay, then let's go to uh, Office of um, the uh, Physical Recovery Fund. Mr. Tom Platero, are you with us today? 
Yes, Mr. Chairman, I'm on the call. Uh, thank you, Tom. Um, with this, let's move forward to our agenda. Uh, we do have a proposed agenda before us. Uh, Peggy, if you read the agenda to the record for us, please. Okay, this is the proposed agenda of the Budget and Finance Committee of the Navigation Council, July 12, 2022. Special meeting, 10 a.m. via teleconference. Presiding is Jamie Henio, Chairperson, Raymond Smith, Junior Vice Chairperson, place via telecommunications, Window Rock, Naval Nation. One, call the meeting to order the roll call the invocation. Two, recognize guests and visiting officials. Three, review and adopt the agenda. Four, review and adopt the journal on five received reports. A, update re procurement code amendments, emergency procurement procedures presented by Kristen Lowell, attorney, and Ajua Aji Danzo, attorney, tax unit, Department of Justice. B, FRF update presented by Tom Platero, director, fiscal recovery fund office. First bullet is CJY 4121 FRF directives. C, update on FY23 budget process presented by Dominic Bial, Director, Office of Management and Budget. D, update on the ARPA Hardship Assistance Program presented by Elizabeth Begay, Interim Controller, with Gerald Shirley, Accounting Manager, Office of the Controller. Close out of CARES Fund regarding Talani Lake Enterprise. That's Report E, presented by Jacques Sarandi. TLE Board Secretary, Director of Water Programs with Elizabeth Gay, Interim Controller, Office of the Controller. Six old business done, seven new business. A, legislation number 0075-22. B, legislation number 0123-22. C, legislation number 0107-22. D, legislation number 0106-22. E, legislation number 0110-22. F, scheduling the oversight budget hearings the week of July 25th, 2022. G, rescheduling the August 2nd meeting. H, scheduling the budget hearings for August 8th through the 19th, 2022. Eight, close of the session, written announcements, adjournment. The next regular meeting is August 2nd, 2022. Navajo Nation Council's 2022 summer session, July 18th through the 22, 2022. That's the reading of the agenda. Shane, thank you uh, for the reading. Um, is there a motion to accept the agenda as read? Uh, Chair Henio, this is Delegate Brown. Delegate Brown. Shane, Delegate Nathaniel Brown, motion? A second? Chair Smith, second by Vice Chair Smith. So there is a motion and a second. So this, is there any uh, floors open for a discussion on the agenda? Discussion on that, uh, Chair Henio. What's your question? You have the floor? Oh, I'd like to indicate the uh, question. Nana, legislation details so no. Zero one zero four dash twenty two. A British now. With the Shina amendment, Shina amendment number one. Uh, Vice Chair Smith, motion to add legislation 104 22. There's a second. Yellowhair. Yellowhair. Second by Delegate Jimmy Yellowhair. Uh, floor is open for discussion on amendment number one. Amendment number one. Uh, Chairman Tenio, this is Delegate Cruddy. Motion and done. Uh, you have the floor. Uh, yes, thank you, Chairman. Uh, if we could have staff read the title. Uh, you know exactly what legislation is being added onto the agenda. Thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Uh, reminder, reminder, I forgot to do that. Uh, Peggy, if you'd read the title to the record for us, please. The title of legislation numbers. 
0104-22 is an act relating to the resources and development, health, education, and human services budget and finance and navigate committees and to the Navajo Nation Council allocating $25 million from the citizen fund to the Tuba City Regional Health Care Corporation for its long-term care, cancer and rehabilitation facility approving the related expenditure plan pursuant to 12 NNC section 2501 through 2508. And this is sponsored by Auto So. And it has several other sponsors, co-sponsors for uh, this legislation. And it's a Navajo Nation Council resolution. Chair, I'm hearing an echo. Kashina, thank you. I did hear myself too on, on that echo. And let's get still hear myself now. Hear myself now. So thank you for the reading of the title. So with this back to the um, budget finance committee. Um, that is the motion and the second to add that legislation to the uh, agenda. Is there any questions, comments? Uh, then I'll call for the question to for amendment number one. Um, Ramona, if you would lead us in the roll call vote. Chair sure, Chairman, can you roll call vote on the amendment? Honorable Raymond Smith Jr., how do you vote? No, it's not. Thank you, Honorable Raymond Smith Jr., votes green. Honorable Jimmy O'Hare, how do you vote? Honorable Jimmy L. Hare, how do you vote? Honorable Amber Kenneth McCrotty, how do you vote? I said it. Delegate, delegate. 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 Vote green. Fox B, and I vote green. Thank you very much. Thank you. Honorable Amber Kenneth McCrotty votes green. And Honorable Jimmy L. Hare votes green. Honorable Nathaniel Brown, how do you vote? Delegate Brown votes in favor. Thank you. Honorable Nathaniel Brown votes in favor. Honorable Elmer P. Begay, how do you vote? Honorable Elmer P. Begay, how do you vote? You are unmuted. I vote green. Thank you, Honorable Elmer P. Begay votes green. Chairman, we have five members voting in the affirmatives or opposing. Chairman, not voting. Chairman? Thank you for the roll call vote. Five in favor, zero opposed. The chair not voting. Uh, amendment number one passes. Back to the main motion. Main motion. Any questions or comments uh, on the main motion? Uh, that's the, uh, that's the chairman. They'll get Jimmy Yo here. Jimmy Yo here. Yeah. Okay, this okay, is uh, uh, I'd like to request to you, it's not uh, 24 budget finance committee. It's recourse to a uh, assistant from a uh, doctor file or from a division of a uh, human service. Human service. Uh, to discuss a uh, hiring controller, what's the status on that one? A use case to determine. So, Shunanda, I'll get Jimmy over here. Um, are you making a motion to add a report? Oh, yes. Uh, what that? Making a motion to add a report. Kashina, a report from Dr. Fowler over at the Division of Human Resources to report the status of um, the controller. Yes, sir, Chairman. Kashina, uh, with that, is there, a, is there a motion, amendment number two, number two uh, add a report to the uh, report section? And with that, is there a second? There's an amendment number two, amendment number two. motion by Delegate Jimmy Yellow here. Is there a second? Second, Delegate Crotty. Delegate Emerson, that's why Crotty second. So we do have a motion and a second for amendment number two to add a report. Are there any questions, comments? No, I don't know, yeah. 
I'll call for the question to uh, for amendment number two to add a report. Um, but be item report item um, F though the B F uh, under five uh, section five. So with that, if there are no questions or comments, uh, Ramona, if you'd leave the roll call vote. Yes, Chairman Hino, roll call vote on amendment number two, Honorable Raymond Smith Jr. How do you vote? Okay. Honorable Raymond. Thank you. Honorable Raymond Smith Jr. votes green. Honorable Jim Yellowhair, how do you vote? Honorable Jimmy Yellowhair, how do you vote? Honorable Amber Kenneth Bakati, how do you vote? Uh, Shout out to Amber. Honorable Amber Kenneth Bakati. Thank you, Shadeja. Honorable Amber Kenneth Bakati votes green. Honorable Nathaniel Brown, how do you vote? This Delegate Brown votes in favor. Thank you. Honorable Nathaniel Brown votes in favor. Honorable Elmer P. Begay, how do you vote? Honorable Elmer P. Begay, how do you vote? Honorable Jimmy Yellowhair, how do you vote? Honorable Elmer P. Begay, how do you vote? I'll get Yellowhair, vote green. Thank you. Thank you. Honorable Jimmy Yellowhair, vote green. Honorable Elmer P. Begay, how do you vote? Chairman, we have four members voting in the affirmative. Zero opposing, one member not voting, and chairman not voting. Chairman? Yeah. Okay, thank you now for amendment number two. Uh, four in favor, zero opposed, uh, chair not voting. So back to the main motion. Is there uh, any further questions or comments on the main motion with two amendments? Uh, chair Henry, this is the vice chair, sir. Uh, Vice Chair Smith, you have the floor, Shananda. Vice Chair Kerlanda, Chair Henry, other 24th nomination, Budget Finance Committee. I just want to say, did quite amendment Shlegi needed a whole one set the Dutch for do the yarn had this extension donation again, of course that does it. Yard and the sinner. ก็เอปิดตัวชิโก้นัชเอนเดนดิฮิตเนคิดฮัตเอนิกิคาโดวะอายุฮัตานะเดนิยูเลดาสกอร์เดนตาคิสเกอ่าดัชฮัตโตอ
uh, nomination donations account from the controller's office. But I motion that you have a vice chair Smith. Uh, well, before I, uh, before I uh, recognize the second, uh, Peggy. I was trying to unmute myself. Um, that would be a report from the emergency management, wouldn't it? Because they oversee the, they're the ones that have the fund management plan for that uh, particular donation fund. And then the, the other thing is, uh, before we go to this vote, um, Delegate Begay voted for the second amendment in favor. So that would change your vote. Agushina, um, thank you for the information, Ramona. On the amendment number two. Yes, I. Did you make a note of that? Okay, with that, let's um. Let me ask a question to the uh, Ms. Elizabeth Begay, our interim controller. Are you still on the call with us? Yes, uh, Mr. Chair, um, okay. we're here. Um, we have amendment number three uh, sponsored by Vice Chair Smith uh, requesting a report on the nomination donations account. Is your office able to provide that report as part of your other report? Mr. Chair, um, Peggy is right. The emergency management is responsible on, on the detailed expenditures, but we just have information on the financial status and the, the fund balance okay. for that donation account. Okay, thank you for that information. Um, with that, Vice Chair Smith, uh, you might, uh, I guess, um, with that information, might modify your motion, uh, which would be is to add report System item G. This. Report item G as a report from the Navajo Nation Emergency Management Office and possibly a controller on the status of the uh, Navajo Nation donations account. Vice Chair Smith. Okay, that's uh, Chair Henry Apatash uh, behind Z. Our controller so a Aji Yar Kushi uh Spaz and Ajisan Ali other emergency management is so Yahoto Mahaleta Eha Yalagi Hato Soto Aji Kid Hat Inigi Landa Nusen Kony Yogan Dutch Hodo uh get old tip in ye did it uh chapter a ha the yal a dice yan or don't do big at the done go it would an shit uh shinanda thank you. Kashina, that modification uh, on the amendment number three to add a report, item G uh, from the emergency management and controller's office on the status of nomination donations account and expenditures. So with that a motion sponsored by Vice Chair Smith, is there a second? Delegate Yellowhair, second. Shinanda, Delegate Jimmy Yellowhair, second. Uh, the, so Shinanda, Budget and Finance Committee, uh, floor is open for discussion on amendment number three. Uh, then, no, hey, after no questions, I'll call for the question to uh, for roll call vote. Well, Ramon, if you leave us a roll call vote, amendment number three. Uh, yes, Chairman. Our electric went out, it was an outage, so I've been trying to get back on and I'm using my phone and I barely have service. Can you hear me? Hello? Oh, you, you can hear me clear now. It sounds like a robot at the beginning. Okay. Okay. 
Yeah, there's no internet service where I sit. So I'm using my phone. Honorable Raymond Smith Jr., how do you vote? Agree. Honorable Raymond Smith Jr., thank you. Honorable Raymond Smith Jr. votes green. Honorable Jimmy Yellowhair, how do you vote? I vote green. Thank you. Honorable Jimmy Yellowhair votes green. Honorable Amber Kennesbach Crotty, how do you vote? Honorable Amber Kennesbach Crotty. Honorable Nathaniel Brown, how do you vote? Dele Delegate Brown votes in favor. Yeah. Thank you. Honorable Nathaniel Brown votes in favor. Honorable Elmer P. Begay, how do you vote? Honorable Elmer green. P. Begay, how do you vote? Thank you. Honorable Elmer P. Begay votes green. Honorable Amber Kennesbach Crotty, how do you vote? Chairman Hino, we have four members voting in the affirmative or opposing. Chairman not voting and one member not voting. Chairman? Thank you for the uh, roll call vote. Four in favor, zero opposed. Chair not voting. Amendment number three passes. We're back Chair, on the main motion. Chair Hino, this is yeah. Kate. Um, who made the second on that motion? Uh, Delegate Jimmy Yellow here. Okay, so for that amendment three, it was the motion was made by Raymond Smith, seconded by Jimmy Yellow here. And the oh. vote was four in favor. Oh. Cushy. We had a power outage here and the phone service doesn't work. Oh. <clears throat> Thank you for that information. That way I'll be aware of it. Um, why uh, you're dropping off and everything. But I cannot thank you for being on, still being on the call with us. But that's four in favor. Is there opposed? We're back on the main motion. Should not down budget finance committee. Any further questions, comments on the main motion? Uh, then uh, y'all call for the question. On the main motion. For three amendments. Uh, uh, they'll get Elmer P. B. Gay. Uh, Chair Henry, um, uh, I have a question. Um, how many uh, reports do we add or how many reports is there now? And then how many the legislation that we added now can and can you provide that information? Oh, <coughs> <coughs> oh sorry. Under reports, we have uh, as a proposed agenda, we had eight, report A, B, C, D, and E. There's uh, five reports in there. Either with amendment number two, it added E, uh, F, and then amendment number three added uh, G. So we have seven reports. Uh, the legislation again. Yeah, we have one, two, three, four, five, five legislations. I uh, with amendment number one, we added uh, one more, one zero four dash two two eight Yeah, so we have uh, six legislations. Uh, Shanda, I'll repeat again. Um, so with that, um, I thank you for that. Uh, um, we have uh, uh, the report on one of the report is going to be uh, understanding that it's going to be executive session, um, which is, uh, I think we well, we have to vote on it uh, to get into that. I think there's one that's like that. So I was thinking uh, um, that would be start, that either you know, I'm not sure if we can uh, maybe spend the floor rule, floor rule and then go with, um, go with the um, legislation first and then go with the um, reports. Because we have one uh, led to session. So, uh, yeah, Shanda, uh, Delgate Elmer. Oh, uh, Shanda, Delgate Are you making the motion to uh, yeah, for minute sure. number four to um, uh, do legislations first and then go to reports after that? Oh, because we have a, uh, I think there's a led to session that's going to be part of that on one of the reports. Oh. Kashina, we got all recognize your motion, Shunada. Uh, motion by Delegate Elmer P. B. Gay as amendment number four uh, to go to business items in number seven first. Legislation is to action items. Thank you, Chair. 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 Thank you, Chair
Although after that, a report di ba na hatol just niho. So ito ay a motion na liya. Is there a second? On amendment number four, is there a second? Delegate Yellow Hair. Delegate Yellow Hair. Delegate. Delegate. Delegate Jimmy Yellow Hair, second. Motion by Delegate Elmer P. V. Gay. Second by Delegate Jimmy Yellow Hair to, to take care of the action items first, which is on section seven of the agenda. So I have a motion. Any questions, comments? Uh, then no, yeah, if there are no questions or comments, so call for the question to for a roll call vote. Ramona, this is a roll call vote for amendment number four. Yes, uh, Chairman Hinyo, roll call vote on amendment number four. Honorable Raymond Smith Jr., how do you vote? Green. Thank you. Honorable Raymond Smith Jr. votes green. Honorable Jimmy Yellow here, how do you vote? Don't get yellow hair, votes green, thank you. Thank you, Honorable Jimmy Yellow Hair votes green. Honorable Amber Kenneth Bakwadi, how do you vote? Uh, Shana, this is Delegate Crotty, I'll vote green, thank you. Thank you, Honorable Amber Kenneth Bakwadi votes green. Honorable Nathaniel Brown, how do you vote? Honorable Nathaniel Brown, how do you vote? Delegate Brown votes in favor. Thank you. Honorable Nathaniel Brown votes in favor. Honorable Elmer P. Begay, how do you vote? I vote green. Thank you. Honorable Elmer P. Begay votes green. Chairman, we have four members voting in the affirmatives or opposing. Chairman not voting. Chairman? Thank you for the roll call vote. Five in favor, zero opposed. Chair not voting. Uh, amendment number four passes. Chair Hinya? Yes. Where's the vote? Five in favor? Oh, hold on. I thought I heard five. Ramona? Yes, Chairman? Four or five in favor? Five in favor, zero opposing, Chairman. Okay, I, well, I, did, I thought I heard everybody. Five in favor, zero opposed, Peggy. Okay, with this, uh, Shandau Budget Finance Committee, we are back on the main motion uh, with four amendments. Any further questions or comments on the agenda? Uh, then I uh, will give a second reading and then we'll call for the question. Peggy, based on your notes, what do you have as a second reading on the agenda with four amendments? Okay, the second reading, amendment one was to add legislation number 0104-22. Amendment two is to add the division of human resources to provide an update on the recruitment hiring of the controller. And then amendment three is the uh, update on the donation funds to and whether to be used for renovating homes. And then amendment four is to go to item seven, new business first before doing reports. Chair Hino. Thank you for the uh, second reading. Out of this, I'll call for the question to um, accept the agenda with four amendments. Uh, Ramona, if you would please uh, roll call vote. Yes, Chairman, roll call vote on approving the agenda. Honorable Raymond Smith Jr., how do you vote? Vote green. Thank you. Honorable Raymond Smith Jr., votes green. Honorable Jimmy Yellhair, how do you vote? Honorable Jimmy Yell here, how do you vote? I vote Honorable green. Jimmy. Thank you. Honorable Jimmy Yell here votes green. Honorable Ember can is bought Crotty, how do you vote? Honorable Ember can is bought Crotty, how do you vote? Honorable Nathaniel Brown, how do you vote? <laughs> yes, Ember can is bought Crotty. Uh, this is Delegate Amber Kinnis-Bakrati. I vote green. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Amber Kinnis-Bakrati votes green. Honorable Nathaniel Brown, how do you vote? Honorable Nathaniel Brown, how do you vote? 
Honorable Nathaniel Brown, how do you vote? Honorable Elmer P. Begay, how do you vote? I'll vote green. Thank you, Honorable Elmer P. Begay votes green. Honorable Nathaniel Brown, how do you vote? Chairman, we have four members voting and the affirmatives are opposing. Chairman not voting and one member not voting. Chairman? Uh, Delegate Brown votes in favor. Thank you, Honorable Nathaniel Brown votes in favor. Chairman, we have five members voting in the affirmatives are opposing. Chairman not voting. Chairman? Thank you, Shane Kenna. Thank you for the roll call vote. Five in favor. Zero opposed and chair not voting. Uh, we have our agenda before us as approved the four amendments. Thank you. So with that, let's move forward to uh, the next item on the agenda. A, a, uh, under uh, review and adopt the journal, there is none. But then, so we we'll move forward to item seven, action item. Old business, there's none. Uh, those seven, new business. We have legislation 0075-22. Sponsored by Shenandoah Vice Chair Slater. Uh, I'll call for Vice Chair Slater, see if he's uh, on the call with us. Uh, Shenandoah Vice Chair Carl Slater, are you here with us? Uh, second call, Shenandoah Vice Chair Carl Slater. <clears throat> uh, third call. Shenandoah Vice Chair Carl Slater. Uh, there's no sponsor <clears throat> for uh, legislation 0075-22. We'll move forward to legislation 103-22. I did have a conversation with uh, Delegate Halona Shenandoah Kodo prior to the start of the, uh, right at the start of the Budget and Finance Committee. And he has, uh, I'll call for him. Uh, Shenandoah Delegate Purnell Halona, are you on the call with us? Shenandoah Delegate Purnell Halona, second call. And the Shenandoah Delegate Purnell Halona, third and final call. Kushina, we'll move these two legislations to the next meeting agenda. Let's go to item C, legislation 107 22. Uh, Shenandoah Delegate Eugene So was on the call earlier. I believe he is still on the call. So Shanda Delgit, Eugene So, are you Sandishko? Nishwandlo? I can you say Sasta or Shehir? You got here, Lashanda. Peggy, if you'd read legislation 107 22 to the record for us, please. Okay, thank you. This is a proposed nomination council resolution assigned to Budget and Finance Committee, then the Health, Education, and Human Services Committee, then Nabigaya to get then. Navajo Nation Council introduced by Eugene So, prime sponsor tracking number 0107-22, an act relating to the budget and finance, health, education, and human services and the big etiquette committees. And the Navajo Nation Council approving $13,334,871 from the unreserved undesignated fund balance UUFB for the renovations necessary at certain Navajo Nation government facilities to provide access to persons with disabilities and waiving 12 NNC section 820M regarding OMB review. And so, um, the uh, exhibits are there that are referenced in the legislation. The um, Appendix K is also attached. The, um, the internet public review documents. Oh, there's a, a memo from the uh, Office of the Controller which says that this request would be considered non-recurring and that the unaudited balance of the UUFB as of June 8th is $19,966,288. Okay, then uh, there were no uh, comments made for the internet public review summary sheet. That concludes the reading. Thank you for the reading, Peggy. Uh, with this, uh, the Budget Finance Committee, is there a motion 
to consider legislation 107-22. Delegate Yellow Hair, motion. Machine Shinoda, Delegate Jimmy Yellow Hair, motion. Is there a second? Um, legislation 107 22, there's a motion. Is there a second? Shinoda, Budget and Finance Committee. Is there a second? Going once. Uh, there's a motion on legislation 107-22. Is there a second going twice? Vice Chair Smith seconded me. Dr. Kushina, Vice Chair Smith seconds. So we do have a motion and a second on legislation 107-22. With this, uh, Shinanda, Delegate Eugene So, Kadoni Shahana, Bes Bahis Anin Khani Nitatanil Sozgi. Um. First, as an uh, a director and also a, a condition of appropriation, uh, veto in the line item by the president within the four, three years and a half. I did not do it. 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 I you catch your passion day, people hold me so you hardly we got a lot of disabled uh, Navajos on the reservation. So, by your hat, I was the Saho, the whole one, whole one, not as no law. A, been your eight, could I? So, by the Snail Lisba, by those agencies, by the dish, I have to be uh, to, to do the history, um, Husky, Benali, if I can give this floor to my agent. Thank you, uh, Chair. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Benali or Mr. Bitsili, are you on the call? Yes, Husky Benali. Uh, okay, thank you very much. Budget and Finance Committee. Husky Benali Jr. is a Tony Neso, I don't know Nenslo. I see it in Nenslido, or say touch sheet, and it does it. A Tony does it, she do, does it not. I don't, I myself am um, legally blind, um, and so I do have a disability. I'm with the uh, Navajo Nation Advisor Council on Disabilities which was established back in 1979 by the Navajo Nation Council, primarily to be the official advocacy body for Navajos with disabilities and to ensure that Navajo disabilities do not get discriminated against and within the Navajo Nation and also to address um, service gaps that exist. And so um, we have at, at least Forty to 50,000 Navajos with a disability on the Navajo Nation. And so um, public building accessibility has been a real issue for Navajos with disabilities. This um, goes all the way back to 1979, when the, a part of an affirmative action plan, when uh, the um, Navajo Nation Council um, wanted to address um, accessibility to buildings, uh, government buildings, so that those with disabilities can access disability services. So, um, so since that time, really nothing has been, um, there's never been a real concerted effort. There have been other legislations, example, an executive order by President Shelley, um, for public building accessibility, but uh, nothing really came out of that. Um, right now, there's the um, Civil Rights for Individual Disabilities Act of 2018, was signed by former President Russell Begay, which also includes public building accessibility for services to those with disabilities. 
Um, I'm also employed with the Navajo with the Native American Disability Law Center here in Farmington, and the law center provides technical assistance to the Navajo Nation Advisory Council on Disabilities. Every member on this advisory council is confirmed by the Office of the President. So back in um, 2007, 2000, and 2011, the uh, Navajo Nation Advisory Council on Disabilities and the Disability Law Center, along with Office of Special Ed Rehabilitation Services, did a survey um, with individuals with disabilities, their family members, and disability service providers to find out what the needs are needed by those with disabilities. And public building accessibility became one of the top five issues that were um, founded in this um, survey. We sent out over 2,000 surveys and we did six focus groups. And so those with disabilities, so, buildings, but we receive services. And this is not coming from the advisory council or this is not coming from uh, um, the uh, disability law center. It's coming from those that responded to the services themselves. So we did a survey um, and um, surveyed 15 buildings across the Navajo Nation, three buildings in each of the uh, five agencies. And these signings were such that parking lots were a real issue. Uh, a lot of our individuals who are on wheelchairs have uh, vans. And so when they park their van, um, somebody can park right by them because there's no designated parking area. So a person with a disability in a wheelchair lowers a wheelchair. Uh, off of their van. And if there's no parking place, then they have to find a parking place. Or when they come back, somebody parked by them, they can't get out. Pathways were also um, from parking lots were a real issue for them. Curb cuts were an issue for them. Uh, ramps were too steep or made out of materials that were um, hazardous. If there was um, inclement weather, um, Bathrooms were also, once they got into buildings, they were inaccessible. There were, the um, sinks were too high, especially those with the wheelchairs, fencers, um, mirrors, those kind of things. Um, the other thing was, was that um, uh, conference rooms were very congested. Some, sometimes they couldn't even get into a conference room to attend a meeting. And so these were like the findings clear across Navajo Nation that existed. So we're asking um, if we could have this legislation passed so that um, these public buildings can be addressed and that it will allow people with disabilities to be to able to access those services. Even Yedi, and it's been 43 years since this first passed in 1979. Um, Mr. Marcus Tooley did some uh, evaluations also on from, from the, I believe, Office of President, Vice President, and they basically had the same findings. So we're asking for your support on this. We're speaking for um, 40 to 50,000 Navajos that are out there with a disability. So I just want to um, provide that information. I can't. Hello? Hello? Is that the end of your report, Shnaith, uh, uh, Honorable Eugene? So, Jyoti did a sana witai when he talks to Sozi. Okay. So, so, Dikrat and Hasnaith, the Queen Minister, you see, I would like uh, Marcus Tully to put in to a bit of sahadot. Thank you. If Marcus is on the line, thank you. Uh, Peggy, are you keeping time on the? Uh, 
presentation or the uh, legislation for the uh, agents? Uh, Chair, uh, Vice Chair, for standing committee meetings, um, as far as I know, I don't think the rules prohibit um, it at your discretion to allow them a certain amount of time if you want to do time limitations. Yeah, on the Benaldini, but the rules don't really have that in the standing committee rules. Your next agent, Hello, can anybody hear me? Go ahead, you have the floor. Thank you, Ashanat. Uh, um, uh, members of the Budget and Finance Committee, this is um, Marcus Tooley with the Department of Facilities Maintenance under Division of General Services. Uh, disability accessibility to buildings on uh, um But anyway, more recently, uh, we were asked to compile a cost estimate to address uh, some of the buildings that um, that the Navajo Nation has under our department to provide uh, accessibility. Uh, as you know, uh, the Navajo Nation passed a resolution, uh, CJY 6318, Navajo Nation Civil Rights of Individual with Disabilities Act of 2018, which uh, compelled uh, the Navajo Nation right. to provide accessibilities to government facilities. A um, uh, we, we know that a lot of our buildings are very old. Uh, they were built back in um, the era of when BIA still had uh, a lot of the government functions of the Navajo Nation. <laughs> Uh, we haven't really improved uh, the building infrastructures uh, to accommodate people with disabilities. A uh, majority of our our buildings are are like modular type units, and in fact, some of the buildings are are mobile homes. Some of the offices. So what uh, that uh, Navajo Nation hasn't been really. Um, uh, moving toward uh, permanent infrastructure that would uh, entail uh, or include the, 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 the handicap accessibilities. Uh, we did a, um, a building uh, survey. We did a building assessment back in 2015. And out of that uh, majority of our buildings, in fact, almost all of the buildings that were assessed during that time, uh, then um, have the accessibilities and they lack that infrastructure. So since that time, our department has been uh, trying to address it, uh, namely just the parking, the sidewalk, and then the ramps, and then the door. Uh, by name, because uh, our department doesn't get um, a lot of funds and we do what we can to address those uh, deficiencies. And we haven't moved toward like um, providing uh, bathroom uh, renovation uh, to provide uh, wheelchair accessibilities or you because of, of certain illnesses and so forth and and so uh, our our department is just restricted to providing routine maintenance so so we don't have a lot of funds we try to do what we can uh, and 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 in short increments uh, addressing some of these deficiencies. Although, you know, as um, Mr. Hosky had indicated that, um, you know, we haven't had full support uh, 
although uh, we haven't had the funding to address these uh, deficiencies, even though the Navajo Nation passed uh, legislation to uh, make this a priority and make this a law. So, so we do what we can. And I did provide a listing of some of the sites. Um, as you, if you go through that uh, listing, there's trailers and 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 what that most of them are trailers, you know. A the Navajo Nation hasn't moved toward uh, uh, constructing permanent facilities um, that would include uh, uh, accessibility uh, infrastructures to the buildings. Uh, just mainly uh, trailers. Uh, um, and that's what well, most of the uh, departments are doing. Uh, uh, no, that, and then that would conclude my reports. If there's any questions, I would be happy to answer those. Yeah, thank you, um, uh, Vice Chair Smith, for taking over. I was trying to, problems, having problems uh, trying to unmute here. Um, but I figured it out. Thank you, Mr. Tui, for your uh, presentation. So, on your presentation. Oh. We've got a lot of people out there. Oh, hey, wheelchairs and doctor. And I was also 50% disabled American veteran. I said, oh, hey, you as they're grown older, too. They like to need those assessments. I should put on it. ชื่อเนี่ยแค่ละชนะตาพอดีเบสออนนี่ตาตอนนี้สอสิกิเอาเทศเอ่อเอ่อมอชั่นเซคันด์ไอตาเลียโซชนะตาบัจจุดไฟ
expend over. Uh, I was reading that in the legislation. I don't have that page right in front of me, but uh, I'll, I'll come across it. I should not UUFB Yonson. And I know budget season is coming up, and we usually use UUFB to help with the uh, next fiscal year. Uh, thank you, Chair. Those are my questions. Kashina uh, Hiala, Vice Chair Smith, uh, on your question regarding the um, uh, UFB, maybe I'll defer to the uh, controller, uh, Madam Controller, uh, Ms. Elizabeth Begay. Uh, or Mr. Robert Willie. Yes, um, um, Mr. Chair. I'm here, um, Elizabeth Begay. Regarding uh, UUFB, the intent is to fund those uh, non-recurring expenditures for UUFB. And uh, right now, since uh, the council approved the summer youth uh, program for 4 million, there's still 50 million left under the UUFB. Thank you. Mr. Chair. Did she say 15 or 50? 15, one five. Okay. And then the other question was um, from Vice Chair Smith was, he said, there's a law that it can council or Navajo Nation can only expend so much of that UUP. Uh, was, are you aware of that one? Yeah, there's, there's really no prohibition on on the expenditure of UUFB is just it must be for non-recurring expenditures. No, no, what, what Mr. Chair is saying is not uh, what it's used for, but uh, there, there's a threshold and there should be some leftover uh, kept for right. emergencies. I believe uh, our um, Bond financing requires us to keep at least eight percent uh, of the of the general fund uh, revenue um, as part of a reserve. But uh, I'll uh, defer that to uh, to Rob. But uh, that's what I was uh, informed. Eight percent of the general fund revenue must be reserved. Okay. Thank you for that response, uh, Ms. Uh, Begay. Uh, maybe Department of Justice, Ms. Lowe? Yes, Chair. Yes, uh, would you uh, assist in answering the question posed by Vice Chair Smith? Um, I think, uh, if I'm on the right track, Vice Chair Smith may be referring to um, the minimum fund balance. Um, and that is, the controller's office takes that into consideration. I don't know the dollar amount of the minimum fund balance, um, but it's based off a percentage of the uh, previous fiscal year's budget. So what happens is the Office of the Controller takes that into consideration when making the determination as to how much is available to expend. But um, OOC uh, would be able to explain uh, how they computed that $15 million figure. Chair, Vice Chair. Okay, thank you. Thank you for the uh, information. Okay, with that, uh, back to Vice Chair Smith. Does that help you with your question? I had uh, Chair Henio and uh, OOC and DOJ for clarifying that. Uh, I was looking at that in the uh, legislation under page uh, Four or four, I think it is under section three. Talks about the minimum fund. The supplemental appropriation will be from those funds that exceed the minimum fund balance, the reserve balance, and the UEFB required by 12 NNC subsection 820J. The officer is determined by the controller. That's the question that I, I posed on that behalf because there is uh, what OOC said was 8% of the reserve. So is that 8% of what is now in the balance? Like uh, say there's 15 million and we got to remain with uh, 15 or 8% and the request here for UFB is at 13 million, which is over um, half of uh, 15 
million that's in the UUFB as we speak. Uh, Shenandoah, Chair Henry. Yeah, no, no, Vice Chair Smith for uh, yeah. clarification. Uh, back to uh, uh, Madam Controller Elizabeth Gay or Mr. Rob Rugley. Yeah, um, Mr. Chair, uh, it will be 8% of the Navajo Nation general fund revenue. So for example, for uh, fiscal year 200, I mean, 2023, we have uh, 213 million, 803,000 general fund revenue. So we will have to reserve 8% of that. Mr. Chair. Uh, what would the 8% be? Mr. Chair, my calculation, it's supposed to be 32 million, but of course we're already uh, just 15 million down now for the UUFB fund balance, but I have to uh, check, but that's required for the bond financing. But I'll check with uh, Mr. Willie on the reserve that was uh, imposed before by OOC. Okay, um, well, I, I'll let you I'll give you time to work with Mr. Willie on that, and I'll get back to you further down uh, before we call for the question. Uh, with that, uh, back to the Budget and Finance Committee. Any further questions, comments on legislation 107 22? Okay, get Elmer P. Gay. After that, I'll, uh, hold on, let me. Uh, let me go back to Vice Chair Smith for maybe another follow-up, and then I'll defer to Delegate Elmer PBG after that. Vice Chair Smith. Okay, not uh, Chair Henry. Uh, uh, thank you for letting me uh, do a follow-up real quick. Tonight, uh, today, how glad they have see the five agencies. Ish, uh, are they planning to at least look into that? Don't they? The five agencies they. Kindled also, yeah, hold on, hey, how much would that cost the nation? The other question I have too is real quick is uh, are any of these available through the ARPA funds? Is that within the category? Could we mix match this or could we change the uh, legislation in here saying so y'all uh, UUFB and put that language in there? Any federal, state, or uh, language saying that it'll be reimbursed to UUFB? Um, maybe the, the uh, ARPA funds would fit in that category. Uh, that's my question. Thank you. Thank uh, you, Vice Chair Smith. On the first part of your question, again, uh, I'll defer that to Mr. Marcus Tooley. And the second part of your question, I'll defer that to um, uh, this Legislative Council. But before I do do that, I'll um, yield the floor to uh, Delegate Elmer PBG. Shinanda, you have the floor. Um, okay, no, 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 to the other members of the Budget and Finance Committee. Um, I don't know, I don't know, I don't Eugene, so um, thanks for the legislation. I don't know, 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 I know that site to get the balance and the where they can put up those um, um, renovation necessary at certain Navajo Nation government facilities because uh, they provide access to the person with disability to get in here because um, there's two, uh, no, I just keep on the great the location to get all out the um, buildings that renovate in that now she's already that is already the facility is already there or renovate in that one that's one question I don't know that um, how will be the operate if it if it's going to be another facility that they can renovate and then move in what is the um, operating cost to run that I don't the personnel, I don't the hello. 
uh, we're gonna have to hire some more personnel. So to 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 all you all you you know the people that are um, clients to you. Maybe if it ends, how did that how did that happen? So that case that could be not the job. Renovation day by day, we can do renovation. Then how much is it going to cost to operate that again? And then if we need some additional personnel, then how much is it going to cost the whole whole thing? Is it is this, is it everything included that thirteen million dollars? The renovation they will cost about thirteen million dollars to get for from the UEFB. So that's the the second. The third the 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 second question that I have is um, how did the athlete disability alcohol um actually physically mentally but actually I don't know how you would uh, just if you can if you can include uh, people that are mentally. Disabled does leaky. Um, like right now, if you look at these uh, people, they think that they are either physically and mentally dis disabled, and they that she when they were born, they're like that. She, I don't know how she just think that some of these people she they are something got into an accident, something happened to them, became dis dis disabled. I don't know how so. We're getting to have uh, some people. These are people that are have knowledge, and the knowledge that they have is which all of us, all the leadership in the Navajo Nation, we don't have that kind of knowledge. I can say that they don't hit values enough, but these people are hard to Knowledge they have stories of the Navajo people and the Navajo ceremonies. Understand that there's three of them. They were original, original that, that that had these ceremonies given to them from their parents, grandparents. But they had that. The Christian ceremonies, they about five ceremonies that they have. I say ahat khadiki, not just only ahatsasan dahagaha in the gati, I say ahat khadiki, as lat eh khado nasit eh khadiki. They were doing that, but today they cannot uh, remember all these because they went through this, uh, they have been affected by the COVID. I can't perform no more. And then with two years of just without no ceremonies, done. So what do we do with that? How can we help them? Are they covered under this um, legislation? If we want to cover all disability, is that what you call this disabled when they cannot perform ceremonies now? That was my first, my, my, my second question. I'm so sorry. Thank you. Kashina, here on that where your question uh they'll get Omer PB Gay Kudo. Even at Jay Kudo as going to Vice Chair Smith's question first regarding um language uh in the legislation uh Mr. Pahi, Legislative Council. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um since uh DOJ is on the line, um I would I would ask DOJ to give uh, an opinion about uh, whether this particular expenditure would be uh, eligible for uh, ARPA reimbursement. Um, the language that's normally used is usually in CSN legislation, and it states, the CSN fund may be reimbursed in the amount of the allocation approved herein from funds available to the Navajo Nation from any and all state and federal sources, including congressional appropriations under ARPA or other COVID-19 related relief, if the project expenditures described herein are deemed eligible under such COVID-19 related or other funding sources. So um, because the uh, reimbursement is contingent upon these expenditures under this legislation, uh, being eligible under the ARPA or other COVID-related relief, um, I think it would be good to have 
DOJ uh, give their opinion on whether this reimbursement would work. Um, I am right now just finishing up the requested amendment for Delegate Smith, and I can email that in about a minute or two. Turning it back over to you. Hey, thank you. Thank you for the uh, uh, your input, Mr. Fahey. Uh, Ms. Uh, Kristen Lowe? Hi, would you please mute your phone? Uh, Mr. Pai, are you still there? I'm still here. Can you please mute your phone? Okay, thank you. Uh, Ms. Uh, Kristen Lowe? Ms. Kristen Lowell, are you there? Okay, then so let's move forward. Uh, back to Shinanda Eugene So Kudo E Yan I did kit from uh Vice Chair Smith, Aldo uh Shinanda Delge Omer PB Gay Dona Kigon. I did kit uh Pudoshina Tanjo Chaha Sigi and Nanatan Shato. Now, what is that? Oh, what did you say? Got a question. Um, in a not of kidney, she uh, the Korean consul agent, then she a yeg or star husband. She is his star husband, you did a bitch and a hot eat a habit at us at on Sahakis. Adri, yeah, dark heart or was he a cup to buy? We could only treat me with that. No higher than start or job, but the day could do a who signed a donation that the number has all eight. I gave a digging up on Sarkis. If you had eight, I don't see what even now go a car deal was in she. Ask for a and she had only a car and they do holler in she did in a case. The RJ Hotel, Dora, so the um, the Adna, the gender has the Anit and his father, Tinter's part, the Greek chapter, she's Anna Harpa for Tin, does it? Adna does not have so funny, machines for boy, ho ho, or so by any reason. So even Nago Decon, not the kitty, there's Anit on the kitty, or better than Dicky, is she to understand the house of the budget and finance committee. Regards to the building at the Bayaski and Marcus Tulido and also Husky Shilton. I would like to give time to um, both of them, maybe uh, Marcus first. Thank you. Here. Uh, Mr. Marcus Tuli, former oh. bull rider. Uh, yeah, Chair, though members of the Budget Finance Committee, quite an idea. If I may ask uh, Honorable uh, uh, Delegate Smith to repeat his questions, I had some uh, audio issues, but I can address um, Mr. Uh, uh, Honorable Elmer El gave a question first. Um, uh, the information, locations, uh, there's a number of buildings that we've identified. Uh, building assessment, Yaliki Bado Lethi, Quentin Spahosen. I don't know, I didn't skit quite a ill at the Bensek case, which in a hot Ushato, Neto, Edo Tadadze, with thesis which in a hot 
a quenai de kitty your disability, the Slinia, as as I need, I guess it depends on how you view that. Um, and we have uh, mental disability, and then we have physical disability. Our physical disability uh, range from uh, not being able to fully uh, use your extremities, uh, your your maybe your finger or your 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 hand or your arm, your leg. What that hegia, adonana sa eyam. They're they're limited in terms of of uh, maybe respiratory. What that hegi. But what we're talking about here is uh, we walk into a building, maybe we want to use the uh, facilities. Maybe we're using a walker. Uh, that's the, the, the kind of, uh, uh, of uh, reno not, it's not so veneration, but to address those type of issues, yeah. Uh, it's supposed to be 36 inches. A uh, wheelchair with the gas big out, yeah, to gas. With Yahia, ah, that you can go into a stall. A quenya hajinya, I don't stall when you have in spas or auto yins or auto da nunta, a quite big out, uh, was argo, uh, a a titne, uh, I don't know, not stall this. Uh, the type of doorknob, you know, is it the round one that most uh, commonly use or is it the, the lever, I mean, lever knobs, so you can use uh, that to open the door. To access the building, uh, maybe it has steps, but you're not able to get up there. So you need a ramp to wheel yourself up or to even walk yourself up the ramp. To access that ramp, uh, to to roll your uh, wheelchair up or to even walk up that to the ramp. So, renovation. Just the, 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 the restroom facilities, the, the door accessibility uh, and then accessibility to the door to the front door and uh, to the parking area we're trying to address that and like i said you know you know um back in the day i used to just jump up and run and take but now, you know, I'm at an age where it's, it's you know, it, it takes a while for, for, for my body to warm up to be able to do the things that I was able to do in the past. So a lot of us are like, like that in that state, you know, we, we have difficulty walking up uh, steps. Although we have difficulty maneuvering our body in restrooms. Uh, maybe we don't have the grab bars to that disabilities at the year 2018 this but has on all of the uh, all of the uh, facilities need to um, all of the facilities need to 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 have that uh, 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 infrastructure for people to maneuver without uh, any um, this. Uh, I mean, with any disadvantage or with any difficulty. Uh, 
uh, Koho. Uh, so I hope I answered your questions. And then if I can get uh, Honorable Smith uh, to repeat his question, I apologize. Machine Kadla, Mr. Uh, Tooley. Uh, Vice Chair Smith, a request to repeat your question. Thank uh, you, Chair Henry Kadla. I know Mr. Tooley for wanting me to ask the question again. Related to uh, the five agencies, is there any studies on possibly just uh, <clears throat> building a huge building for all our offices? So that uh, we can accommodate them at a one-stop shop. Um, we have five agencies. Uh, we could centrally locate them in a certain location. And how much would that cost? And uh, maybe look into the future of that. Because right now, uh, we're just doing repairs here and there or trying to fix it up. Uh, we have a lot of trailers. One out of mountain bay to down uh, that's the kind of information we give our elders. So, so we need to uh, think about, you know, centralizing our main buildings, like a headquarters. They out to the uh, other Indian agencies. They have real nice buildings out there. You know, Kinazudo office. Uh, Buildings on Bedahalo, Nikisha. Are we thinking about that, or we just wanted to just to uh, um, to continue to <clears throat> utilize what we can? Uh, that's what I'm wanting to uh, see if uh, maybe executive side is uh, focusing on that. Ah, this president, Yeah, we're going to have build better buildings and make sure that we have offices for our people to come in and get their services that they need, Danita. So that's my question. Thank you, Chair. Shikiana, uh, Vice Chair for repeating your uh, question. Back to you, Mr. Tooley. Oh, yeah, Lanana. Um, Mr. Chair, all members of the Budget and Finance Committee. Uh, the um, general Division of General Services, uh, uh, Department of uh, Facilities Maintenance, uh, we're in the process of uh, of um, trying to do another assessment, building assessment, and this is under the uh, direction of uh, our um, our division director, Mr. Tom Platero. The Kinigi Nazneli Jean de Nol Ito Khalid Aya Atsi. Ah, Sandinesk, Kredo, Ado, Satnana, so, um, that's a aya that echo a a a binia. Ado di shibi dot zolto, uh, ade honey zido do, dasa, kin bunnit, ah, a b do, the initial dat's a good, nana, jut, um, a quit ego, juke, tohigi be, ah, cobe, nahot, is a kayato. Ado Beshla Chi Nas Tito, Bebeji Nahot is like Quaggy. A Nas Cargo, she has Jo. Has Jo Nas Cargo, Ado E Benachi Hot Ashla, she, they yard eight or less, you have feasibility study, they think. I caught what that. Ado Nada that needs a deep, um, and lay top Nas Nel down or no to be yet. I see Aja Data Til Netzara Hot Sando Data Til Netana that now. Ado chin law de datil, Ado nana to the agencies down, are called de datil, Nikisha unlaid, and Tatnas nel has und Adisha, it done nana to choke it up, behold, as all old Nahon, a slam melts at Nalo, Hashin dang, dying, she would answer his kiss, she shan hot up, hot nana and added, Ado sat nana, decentralized nana dealings, unlaid, um, Cotton's little double run at the Hona under Ada E. Olnip Benier, Ada Nast Ado, this Ada Danada in Nishonada, that no old Asha Nelze. At 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 a Hajo Shinan Dolis. I see the Eben not so taking that Tuesday or you are a a in the Yishnoi. Why not as they have to a a the Kinigi, the 
ket all dot the waha ukemihi ya edi edon ha now a kwesa a that e that to be ho this a ya na na te ha na ro peso na na te na ha ni se a ko what a whole jish a shunata a do khashita ban so kes mi se di no edi digi kat kins den ligi edi digi se banit ya a khalet a e kwet khida alle tesla al paso ko te khato kas aro bachi na hoy now a no sa sto a cha ta alle da walker ki yen da khisto a do na na sto a cha 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 ta a bana da bachi na hoy na do bana da ten no cho ko ta ya alle ta ja ta ya jo ga le ta brails she the chijo ko a a a a a ta ta start the science ko da ta ya a a a a a ti ne ado da oyun hidenesto bichenda haste sto katide shinsa kan hat no si yego no no sni edik um anle na anshinde but na lishinde oda um bichenda haste ya oda be dan da tsho edo da desaba sna da kho sna da kha so edik e e ati ne kashinza e e o o hot edo lesho khala uh Mr. Marcus Julie, thank you. Ado Vinacha Kdo, back to a Tosho, Shunantado, Eugene So, but Naha Otsigi. Oh, how can she tea um um uh husky jacket as I cannot adult to I would like to give some time to him. Thank you. Mikushina, Mr. Benali. Um as far as disabilities, these are all disabilities that we're talking about. Um there's Two kind of barriers that exist: site accessibility, structural barriers, and then there's provision of reasonable accommodations, which means that you go into a restroom and there's grab bars, there's turn around space enough to turn a wheelchair around. Whoever's in a wheelchair has the ability to reach up to the soap dispenser, um, towel dispensers those kind of um, uh, needs that they have. In the um, Civil Rights for Individual Disabilities of 2018, there's a, there's a um, definition section in there. And in that definition section, it lays out what is a disability. And I don't know what you had met. Like I said, I'm visually impaired, but and so unable to read that to you. You would refer to to that act and look at the definition of individuals with disabilities. What does it mean? And this is patterned after the National American Disabilities Act of 1990. We adopted that, and that's what is in this act that the council passed in 2018 and signed into law by President Russell B. Gay. Um, what it does also, in addition to helping or to making it accessible for not only people with disabilities, but our elders. Our elders and people with disabilities have commonality. The same kinds of barriers that exist in elders, whether they have a disability or not, exists. So it would benefit them also. 70% of our elders over the age of 65 have a disability, and that's a huge number. Between 18 to 65, 27.7%. And then those from zero to 18 is about 6%. That was a breakdown in 2000 census. We haven't got any updated data. 
The other thing, it also addresses the needs of our veterans that have a disability. So we're actually, we're looking at three different populations. Those with a disability, whether it be cognitive or physical, or cognitive meaning mental, whether they were born that way or whether they um, um, gained the uh, disability along the way. I'm one of those. I was born with the degenerative eye disease and called retinitis pigmentosa. Up to 22 years of age, I could drive, I could, I could um, write, I could recognize people until the age of 22. At, within two weeks, I lost my vision, my center vision. I couldn't recognize people. I couldn't drive a car anymore. I couldn't play sports anymore. So those kind of things happen along the way. And so there are a number of uh, disabilities that are that way. Um, so these disabilities are such like me, being visually impaired is difficult for me to enter a building. If it's rocky, if it's sandy, even just going up a two inch sidewalk that's higher than the surface of the parking lot. It's, it's, I, I can't see it, I'll probably stumble and fall. Then it's, it's easier for me to get up a ramp than up steps. It's easier to open a, a door. And in the restrooms, the same way for me to be able to uh, use a restroom. Um, conference rooms are the same way. And then you talk about people with, um, who are on, um, who use walkers again. Parking surfaces are rocky, sandy, inclement weather, they're muddy, and they have difficult just getting up a little sidewalk curve that's two inches higher than the surface, and then up the steps, sometimes even ramps if they're made out of materials that are not, that, that are slippery when they get wet, and then opening the door, uh, and then uh, getting into the restrooms. So, we're talking about those kinds of disabilities to access these buildings for services. If we don't have that, we can't access the services. We're trying to be uh, self-sufficient. We're, we're trying to do things on our own, but these are barriers that we come up against. Um, until the 2018 law policies was a barrier because it did not include that uh, any any Navajo entity that did not comply with the Civil Rights Act, that time it was a different act. There was no recourse for a person with a disability if they were dis if they were discriminated against. There was nothing in there. Now this Civil Rights Act then provided an avenue where a person who is discriminated against but a Navajo Nation entity can take them to court. And so that's the addition that was made in that act. And so, and then as far as our um, culture, as far as our tradition, there is a story about early dawn boy. It's a blessing we story. In short, he talks about community members that had a family member with a disability, a child, and they decided that they didn't want to be bothered by them, so they put them all in one place. And as time went by, early dawn boy or young men showed up to take care of them. Eventually, the holy ones came by, came and took these these children. And the story and the concept out of that is we are all as Navajo people charged with the responsibility of early Dombo in taking care of those with disabilities. So that's what we're coming from also. So that's why we we're asking for you, for your help. But if you can refer to that definition in that um, Civil Rights Act, um, you, you can get a clear picture. If you can go into that definition section and look at what does that mean by reasonable accommodations? It's right in there also. So that's um, my response. Thank
Thank you. Mr. Benali, for your input. Eugene, so, Ashwin, so. Um, Doshi, one saw the husband that bounced the case for Annie Tay, never seen that Eve Cartier was in so in sea case. Annie Hick in the Taro, Tony said, a whole plan where hard of hearing or in a wheelchair, walker, federal, Annie we want to be independent. But we don't see kids. But we don't see young hearts. And then, we have sent them to the house. And you know, Tati, that's what I'm saying. It's a good idea because my brother Smith, I need a concert. And in the long run, it's a good idea. 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 I don't have a glass of wheelchair, so no, I don't do hundreds of years, I don't have a glass, if there's no rent, I don't do a comp, if one has a restaurant, I think, if he wants to take care of her, she wants to take care of her, yes, I don't know, I don't know, but he won't have a glass, so it goes all the way back outside, then takes a kick over to the next office, do it, does the same thing again, I don't know how many times that person would do the same thing, go from office to office, and we, uh, and I think, <laughs> I need that many no, we should already understand that we need you know assessment for our disabled uh, um all the Navajos across the Navajo Nation. it's way behind time. It's not yeah. for your with your heart and your um um a respect and uh, encouraging to have uh, dis dis disabled people to have um, uh, independent way of living daily. I could only use in such case. Unless you guys have more questions. Thank you. Eugene, so Kodoya, back to uh, Budget and Finance Committee. Yep. Delegate Yellow Hair, Delegate Yellow Hair, yes. But this legislation that you bring this before Budget and Finance Committee in regards to a access to for those people that were involved with a uh, disability that needs a for a uh, connection to the current building. I got assistance from a small grant from a uh, working with the Division of Health and Improvement Services. That grant, it was there was one and also in Kenyanta. There should be a budget also to be made. There should be a budget out of the building, or they work to make renovate to you. You add on to disability stuff because money is money there at the building. Oh, I think that is called. We may waste some money on these building building. What is a job on to the case of Jesus and now the Dean of Kiriki? A content that's a bit of no kid. So deep a yasala. Health and Proven Service, These are small grant funds are available. Those are funds. funds. 
but we don't try and ask to take advantage on these departments yet on the highest uh, low litigation on our Dr. Jill Jim. They don't look y'all cut. They are not their specialized to look funds for this. These are number one priority on federal funds. They can able to provide funds. We to take advantage on these are programs out there under a uh, executive branch. They ever have this. The other side, the need is other, but they're not talking to the smart director. I don't handle the out of building. It at the sun, then know that about the Nokia, the Christian Dahi. It could take it at the bonnet, not at the bathroom, a bathroom renovation. Pita Pita at Ara, the Pita Hoga renovation is now three hours back in is now a ya, a a hot saga was at you with a disability. With aid at the Sonha Zam Dalia, as you all own and she could on her day. So I uh, asked me could met my director to, to work with Jill Jim to take care of this and look for a small grant. I should not I let's take advantage on these programs up there. Should tell uh chairman. That's my uh my uh, directive. What are some that these links are go? Jay and get the Hunties they had opportunity to look for outside funding. Uh should not uh Eugene. So honorable. Let's wake up these guys, our director up there, under health and proof services. Going to Baha, see us. The determined. Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, I've got to get Jamil here. Uh, are you saying that you want to issue a director? Uh, yes. Okay, uh, work with legislative council then uh, to get that uh, directive language, not kidney, kidney, kidney donut. Yeah, thank you very much. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful vote there, Eliago. I do it directly. Thank you. Thank you, Shina. With that, the uh, legislative council, were you able to um, put together, are you able to put together a directive for Delegate Jimmy Yule here? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I I think I would need to speak with Delegate Yellowhair directly to get exactly what what language he wants on this. Um, if I could if I could have a few minutes to do that, um, there are two other amendments that I emailed out for this legislation 107. Perhaps the committee could. Uh, consider those amendments, and in the meantime, I could speak with uh, mm -hmm. Delegate Yellowhair. It's um, the directive won't take place till after the vote on the main motion takes place, so there's some time. Okay. Thank you. Shina. Thank you. Uh, so with that, uh, back well, to the Budget and Finance Committee. So, Shanda, Delegate Jimmy Yellowhair, uh, Ms. Papahi is requesting that you speak to her. <laughs> <clears throat> regarding your directive, uh, Kermit, Kermit, follow up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, uh, Chairman, I'd like to get some assistance too from Jill Jim because then they're pretty well known about these uh, fields and uh, pertains to health issues. I would like to also request uh, Jill Jim to assist a uh, our uh, attorney. Here, uh, legislative office, uh, chairman. Appreciate it. Thank you, Shina. Ms. Uh, Peggy Nakai, are you, uh, please contact Mr. Uh, I mean, Dr. Jill Jim uh, to assist with the language on the directive requested by Delegate Jimmy O'Hare. Now, Peggy. Now, Peggy, are you there? Uh, yes, Chair. What can I help you with? 
uh, Delegate Yellow here is requesting assistance uh, for a directive he wants to propose. And therefore, he's requesting that Dr. Jill Jim uh, be involved in the crafting the language, helping the Ms. Tapahi at Legislative Council. So get a hold of, if you would, please get a hold of uh, Dr. Jim uh, to uh, contact Delegate Jimmy Yellow here. Okay, with that, let's move forward back to the committee. Any further questions or comments? <clears throat> Chair Henry, Vice Chair Smith. Uh, Vice Chair Smith, uh, you have the floor. I can't not, uh, Chair Henry, uh, Budget Finance Committee members, Lado uh, Shanai, for this legislation. Uh, they did uh, Amendment Shay, Amendment 1 again, Kate. It was sent out at uh, 11.51 a.m. this morning regarding the uh, question that I have posed related to uh, reimbursement. Epitotso, Sadgi, UUFB, it's on the, uh, it's been uh, distributed to all of us uh, um, members of the Budget Finance Committee, Shinanda. So I guess it can be read into record. Gushina uh, Hiala, Vice Chair Smith. Um, with that, um, Peggy, do you have the amendment? Before you, Chair, could I have a couple of minutes? I'm trying to write that uh, email to Dr. Jill Jim. Let me take care of that real fast. Or Ramona, can you read that uh, amendment, please? Is she still on the call? Uh, Ramona, is this uh, the amendment pertaining to uh, the prospective funds? AD Gish, or is it the language regarding the OMB memo? There's two, two amendments that were drafted. Okay. Chair Henry, it's Vice Chair Smith. Okay, Vice Chair Smith, um, you have the floor. So, okay, now for clarification, indeed, in Katie Gates, where the uh, reimbursement on uh, the uh, proposed prospective funds indicated it's been sent out at 11:51 a.m. for the amendment okay let me read that real quick and i'll just hold off on the other <clears throat> information amendment uh, 1 to legislation number 0107-22 on 1 on page 4 at line 21 add a new paragraph as follows and this is all new language um the UUFB may be reimbursed in the amount of the allocation approved herein from prospective funds that become avail available to the Navajo Nation from any and all state and federal sources, including congressional appropriations under the American Rescue Plan Act of 2021, ARPA, or other COVID-19 related relief. If the project expenditures described herein are deemed eligible under such COVID-19 related or other funding sources to renumber, re-letter succeeding paragraph sections and exhibits as necessary and appropriate, the Office of Legislative Services and the Office of Legislative Council are hereby authorized to make technical edits to this act and its exhibits in order to implement the committee's intent in approving this act. This amendment shall supersede inconsistent language contained in any other committee amendment. Which language shall be conformed to the intent or language of this amendment? Thank you for that reading. A motion by Vice Chair Smith for amendment number one uh, that's been written to the record. Uh, is there a second? Motion by Vice Chair Smith for amendment number one. Is there a second? Going once. Amendment number one, sponsored by Vice Chair Smith. Is there a second? Going twice. <clears throat> Amendment number one, sponsored by Vice Chair Smith. Is there a second going three times? Uh, no second, Vice Chair Smith. 
I'll move forward. Uh, back to the main motion. Are there any quest uh, additional questions, comments on the main motion? Chair Hanio, this is Vice oh, Chair uh, Do we still have a quorum? That's what I was going to ask. If there's no questions, I can, I'll call for the question. But, uh, Ramona, would you do a roll call, please? Sure, Chairman Hanio, roll call for the Budget and Finance Committee of the Nomination Council, Jamie Hanio. I'm present. Okay, thank you. Jamie Hanio is present. Honorable Raymond Smith Jr. Oh, present. Thank you. Honorable Raymond Smith Jr. is present. Honorable Jimmy Yellhair. I'm present. Thank you. Honorable Jimmy Yellhair is present. Honorable Elmer P. Begay. Honorable Elmer P. Begay. Present. Honorable Amber, I'm um, sorry. Honorable Elmer P. Begay is present. Honorable Amber Kenneth Uh Ramona. Uh, she requested to be excused up to 2.30, so I honored it. Okay, thank you. Honorable um, Amber Kenneth Brock Cardi is excused up to 2.30. Honorable Nathaniel Brown. Delegate Brown is present. Thank you. Honorable Nathaniel Brown is present. Chairman, there's four members, five members present upon roll call, one member excused. Chairman. Gashina, thank you, Ramona, for that roll call. Uh, we do still do have a quorum, Vice Chair Smith. Uh, with that, let's uh, go back to the main motion. Any further questions, comments on the main motion? Uh, then I will defer to Shanta uh, Delegate Eugene So, Kodo uh, Delegate Jimmy Yellowhair. They sure. uh, made some comments regarding the legislation. So, with that, the uh, Nanat and Delegate Eugene So. Um, uh, I really don't have anything to cancel or anything like that, but probably has to eat up a hundred. He can and now the question of it. It's not because I'm an Ilya. So it's the down and his star husband. I let out all what a doll is as a council delegate. I don't see it that way. I let us on his whole a doll. No, to your shoulder. He had a lot of the crown on the yard, but I will tell you in a rather. Or for anyone saying, or for it, he compares only Katie the last. It's really understandable just by looking at the, the history of this. I don't be let us need to adapt to the old. I base or air. I or Honda yield in. Even now, not kidding. They had that's not during the three years. Out of it, out of size, a lot of present. Craven, I didn't edit any citizen. I have been loving citizen with your help. When I saw by you, but I haven't been stuck. I never caught it. Yeah, he could have it in the house. He is over in the house. So, what they need, let them be independent. Let them live the way. No, I need, 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 even now, I saw them to the syndicate. He called you not Katie, I'm Mr. Yellowhair, or Honorable. I see me, oh, or you're seeing your husband. But these many years, everything's been tried. We tried again and again. I see, 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 I I had no zit on the car to Joe, corner back to the Hadini. That's where this is the last resort of counsel to approve this and forward this and help our disabled Navajo uh, across the Navajo Nation. I showed it so they can be independent. Thank you, uh, Chair. Thank you. Uh, back to the committee, Budget and Finance Committee. And the main motion, further, any further questions, comments? Chairman, any of this, Vice Chair Smith? Uh, Vice Chair Smith, uh, you have the floor. I had not. I'd like to ask OMB a question. Uh, there is a pending request for amendment number one 
Amendment 1 that I was requesting didn't get a second, but there's another request for an amendment on behalf of uh, July 11th, 2022 on legislation 0107-22 from OMB on the 164 reviewers. I'd like to have uh, OMB kind of elaborate on behalf of that in preparation for possibly motioning the amendment that's uh, been uh, drafted up by OLC, Office of Legislative Council, Shinanda. Uh, Kashina, thank you, uh, Vice Chair Smith. Office of Management and Budget, Mr. Dominic Bial. Uh, good afternoon, mem uh, members of the committee. To um, answer Mr. Delegate Smith's question, the the original budget packet, the budget document, budget forms, and so forth, were sent to us back in March, and we did a review at that time. It was uh, Darlene Sam senior budget analyst and found some corrections. So the document was returned to Division of General Services to be hopefully corrected. And then and subsequently in April it was corrected. But in the meantime the legislation got dropped, but it had the original March budget attached to it, which is the one with the errors in it. Why it happened that way, I don't know. We don't control the uh, dropping of legislation and the various exhibits. So we were what we were expecting i was expecting that dgs perhaps working with legislative services would swap out or substitute out the budget packet but that did not happen so therefore we um we did our memo pointing that out and we were it stated yesterday, but we're hoping to get it to be enough committee before you started your meeting today, but I think we uh, we just missed it. So, so that's, uh, that's why we uh, submitted the memo. Now, Furthermore, the, the way the legislation reads, I think you, you all may have noticed it, it waives, it would waive the requirement for OMB review, which is in Title 12, Navajo Nation Code, Section 820M. That's what we refer to as the Appropriations Act. And so, we didn't want that section to be waived because we would um, we would not want to establish a precedent where it becomes to be a matter that's typically or cust or um, or waived. You know, it should be um, followed. Granted, we were a little late with getting the memo. Um, done and submitted. Anyway, Delegate Smith, members of the committee, announced the explanation for the memo as uh, was submitted this morning. Thank you. Thank you, thank you uh, Mr. Uh, Bial, for your explanation. And back to uh, Budget and Finance Committee, uh, Vice Chair Smith. Thank you, uh, Chair Henu and uh, Dominic Bial, Mr. Dominic Bial, for the uh, explanation. The waiver, um, it does uh, 
mentioned in the uh, legislation in this cell. So, Chair Henry, with your guidance on this, uh, there is a proposed amendment that was sent to us. Um, I don't know if anybody wants to uh, uh, take that uh, as an amendment one. I'll leave the up to the BNF committee members. Kushina, there's, um, thank you, Vice Chair Smith. I was on the Budget and Finance Committee there. Uh, has been email sent by uh, Office of Legislative Council uh, regarding an amendment. And there's, uh, I seen, I'm seeing three of them there are the same. But uh, so it'd be up to the committee if they wish to move on this amendment. Uh, so the floor is open for any comments or questions from the Budget and Finance Committee. Chair Haney, this is Peggy. Uh, Peggy, you have the floor. Okay, uh, going off of what uh, Dominic stated um, to the committee, the uh, Exhibit C, which is the um, budget forms, they have, uh, I, I see that they have different dates on them. So I'm just questioning whether those forms are uh, in order. If you see the first page that says Appendix K, that's dated 4-14-2022. And then the other forms are 6-29-2022 and 3-31-2022. Are those in order? That's that's just my question. Okay, um, thank you, uh, Peggy, for that question. And see if we are in order, Mr. Beale. Mr. Chair, committee members, um, responding to Ms. Nakai's question. In our memo, you notice we make reference to the corrected budget in our opinion, which is dated April 14th. And so it's attached to our memo. And if you look at it, you'll notice that the uh, signatures by Mr. Tooley, Mr. Platero on budget form one, are all 414, then on form two, similarly, are both dated 414. So that's why we're saying, in our opinion, that's the corrected budget. And it was our understanding all along that that's the one that would be appended. That's why he made reference to either switching them out or substituting the corrected budget. But why that was done, I don't know. That's it's up to um, the sponsor, the division, and uh, legislative services. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, Mr. Biel, for um, your input. Thank you. Uh, so, can you, uh, you please speak your phone? Mr. Chair, this is Loreline. May I speak? Oh, hold on. Uh, I believe, yeah, he did meet his phone. So, go ahead, Mr. Pai, you have the floor. Um, budget forms under Exhibit D that are posted on DIB that, that were posted with this legislation. Um, under D, it looks like the April 14th budget form one that Mr. Bial sent out with his email. It looks like the columns and code numbers and the dollar amount and everything, it looks like it's identical to the one that's posted on DIB dated 
629-2022, signed by Mr. Potero. Um, the budget form four looks identical as well. The only one that looks a little different is budget form two. The one posted on DIB dated, signed by Mr. Potero, June 29, 629. Uh, on number three goal statement, it says construct 16 site improvements with ramp, sidewalks, parking pad signage. The budget form two that Mr. Bial emailed out dated April 14th. On number three, the goal statement, um, it looks, it, yeah, it looks like this is this form, even though the numbers match up in two, two rows, it looks like the wording is different under one, two, and three. So, so this form is different. So I, my question to Mr. Bial is, um, is, is it only necessary to switch out this form, budget form two, with the budget form two that you emailed that's signed by Mr. Platero April 14th? Is that the only one that needs to be switched out? And then my, my second point is, um, Perhaps uh, we should, uh, it's up to the committee, but um, as pointed out by Mr. Bial in his memo, the Appendix K required for UUFB funding requests has not been signed by the branch chiefs. Um, that is not an absolute requirement but uh, Mr. Bial did point that out. Um, so um, I guess I just need an answer to my question. And if I do need to switch out budget form four, two, budget form number two, I can do an amendment for that quickly. Uh, and then it's up to the committee whether um, the program needs to go back and get the signature on the Appendix K. Uh, we don't have a signed Appendix K to switch out at this time. Uh, but it's possible that it could be switched out and, and the amendments could be done at Nabakiati committee. Uh, or uh, I believe it goes to Hess after this. Uh, Mr. Chair, thank you. Thank you, Sheena. Thank you, uh, Mr. Pai, for your, your input. And uh, so therefore, back to Mr. Bial. Um. Mr. Chair, committee members, responding to the um, question by Mr. Pahi. I think she referred to, if I heard her right, Exhibit D. Chair Hineo, this is Peggy. Uh, well, you're uh, uh, figuring it out, Mr. Bial. Uh, Peggy? Chair Hineo, the copies that were sent out from Julissa's office um, are the ones that you have at hand. They, that copy does not include exhibit D. There's, it's not off of dibs that uh, is being referenced by legislative council. The, the only, it, it just goes, the, the forms that, I mean, the exhibits that I have just goes from exhibit C, which is appendix K, and then it jumps to exhibit E. So um, the copies that were sent out from um, Ms. Johnson has uh, the uh, March, the forms, I guess, that were initially included in this legislation. And I would suggest that for consistency purposes, just uh, have the exhibit 
K, I believe that we weren't requiring, I thought that the council wasn't requiring signatures from the branch chiefs or the division directors for that for this current fiscal year. And so I think that exhibit K, the first page would be okay, but then uh, budget form one through three that uh, the uh, OMB is recommending to be included and swapping out the other forms that are under exhibit C, I think that that would be the way to go. If that would be my recommendation. Okay, thank you, uh, thank Chair. You. Uh, Chair, this is Don McBeal. Uh, go ahead, Mr. Beal. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I found Exhibit D. It's hard to find in the copy I have because Exhibit D is stamped on um, Budget Form 1. So Exhibit C is Appendix K, and then it, Exhibit D is the actual Budget Form, Budget Form 1. Then it wouldn't include Budget Form 2 and 4. So the um, the question by um, by um, Ms. Tapahi, you see, in this version, I don't know if it shows up in your copy, but business unit number is just left blank. So we wrote in in red new. So that would signify that this particular budget, if funded, would get a new business unit number. And then fiscal year, the fiscal year term is also blank. So minimally, it should at least refer to fiscal year 22. And then on budget form two, part to the uh, plan of operation uh, citation is also blank. Now, in the April version that I'm referring to, those corrections were made. So if you look at it, the April version uh, business unit does say new. The fiscal year term is filled in, and then on Form 2, the plan of operation is, uh, there's a statement there speaking to it. Mr. Chair, that, that's what I see as the differences between the two documents. Well, thank you. Christina Hela, thank you for your input, Mr. Biel, Mr. Pahi. And Ms. Nakai. So, Mr. Smith, so uh, back to the committee. Um, uh, Budget and Finance Committee, Shinada, as you've been following along and listening to the dialogue here regarding budget forms and which is which, and it seems that there's, there needs to be some work, some more work done to correct all the forms to make this legislation uh, correct. So it's up to the committee how they wish to handle uh, this legislation. Uh, Budget and Finance Committee members? Chair Himio. Budget and Finance Committee members, any recommendations? Uh, to the chairman. That will get Jimmy Yellow here, Shanda. Uh, yeah, there's not a shot, chairman, to the chair. So thank you for legal counsel and also um and thank you. to discuss this dialogue. Thank you, I very appreciate it. My uh, request was to make it directed to uh, uh request for a uh, from a uh, Dr. Jill Jim to uh, land which to be put for uh prepare for a uh, our legal counsel 
they did have a few hard thing classes and tell it and just want to go back to pack it to um, our advisor get a term uh, I believe um let's check your email they'll get your email there there was a response <clears throat> from legal legislative counsel regarding uh dr jim's uh, participation and so uh, look at your email there was an email i just seen briefly sent out for the uh back to the committee any further questions comments chair delegate begay dr delegate elmer p begay um Chair, uh, this is Delegate Brigade, um, members of the Melbourne Institute of Finance. Um, Chair, um, I'd like to uh, make a motion and not put the table this um, legislation as uh, uh, budget forms are incomplete and we can, they can correct it and uh, bring it back out to the Budget Finance Committee. I know that uh, I'm not sure how the uh, um, 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 legislative, uh, chief legislative council. I'm sure, if they can, if it can still move on, even though um, go to the next um, committee, even though if we um, table this like that, that'd be my question too. Uh, if, it, if I'm an order, I'd like to make a, a, a table this. Legislation. Sit down, Chair. Okay, Senator uh, Delegate Elmer P. B. Gay. Uh, a motion to table. Kodo and regarding your question, if the false it goes through the next committee, it will. It will be up to the sponsor um, to move it forward. If he, uh, Delegate Eugene, so wishes to do that. But as far as tabling your motion, tabling motion <clears throat> regarding uh, the budget forms need to be in order, corrections need to be made. A dot A will be noted in the journal. And therefore the next committee will be aware of what why it was table at that or so. And maybe they'll address maybe by at that time the issue will be resolved. So with that um uh they'll get only PVG, what's your timetable for uh tabling this uh, legislation? Uh, the next um, um, budget and finance committee meeting. Fukushima to the next budget and finance committee meeting for the Fukushima. What the echo? So that motion by Delegate Elmer P. V. Gay to table legislation to the next budget and finance committee meeting. In the meantime, A. These budget funds filing I think it should be directed by the agent, by the sponsor, and the agents, and including Mr. Um, Dominic Dion with the OMB and his staff and office legislative council. So that, uh, is there a second? Uh, Chair Henry, I got a question for, uh, office legislative council on the tabling. I appreciate that. Um, before I recognize the second, uh, Vice Chair Smith, your question to legislative council. Yes. Uh, legislative council. I know that we table, but we're not the final authority and I'm thinking that tomorrow is Health and Education Human Services Committee. So even though we table this, it's up to the sponsor and we'll, I guess he can take it to the next level and then Nobuki Etiquette and then finally to council. The way that this uh, legislation is drafted, it uh, is uh, going to be going to Budget, Finance, Health and Education Human Services, Nobuki Etiquette, and Navajo Nation Council. So I'm thinking that. Shinai is going to want to get this on the Navajo Nation agenda, therefore, Health and Education and Human Services tomorrow, and then Nabuki Yutkit Committee uh, Thursday, and then Navajo Nation Council, of course, uh, convenes next week. So um, my, my question is, even if we do table it to the next um, BNF meeting, it, it, be, it seemed to be fruitless. Am I right? Well, there's usually so, uh, vice chair uh, There's usually a timetable, and that's what uh, uh, Delegate Elmer P. B. Gay is uh, putting that in there. 
uh, whether it's fruitless or not. But if it does come back to the committee, then that's when it could be it'll be put back on the agenda if it, if it doesn't move forward. But I'm sure it will. But it's up to Shanta Delegate Eugene So, but at least the notation will be there as part of the record that the budget forms need to be corrected. Vice Chair Smith. Thank you, uh, OLC. Vice <laughs> Chair Thank you. Uh, you must say it's a pie. You have the floor. So Budget no Finance hate. Committee is not the final authority, so this will move on regardless of any tabling motion. Um, just for your information, um, I did send to Ms. Nakai an amendment to switch out all three pages of Exhibit D, which is the budget forms. The, the switching out would be uh, to replace the ones that are posted on DIB with the ones that were provided by Mr. Biel. Um, also, just in the last few minutes, uh, I did get an email from uh, Mr. Platero um, with a signed Appendix K. So I am sending out an amendment to replace that Exhibit C Appendix K. Uh, so the uh, issues that we've been discussing about the budget forms and Appendix K can be solved uh, with these two uh, further amendments at this time, uh, Mr. Chair, if if that's what the committee uh, desires. Thank you. Thank you, Shina. With that, uh, Vice Chair Smith, um, there is a motion to table on the floor right now. So I'm asking, Chairman. is there a second to the I think first second? Chairman, I took a second to oh, my brother. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. But there's no, there's no questions, Shinanta, on tabling motions. Um, Look at by Delegate Jimmy Yellow here. Motion by Delegate Elmer P. Begay to table this to the next Budget and Finance Committee meeting. And then that by that time, the budget form should be in order. Uh, second by Delegate Jimmy Yellow here. So with that. Oh, um, yeah. Uh, uh, I'll just get to the on my directive. Hey, hey, afterwards, Shunanda. Yeah. Afterwards, okay, so. Thank you. Oh. Yeah. Uh, Marijuana, roll call vote. Yes, Chairman Henry, roll call vote on the tabling motion. Honorable Raymond Smith Jr., how do you vote? Red. Thank you. Honorable Raymond Smith Jr. votes red. Honorable Jimmy Yellowhair, how do you vote? Well, I guess I have to vote green. Sorry, but I should say green you vote actually. I don't I was in the last. Yeah, I vote green. Thank you. Honorable Jimmy Yellowhair votes green. Honorable Amber Kenneth Black Hardy is excused. Honorable Nathaniel Brown, how do you vote? Delegate Brown votes in favor. Thank you. Honorable Nathaniel Brown votes in favor. Honorable Elmer P. Begay, how do you vote? I vote green. Thank you. Honorable Elmer P. Begay votes green. Chairman, we have three members voting in the affirmative, one opposition, a chairman not voting, and one member excused. Chairman? Christina, here now for the roll call vote. Three in favor, one opposed, chair not voting. Tabling motion carries, so therefore the legislation 107-22 is hereby tabled. Uh, so that question, uh, thank you. Uh, the, moving forward, uh, there uh, was a directive request by Shunanta uh, Delegate Jimmy Yellow here. And so HA could email Lilia. Uh, Mr. Pai, uh, oh. Peggy, do you have the directive? Uh, Chair Ginio, uh, I think that Legislative Council or Department of Justice, somebody needs to explain uh, the authorities of the NDOH, the Department of Health, as that, far as uh, making this of, directive. And I that think that part of, hey, there's no directive language yet. That, that would be part of the discussion. We did, I did see that email. Uh, so therefore, um, 
Do you have the directive language? Is my question to you. Mr. Chair, this is Laura Lee. Hold on, hold on. There's a question for Peggy. I'm still waiting for an answer. Okay. Do you have uh, the directive language, uh, Peggy? No, Chair. I, I stated before there's no. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I did uh, reach out uh, to Honorable Delegate Yellowhair to just ask him to shoot me a few sentences or so as to what he desired. I understand he did want to involve Dr. Jim in direct in drafting this directive. However, um, Dr. Jim did respond by email very quickly and she uh, stated that her, in her opinion, uh, NDOH does not have responsibility for implementing uh, repairs, renovations to address uh, disability compliance issues. And I emailed back uh, her and with others, uh, including Peggy, that it, it, I believe as well, it's my opinion that NDOH only denies permits. They work with IHS, environmental health, and they deny sanitation permits if facilities are not up to standards. However, they are not responsible for implementing the corrective actions that are necessary to bring the facilities up to the, the needed standards. And that's the reason why Facilities Maintenance Department is the entity that is making the request for, for this funding. Uh, it is within Facility Maintenance Department's uh, domain to, to uh, make these uh, uh, fixes to, to these facilities. Um, if you briefly review Exhibit A to the legislation, um, Facilities Maintenance Department explains that um, the um, since funds are not available to address all ADA building deficiencies, FMD is restricted to addressing parking pads and access ramps in small increments. So that's all that they're working on right now because of their um, because of their lack of, of funding. Um, and so they uh, provided the dollar amount Supply. that they're uh, please so uh, do you have the directive language ready or not i do not i do not at this time okay Shana. back to you about delegate jimmy here uh okay. the directive language you requested yeah it's the, the, the uh, it's not ready Jim. so with that um delegate here maybe uh not here you could make that directive um, with that, because I'd shame. Hopefully, by, by that time, you should have contacted uh, Mr. Pahi at OLC. Not say the other side Oh, I said um, I'll contact Nosa too. We'll contact Nosa too. So thank you, Chairman. Yeah. Yeah. With that, let's move forward to the next legislation, one zero six dash two two. Hey, yeah. I'll get Elmer PBG is uh, on board with us right now. So that, Peggy, if you would read legislation 106-22. Legislation 0106-22 is a proposed nomination council resolution and it's been assigned to Resources and Development Committee, then Budget and Finance, then the Big Etiquette, then Navination Council. 24th Navination Council, fourth year 2022, introduced by Elmer P. Begay, prime sponsor, tracking number 0106 22, an act relating to the Resources and Development, Budget and Finance, and the Big Etiquette Committees and the Navination Council, allocating $1,500,000 from the Citizen Fund to the Capital Projects Management Department, CPMD, to complete the TSTO Chapter Community Center project. 
reapproving the related expenditure plan pursuant to 12 and NC section 2501 through 2508. And there are committee reports. There is a committee report from Resources and Development Committee with a due pass and no amendment and a vote tally sheet. That concludes the reading. Thank you, Shana. Thank you for that reading. Uh, so this, uh, so the Budget and Finance Committee, is there a motion for 106-22? Is there a motion for 106-22? Delegate Yellowhair motion. Christina Shinodad, Delegate Jimmy Yellowhair motion. Is there a second? Legislation of 106-22, motion by Delegate Jimmy Yellowhair. Is there a second? Going once. Delegate Begay. Shinodad, Delegate Elmer P. Begay, second. So we do have a motion and a second on the floor. Uh, so that, Shinadah Delegate Elmer P. Begay, on the legislation 106-22. Okay, Don, thank you, Don. Chair Henio, I don't know members of the Budget and Finance Committee. How are you doing, Ya'e, Don? We have a legislation before you. So how, Don? I was trying to uh, unmute myself though, for a while. Are you, um, um, this is a shortfall from um, um, from the utilizing the CSP uh, funds um, for the capital project. Uh, it's, it, it's to complete the Tito chapter community center project, you know. This is probably the um, um, Almost seven years, I think, where the word, um, chapter, the Connect Tico chapter. Oh, I don't know, yeah, it's a bunny in there. It's a hundred years ago. And, um, I think the, um, they from the Nigi, um, I think for the Nanik, uh, so I don't get that is, um, even a hot dish. So, up to now, I think the even a, yeah, in, in, the shortfall became $1.5 million. So it's it called the automated. Uh, yeah, you got to get your own. Oh, that is, it's called this legislation is uh, drafted. So you put air that whole out on the that is, um, as you know, that um, um, the community of that is, uh, you um, see how she is now, she's at the uh, big uncle. And this is the part of that is uh, people that. Uh, are in the area of um, level Hopi Land Commission, and then some of them are Hopi Land Commission, Hopi Partition Land D double land show. So, in what it has now, it came to be uh, the chapter now of Adabon, the Hopi Land Commission, 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 you could be of the button of or miss it. No, I did it for a conduct of the time. So, this is one of the shortfall. Um, it's a request for a shortfall to allocate $1.5 million from CSC funds. AOK, that any accustomed article. I believe that Andy Thomas from um, CPMB, um, from Capital Project Manage Management Department, that I don't on the line, and I believe that uh, my brother, um, Elmer Clark, is on the line too. But if it's ever out of the AU project, they said, okay, we get all angry down on this legislation 106 dash 22. Things are in out of it, so I like to hear my um, time to um, Andy Thomas or um, uh, Shinada, um, Mr. Elmer Clark, that is uh, Chair Henio. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Andy Thomas, are you on the line? Uh, good afternoon, Shinanta. Uh, I am on the line. This is Andy Thomas, CPMB project manager. Can you guys hear? Oh, oh, did you
Okay. Uh, I don't know if Mr. Clark wants to go proceed before me, or should I just proceed? Go ahead, Mr. Thomas. You have the floor. Okay. Do you have any on? What do you find it? Too many dollars. Not that I know any. Andy Thomas, Mr. Clark's manager, CPMD. Uh, they cut uh, Tristo uh, project uh, building. They cut a not a not what the fuck. The chapter Tristo is all delegated. They need to do so. They not for those nature. Uh, for other those nature, they cut this or you bought what's the name. The or you were probably. Uh, uh, the reason for the shortfall was is due the post-COVID uh, uh, material increase from general contractors and their subcontractors, and uh, it all it hit it hit across the Navajo Nation with all their their sub material as an example, steel, wood, concrete. So those were a lot of the price increases that hit some of the uh, Project uh, project um, construction across the Navajo Nation. So, uh, and we, Marcus Murphy and I, in order for for this project not to stall out, we we had to break it into two phases. So we we had to make the main core building accessible and completed to what the budget was was to the budget we had. So it was like a four point seven million dollar project. Plus, you know, the uh, holding off on the full build out on the gymnasium side for the kids and some of the parking uh, on site parking lot. So, so that second phase, that 1.6, 1.5, we're asking, uh, please excuse me if I, I get that my numbers con confused. I think it's 1.6. Uh, so that second phase will complete the parking lot and the gymnasium. So we are on on schedule. Uh, we issued the notice to proceed back in September 8th and we're going into 10 months um, and we're by the end of July we are going to be about 85 to 90 percent complete the building. So uh, it's a uh Construction is not to do what the whole. It's in that second phase before the general contractor demobilizes. Uh, we, we like to proceed to uh, the second phase. So uh, to finish out the asphalt parking and the full build out of the gymnasium for the kids and students in the community and for the chapter officials, you don't know, for their, for their uh, community meetings. So uh, right now, uh, like I said, uh, CPMD, Mark Murphy, and I, we, we are pushing to get this completed and issue a, uh, a conditional use occupancy for the end of August, for a moving date of August 29th. So uh, all the infrastructure has been completed. Uh, water, sewer, electrical. So electrical should be powered up in the next few weeks. And right now, uh, to kind of give us Quick synopsis is right now all the finishes, the floors are being installed, uh, sidewalks, uh, millwork, painting. They're doing painting. So then once once the electric is, is fired up, um, you know we should be close to, like I said, eighty to ninety percent. But in the next two three weeks. So eh, uh, those those nights. That's all I have for the up construction update for Tisto. Thank you. Mr. Thomas. Uh, uh, Mr. Elmer Clark, you have the floor. Shad uh, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> Chair Hino, other members of the uh, Budget Finance Committee, and uh, other Navajo Nation Council members, <clears throat> those people online, Chair Yah, 
One is a book, G, Elmer Clark, um, he's still chapter president. So this uh, legislation that the court used today, $1.5 million uh, shortage. Uh, 2014 September, somebody just came in for whatever reason, you know, lit our chapter house to fire and burn it to the ground. We lost, we lost a lot of valuable. Documents, uh, artifacts, memorabilia, standards, they're irreplaceable. So, Kade, this is 2022, almost about maybe eight years. Uh, we started out to treat this as an emergency, but it's taken this many years to finally, you know, have our. Um, chapter facility replaced. There are between 2014, 2015, is, is when a legislation was signed, legislation uh, funding was allocated for replacement. Although, due to whatever protocol, the bureaucracy, oh, oh yeah, uh, then uh, the name not, uh, need not escalate on the cost again. And uh, the most recent being, being the uh, COVID. You know, I think across the country, across the board, it's this materials, uh, materials backlog, uh, were low on the priorities or other projects that are nationally uh, prioritized. And here at Chicago, for steel, uh, materials, uh, uh, lumber materials, lumber cost is on a cost. Uh, we the community a by to fight that the elders, you know, they, 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 it was an emotional time for them. A lot of them, uh, this COVID, it took this. But then a John Hatton Hato, we got it in Shanghai. Uh, to complete to complete the building as designed, uh, a, a gymnasium with the basketball courts, all the interior finishing, other uh, asphalt pavement, it aren't hard or But we need this 1.5 million shortage. Now that they they cannot just not buy it or again or need or need or even yet equal um the legislation so basically okay the they just need to be just joe who want to not okay john has to be done it's done it all it's in no special you get or she he plays a game so that's what needs it ad a party or a john he has to be so you don't think community Inflation, uh, even the gas cost, the gas prices, or it out of the contractor, plan date, those EPMD, or it was out of the But that, that, out of point, put on this before fall time, before winter time. Uh, we don't want a building that 
will be sitting there, uh, partially done, partially completed. Adult, adult, peso, kung ay yai, kung ay nado, kahit on behalf of all our community, our membership, our elders, our youth, our youth, pa penasni, no tete penasni, make replace it with the multi-purpose building. The ikotzaako from the community, from the leadership at the time, we were very supportive, and thank you for all the support, Nancy. Um, being at the Defamation Council, even off of the president, when he called not just a recon, that I don't know how to understand this. So I don't know how to understand it. Say, say, say about that much, Mr. Chair. Though uh, members of DNF, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Elmer Clark. I just want to get Amr PVG is a Ashwan Kso on your presentation. Oh, I'll I'll tell you down, Chairman. Thank you. Oh, Kshina. But that uh, there's a motion in the second. I don't establish it yet. So with that um, budget finance committee questions comments on legislation one zero six dash two two. Uh, then no, yeah, I'll call for the question to uh, for a roll call vote. Any further, qu any questions, comments? <coughs> that must we'll move forward to roll call vote. Ramona. Yes, Chairman, can you roll call vote on the legislation? Armel Raymond Smith Jr. How do you vote? Green. Thank you. Armel Raymond Smith Jr. votes green. Armel Jimmy Yellow here. How do you vote? Honorable Jimmy Yellowhair, how do you vote? Delegate Yellowhair, votes green. Thank you. Thank you. Honorable Jimmy Yellowhair, votes green. Honorable Nathaniel Brown, how do you vote? Delegate Brown votes in favor. Thank you. Honorable Nathaniel Brown votes in favor. Honorable Elmer P. Begay. I vote green. Thank you, Honorable Elmer P. Begay votes green. Chairman, we have four members voting in the affirmatives of opposing. Chairman not voting, and one member excuse. Chairman. Thank you for the uh, roll call vote. Four in favor, zero opposed. Chair not voting. 106-22 uh, has a due pass. With that, let's move forward to the next legislation. 110-22. Uh, to let Delegate Wilson, T. Stewart Jr., are you still on the call with us? Oh, Jana, I'm here. Okay, now that, Peggy, if you'd read the legislation into the record. This is a proposed nomination council resolution assigned to Budget and Finance Committee, then Resources and Development Committee, then the Big Committee, then the Nomination Council. 24th Nomination Council, fourth year 2022, introduced by Wilson C. Ski. I mean, excuse me. Wilson C. Stewart Jr., prime sponsor, tracking number 0110-22, an act relating to the budget and finance resources and development and the Gaetic committees, and the nomination council allocating $5 million from the citizen fund for the assessment and remediation of the former Navajo forest products industry location in Navajo, New Mexico, approving the related expenditure plan pursuant to 12 NNC section 2501 through 2508. There were no comments from the internet public review. Thank you for that reading. I saw Vanessa. Let's uh, move to a motion. Is there a motion? Delegate Yellowhair, motion. Okay, motion, motion. Delegate Jimmy Yellowhair. Is there a second? Vice Chair Smith. Motion and second by Vice Chair Smith. So we do have a motion and second established. So that is, uh, we'll move to Schnitzelet um, uh, Delegate Wilson C. Stewart Jr. So you have the floor. Let's uh, introduce your legislation. 
Agustin Shanai, Doshna as Vice Chair, I run the BNF Committee members, Budget and Finance Committee members of Nothanigi. On Otoyat A, called this legislation, Nigi A, yeah, it's for the former NFPI, NFPI, but the Nigi A, yeah, the Navajo Forestry Industry Products. So it's the Don A, yeah, in the 90s, yeah, Don A, A, Ajit, that is called, and there was an operation for lumber and milling and, and um, forestry product from forestry products called Anhinihi Enterprise and Anako. After almost 40 years, the years of being in operation, through that, there's been some findings and some developments as to the area that it has occupied since, to, since I became a delegate for this area. We've been actively involved in assisting the community and the PUPC members, as well as Navajo Nation EPA, US EPA, to find out what needs to be done, what needs to be cleaned up, how areas like that um, <clears throat> need to be given attention to. To get it all cleaned up and get it back to where it needs to be. My agent is Ms. Pam Maples, from Navajo Nation EPA, from the community, they present back, especially because Pam Maple, she presents back to the community as what needs to be done and what the process is doing for grant seeking grants. The community um, and myself, we would decide to see what nation, the nation can help with to show that you know we are doing something as well, instead of relying solely on grants and whatnot, even if it's just a portion. No, that's why we put this legislation together. Shen um, no, the budget and finance committee members. That's just an intro to this legislation. But future, uh, if you guys have, if the committee. Hey, yeah, if you have any questions or concerns, go, hey, I will refer to my agent, Miss Maples. Uh, but if she wants to say something on behalf of the legislation, Miss Maples, I know you were online earlier in Samuel. Uh, then I'll turn the floor over to you, if that's okay, Shana, Chairman. Hineo. Uh, Delegate Stewart, this is Pam Maples. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Oh, good. I would like to test my connection so that I can be ready. <laughs> okay, yes. Uh, Delegate. Oh, yeah. Oh, go ahead. Okay. Go ahead, Ms. Maples, if you want to add anything to the um, legislation that we have prepared. All right. Thank you, Delegate Stewart. Um, members of the committee. I did prepare a, a brief statement to attempt to point out um, the, the, the contaminants at the site and the, the direness of the situation. And so if you can hear me, I'll just read that now. Um, the environmental concerns at NFPI include uh, the facility water supply wells. They're contaminated with asbestos, heavy metals, benzene, and other petroleum contaminants. The groundwater beneath the site, especially in the fenced-in area, the 102-acre area, area, is contaminated with hexavalent chromium, diesel, gasoline, and that's at least. I don't haven't done any other exploratory sampling to see what else is there in the water. The soil is contaminated by mercury, hexavalent chromium, dioxins, furans, heavy metals, pesticides, asbestos, down to at least two feet solvents, oil, grease, lubricants. The asbestos is co-mingled with the petroleum contaminated soil and the soil is so heavily contaminated that it's just bleeding diesel and gasoline into the groundwater. 
but the floor soil is commingled with asbestos to at least two feet depth below the ground surface. And the groundwater interface is at about 18 to 20 feet. Diesel fuel is floating on the groundwater at the site. There was two feet of diesel floating on the groundwater at one point. We had it down to less than an inch, but that was several years ago. So it has probably reaccumulated during the pandemic. A soil gas report shows that chloroform is coming up out of the soil in the area of the powerhouse. The facility discharged boiler, blowdown, and cooling tower water into Black Creek, into the east, the north, and the west of the site, all areas of Black Creek, and also into the former sewer lagoons. The discharges contained lime, sodium aluminate, soda ash, sulfuric acid, descalants like hexavalent chromium and algaecines. There is also concern about the methylmercury contamination in the sediment, the water, and the fish of Red Lake. In fact, U.S. Uh, Fish and Wildlife and Navajo EPA surface and groundwater issued a fish warning for Red Lake uh, that was before the lake was drained to repair the dam. The contents of drums and chemical totes that were present at the site have been found to contain or formerly contain ferrous chloride solution, hydraulic fluids, waste oil, diesel, gasoline, antifreeze, mercury, transformer oil, lubricants, and et cetera. And the 176-acre open dump associated with the facility extends up Black Creek to the east about a mile and is known to contain sawdust soaked with formaldehyde. All chemical waste from the operation and maintenance of the sawmill and the particle board manufacturing plant were disposed of in this dump. Uh, the open dump does not have any liner. And due to different conditions at depth in, in any open dump, especially one as deep as this one, chemicals that migrate through with rainwater contact other chemicals without oxygen, and they combine to make new chemicals and contaminants that never were put in the dump to begin with. For example, you can get uh, cyanide out of open dumps because of the way the rainwater percolates through and frees up different constituents. Um, hexavalent chromium at levels substantially above the standard for protection of groundwater and dioxin have been leaching from that rapidly eroding dump since the 1960s. And we have recently confirmed their presence in Black Creek in the actual water in the soil of the creek on the north and on the east side of the site and also behind the diversion dam in the sediment uh, used to fill Red Lake. The site has, a, has had been a serious asbestos hazard up until last summer when we did a time critical removal action for asbestos at the site. The presence of um, various toxic heavy metals on the site and in the creek could have resulted in impaired neurological development in children who live and attend school near the site play in the creek. Animals who drink out of the creek um, plant uptake, including medicinal plants, and I'm currently researching the uptake of metals and specifically chromium, hexavalent chromium in plants and livestock and whether or not it bioaccumulates. Um, I mentioned the time critical removal action last summer, over three and a half months, we removed over 4,000 cubic yards of asbestos waste material for, from the former kiln building and also the piles and debris and just every piece of surface asbestos containing materials on that site was picked up by hand. Uh, they cleaned up the entire fenced in property and sealed it all up and sent it off to a permanent facility <clears throat> for off-site disposal. So that's the quick rendition of what's going on at the site as far as we know it. We don't have a conceptual site model because we have just begun investigating the site. Um, so far, grants that were secured to do this work, um, the Environmental Justice Grant was secured. It was $120,000 and we built a web page 
for the community so that I could keep them updated. We did um, community awareness. We're having meetings and we're hiring speakers about re redevelopment and land reuse. And we also, they funded the surface soil sampling in Black Creek that happened two and a half, three weeks ago. Um, we got a Brownfield assessment grant, $350,000. We're going to use that coming up in August to delineate the hexavalent chromium that was discovered on site. It's in the soil and it's in the groundwater. And so we're going to do a series of borings to figure out where it is. And it has the potential to have going across the road under uh, Route 12 there and being on the other side. Um, there was a targeted brownfield assist assistance tool that we secured and we use that to find the hexavalent Hexavalent chromium in the first place. Um, I have five phases of the target of brownfield assistance coming up this summer to fully uh, investigate and characterize the sediments in Black Creek because it's becoming uh, an issue that there are these dangerous contaminants in that drainage. And so over the course of the rest of the summer and maybe into the spring, we're going to try in five different activities to drill holes and investigate the nature and extent of the contamination in that whole watershed as it is affected by that site. We just secured, there's a supplemental round of funding for brownfield programs coming out from the federal government. And I managed to secure two of those um, and put money into one of them for site specific uh, investigation and remediation at NFPI. And um, I'm currently applying for some more grants. I've got an air quality monitoring grant that I've applied for and also a community-wide multi-purpose grant. The, uh, I'd like to say that cleanup by the federal government can be problematical for some of these constituents because the federal government likes to show that there is no direct exposure pathway. And that's an old story. And so they might not allow the use of federal funds to do some of the cleanup at this site, specifically the hexavalent chromium, because the town of Navajo gets their water from another aquifer. So they're already talking about maybe not wanting to fund that, and that's why tribal funding is so important. And I would like to finish by saying that showing tribal commitment to remediating this site is really great for leveraging grant from funds. Uh, in the future from the federal government. That's all I have right now. Shania, Chairman, that completes our presentation for this legislation. Uh, today, we do have a motion of second established already. So with that, um, so our budget finance committee, is there any questions, comments? Uh, budget finance committee members, is there any comments, questions? I uh, know, yeah, I'll call for the question. To accept resolution resolution legislation zero one one zero dash two two if there are no questions. Ah, uh, Denita Echo. With that, let's move forward to roll call vote. Uh, Ramona. Yes, Chairman Hinger, roll call vote on the legislation. Honorable Raymond Smith Jr., how do you vote? Honorable Raymond Green. Smith Jr. Thank you. Honorable Raymond Smith Jr. votes green. Honorable Jimmy O'Hare, how do you vote? Honorable Jimmy O'Hare, how do you vote? Joe J. Yellowhair votes green. Thank you. Thank you. Honorable Jimmy Yellowhair votes green. Honorable Amber Kenneth Bob Carter is excused. Honorable Nathaniel Brown, how do you vote? I vote in favor. Thank yes. you. Honorable yes. Nathaniel Brown. Votes in favor. Honorable Elmer P. Begay, how do you vote? Honorable Elmer P. Begay, how do you vote? 
Chairman, we have three members voting in the affirmative. Zero opposing, chairman not voting, one member not voting, and one member excused. Chairman? Thank you for the roll call vote. Three in favor, zero opposed, chair not voting. Uh, one, one, zero dash two, two receives a due pass. Thank you. Uh, with that, let's move forward to uh, last legislation uh, for action. Then we'll have two other action items. Uh, legislation 104 22. Chay Doug Odoso, are you still with us? Chairman Henio, yes, I am with you. Peggy, if you would read the legislation to the record for us, please. This is a proposed nomination council resolution assigned to resources and development and health education and human services committee, then budget and finance. And then uh, the Bikia committee, then the Navajo Nation Council. <clears throat> And it's introduced by Otto So, co-sponsored by Paul Begay Jr., Seth Damon, Pernell Halona, Daniel Iso, Thomas Walker Jr., and Edison Winika Council Delegates. Tracking number 0104-22, an act relating to the resources and development, health, education, and human services, budget and finance, and Nebuchadnezzar committees and to the Napa Nation Council allocating $25 million from the Citizen Fund to the Tuba City Regional Healthcare Corporation for its long-term care, cancer and rehabilitation facility, approving the related expenditure plan pursuant to 12 NNC section 2501 through 2508. You have... Um, Committee report from resources and development with a due pass and no amendments and health education committee report with a due pass with no amendment. Thank you for that reading of the legislation. Now with that, should our budget and finance committee, is there a motion? Delegate Yellowhair, motion. Motion by Delegate Jimmy Yellowhair. Is there a second? Vice Chair Smith. Second by Vice Chair Smith. Uh, do you have a motion and a second on the floor? I know with that, let's move forward to a uh, uh, presentation. Uh, should I ask Delegate Odo Soche, a presentation? Uh, yeah, I did. I did. Uh, should I, uh members of the uh, Budget Finance Committee, members also uh, chairman and uh, vice chairman of the uh, committee. Aron Ali, those of you on the line uh, who are listening abroad. Introduction that's me. Don't auto so a yet. This thing a ya um behas ani a penda a uh uh shinan shinale a ya uh behas ani a ya um ye is of an uh other ye just now ado ade a budget finance committee member no shini ade a ya of a kodo a car of jail but not a the, the legislation number 0104-22 agenda festival. The, the, the agenda, the legislation that has been read into the record, a ad buhi na koko a yab yad lini a a a ya um wakhe akoho a ya akodo toninis is a day aja the tibu city regional healthcare corporation will ye koko a ad 
داشن تا ای یا ری به هز آنی که ای یا خدی دیل نه اتخا آد و اند ای آنی غنی تاهی تا ای یا یشل دا یشل شیل داد لشود آ به هز آنی خدی دیا اون که هدیش چیه ای یا دی جه دی به هز آنی که چیه ای ناتین دمیل صحولیه و ای ای یا یکی ای یا آم the amount that's been um, requested is the amount that is um, needs to be um, uh, the, the remaining amount of the project. A uh, $25 million will kid. The Tuba City Regional Healthcare Corporation, a peso, yo kid, yo the neighbor Washington, the yo yo kid, yo $25 million matching funds for a long-term care, cancer care program, cancer and cancer care program expansion and rehabilitation facilities. Uncle de peso ye a ya si has sin will ye de a ad a ya peso sin a de a de peso ka a ya hoden hoden lam a ya babaja hado nika babaja ado ni in le connest is a ha ha Ajit um Zaich in Sa Ange ya six thirty eight facility it uh Dashin Salo e I da shop a tra a trahnan nishila Uncle uh D did art at neck or go a leg a star fifty a star sixty million dollars behind it. Uncle D D ya ya lenish at Chudayos low uh I in the tried the car. I'd say, yeah, uh, $25 million each of those. I thought that based on the high school, that's in so it's a base of the job, but yeah. I don't know, 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 it's a loan from the U.S. Department of Agriculture. I don't know, you watch it, yeah. Eight million dollars. A ya structure da yos. A a ye ho one do a day ho one day from the United States Congress. A a de da shin to a peso. A do a ya a human health service. A peso a grant a ye bunch of debt. A a koko a bechichik za go a ya tatin no ba a tat mil sa a chos. A di ge ya twenty five million dollars. When they're not able to kid or a ya did the long term facility, did the long term care cancer care program expansion and rehabilitation facility. A ya a when they're not a base of a ya but chohot and all that. I call the okay, the a ya aj a a ya ha ho so to aj dashing to go boundary um. ز ایش این آد ز آهنش اینی که داشتن صبر نه صبر بیتی دنیج چوش ایتاد نه دیو خدا هست زود ای وسترن ایجنسی این تو کوکینو کانتی ایون این تو نابوهو کانتی ام کوکو ای یادی ده ای یا کامرن چپتر لاتو بگات با آروی آدو اون دا کومان کانیون چپتر آدو کابتو the chi de so he the chos. Add on the the copper mine. Add on the the chapter of Tonalia. Tonanis is it so? Add on so na be na she de inle inle sha to do na si ade da buhi anaho. Add on inle de so e ya kadi ahade hard rock de da he the chos. Ako ah yud na hot ah zi ish in na ee ya hot ah ee ya ah bich chong on ee. Ako ko ee ya pe ko ko ee ya ti te um ye go na ho ti ti tha ko ba 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 ya ti ee. Ako ho ti te ya um ti te na ho ti da ki nini ki ee ya a chai ki the elder the long term care facilities to yo sani ba ha ya ni ki این لیده ایا از توی دوستانی که لیخاد شی بدایی نی لیخاد شی ونزلوده دنها از تا دو 
Their walking ability, the Hadid Ego, the Bataho, Aho, Lady, 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 Bebe, Behana Hadish, to teach the body how to walk or how to teach it, but not to your ink, but grand, in the Adet Naha Naki, that it's east, it's east, that Christ aunt of Nebuchadnezzar dies. Erat, I hold the Yego, Nebuchadnezzar, Nahoto, Nah, Eya, to Ay, that is. I go eighty string, eighty what. There's two nursing home facilities that were built, that, uh, that were funded. One was the um, nursing home, that facility that was built with um, in Chin Li, the Guy Gorman nursing home facility, which was a new facility. And um, the cash match came from um, the nation we have appropriated monies, Navajo Sihisin dollars, into that um, nursing home facility. And uh, with the um, with the work working with uh, NHA, Guy Gurman North Nursing Home, under the 23rd Council. And <laughs> And lady, you can't have a sad or base by a lord, the other, the Kago Ashon, that should I just sneak and laugh, though. I call Ati this jagged, Ati, so I yard, I thought the Hadi days in all that. What are all the gentle co, bear, 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 I bend his and has seed on Shanaka. I don't that did the eyes is in Diego, that initiated to the healthcare corporation. Sales taxes. They will generate um, monies back into the Navajo Nation sales tax as uh, products are being bought or uh, utilized and so forth. 
akoko ibn na goko a a to peso gi ya na yi a ho a akoko to 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 um the tribute healthcare corporation does pay na wo nation sales tax a de ya ho a open hi ta ha si do ni i don't uh, with that i have um the board president on the line chris uh chris curly and i believe um the ceo um uh, Lynette Bonar should be on the line also. And uh, Chairman, if I can, I'm going to give some time over to Lynette and um, Mr. Chris Curley if I have missed any other um, provisions or anything of this presentation. I'll give my time over to uh, my two agents. Maybe we can uh, see if the committee has any questions. If there are any questions, then your agent can help you with those questions. Oh, okay. Uh, budget and Finance Committee, are there any questions regarding legislation 04 22? Uh, then if there are no questions, I'll go straight to, well, I'll call for the question. If there are no questions regarding this legislation. Uh, so that will call for the question. Uh, Ramona, if you lead us in the roll call vote. Sure, Chairman Hino, roll call vote on the legislation. Honorable Raymond Smith Jr., how do you vote? Aye. Honorable Raymond Smith Jr., how do you vote? Honorable Jimmy O'Hare, how do you vote? Honorable Jimmy O'Hare, how do you vote? Don't get O'Hare, vote screen. Thank you, Honorable Jimmy O'Hare, vote screen. Honorable Nathaniel Brown, how do you vote? Uh, Delegate Brown votes in favor. Thank you, Honorable Nathaniel Brown votes in favor. Honorable Elmer P. Begay, how do you vote? I vote green. Thank you, Honorable Elmer P. Begay votes green. Honorable Raymond Smith Jr., how do you vote? Chairman Hino, we have three members voting in the affirmative, zero opposing, one member not voting, one member excused, and Chairman not voting, Chairman. Thank you, Ramona, for a roll call vote. Three in favor, zero opposed, Chair not voting. Uh, legislation 104-22 receives a due pass from Budget and Finance Committee. I can ask you, for your legislation. I appreciate it very much. Thank you, Budget and Finance Committee, for the vote. And uh, okay, it's an idea. Vice Chair Smith, vote screen. Uh, Ramona? Ramona, did you get that? Yes, uh, Chairman, I got that. I noted. So the total vote on the legislation is four members voting in the affirmatives or opposing and one member excuse. <clears throat> Chairman not voting. Chairman. Thank you for that. So with that, let's move forward uh, to item. Next item on the new business agenda is scheduling oversight budget hearings by the week of July 5th, 2022. Is there a motion? Budget and Finance Committee. Next item is um, scheduling a oversight budget hearings for the week of July 25th, 2022. Is there a motion? Delegate Yellow Air motion. Okay, motion by Shanda. Delegate Jimmy Yellow Air. Is there a second? Delegate Begay, second. Okay, second by Shanda. Delegate Elmer P. Begay. So we do have a motion and a second on the floor. With that, um, Peggy? Yes, Chair. Can you provide some background information on this? Well, the um, FY23 budget process, we're starting the 
the, the um, process has already started as OMB has reported and the oversight budget hearings are scheduled sometime the week of the 25th through the 29th and the committee just needs to decide what days they're gonna have the oversight budget hearings. And this is an annual event that happens every year. Christina, thank you. So with that, um, committee members, there is a motion in second to schedule the um, uh, oversight committee's meeting for the week of July 25th and 2022. Is there any comments, comments questions? Your hand, you know, Vice Chair Smith. Uh, Vice Chair Smith, you have the floor. Uh, thank you. Um, I don't want to pose the uh, date for what is being uh, proposed on the motion second. However, we've got an important event happening on the 25th and starts around about uh, in mid midday or something like that. Uh, that bridge down in Navajo, Arizona finally completed and we'll be dedicating that. So just request to be excused for that time period and I'll jump back on after um, our dedication has been completed. I'll be on before the dedication starts too. So. FYI, and, uh, thank you. Vice Chair Smith, uh, thank you. Also, we do have a RPAC committee meeting, a full day at Twin Arrows on July 27th also. <clears throat> so with this, um, uh, committee members, any further questions, comments? Chair Peggy? Usually the Budget and Finance Committee uh, selects what days they want to have these oversight budget hearings, and hopefully we'll have the uh, legislations for the oversight um, budgets ready by, by uh, the dates that you select to have your hearings. Um, previous years, it's only taking you a couple of days, three days maybe, or two days to have the hearings. You could just wait until um, you could select like 28th and 29th, or you could even go with uh, a 22nd and the 26th or something like that. You know, depending on what days you select. And we just do a memo informing the speaker that those are the days that the committee selected. <laughs> oh, Kushina, thank you. Thank you, Peggy, for that. Um, <clears throat> so that, so that delegate Jimmy Yellowhair is holding the main motion. Um, uh, so that delegate Yellowhair, would, the, would that 28th and 29th work for you on your motion? Great to uh, tell the chairman. And I would have seen that 28, 29. Be good, and then can go down to August. Be a seller. Of course, you know. I'll go for 28, 29. Be a national delegate. Omer PVG, you're holding the second. I'll speak. My delegate, Elmer PVG. With that, if there are no questions or comments, there's a, um, with a modified motion of uh, July 28th and 29th by motioning party and the seconding party. If there are no questions, we'll go to vote and accept those two days as our budget oversight hearings. Uh, Ramona, roll call vote. Yes, Chairman, can you roll call vote on the budget hearings? Honorable Raymond Smith Jr., how do you vote? Green. Thank you, Honorable, Honorable Raymond Smith Jr. votes green. Honorable Jimmy Yellowhair, how do you vote? Honorable I'll vote green. Thank you, Honorable Jimmy, green. Jimmy Yellowhair votes green. Honorable Nathaniel Brown, how do you vote? 
Delegate Brown votes in favor. Thank you, Honorable Nathaniel Brown votes in favor. Honorable Elmer P. Begay, how do you vote? I vote green. Thank you, Honorable Elmer P. Begay votes green. Chairman, we have four members voting in the affirmative. Zero opposing, Chairman not voting, Chairman. Akashina Kela, four in favor, zero opposed. Turn that voting motion carries. Uh, then with that, let's move forward to rescheduling the August 2nd meeting. Uh, Peggy, before I recognize the motion, uh, the purpose of rescheduling the meeting. Okay, Chair Hinia, back on the uh, oversight hearings. Can we start those like around 8.30 or 9 o'clock? That way you can make maximum use of your, your two days, 8 o'clock or 8.30 for the oversight hearings. Peggy, when, when you're developing the agenda, just start them at 8.30. Huh? Just start them at 8.30. 8.30 uh, for the oversight hearings, okay. Alrighty, thank you. Um, as far as the August 2nd, August 2nd is the primary election for the Navajo Nation, as well as, I, I'm not sure if that's the same day as the, uh, any other state elections or anything like that? I, I'm not sure about that, but I know that the nation uh, elections are being held on the August 2nd, and I, I'm not sure if the delegates want to be out campaigning for that day. So, and the 2nd of August is our first meeting date for the month of August. Is this a, it's the first Tuesday of the month of August. And so that's the reason why I put that on the agenda. Chair. Okay, thank you for that. So that's in the Budget Finance Committee. You've heard why uh, recommendation is made. So um, if there is a motion to reschedule it, then we'll uh, suggest new dates after that. So is there a motion? Motion, Delegate Begay. Proceeding motion by Shanda, Delegate MRP Begay, a toy Nisphasia on that day for so motions. Is there a second? Delegate Yell here, still Chairman. Delegate Jimmy Yell here, five brain, Ila. So we got motion and second. <laughs> <laughs> so that uh, the floor is open for you. <laughs> uh, is there a motion? There's a motion and second. So with that, do we have a uh, Floor is open for uh, suggesting uh, a new day for the um, uh, Budget and Finance Committee. The following Tuesday is August 9th. Uh, Delegate Elmer P. Gay, you're holding the main motion. Would that work? I'll be going. Delegate Jimmy Gale here in the show. I'll be going. Starting at 10 o'clock, the regular time. So. With the motion modified to August 9th, 2022, by motion party and second party. Uh, with that, are there any questions, comments? Here, hey, Neil. Uh, McPeggy? You have um, August 8th through the 19th is when we have comprehensive budget hearing for where budget and finance is going to be conducting the, the um, those budget hearings. There's um, the week of the of August first through the fifth is currently open, as well as the week of the twenty second. You don't have any uh, anything going on. The second meeting of the month is um, this the fifteenth of August is the second meeting of the month. Just with FYI on that. And then also the, let's see, the 29th and 30th, those are open dates. That's what I can see on my, on my calendar. So any of those days I think will work. But the 9th is, might be the day that you're having your uh, budget and finance committee hearings, the budget hearings on the divisions and for the comprehensive budget. <clears throat> Thank you for that information. 
but in the past, what we've done also is that we've skipped the day and we could skip uh, that day. It's up to the motion party. Uh, do you wish to uh, modify your motion again or stick with it? Go ahead, modify that. Thank you. Okay, Hajda, not what, what days are you looking at in your modification? Um, is there um, any uh, tentative date that um, August first? Um, you can do I just refer to um, hello. Oh, August first, we got August August now. August first, yeah. August now. Um, should I get Jimmy out here in the shop? I'll be the August first, August first, yeah. I think we have some open dates. August three, four, and five too. Oh, the budget here is very important. Get over with it. Mikushina. So we do have a modified motion August 1st, 2022 at 10 o'clock, uh, second party. So with that, back to the committee. Any questions, comments on August 1st? Atenaya Ramona, roll call vote. Sure, Chairman Hingo, roll call vote on the new scheduling of the meeting. Honorable Raymond Smith Jr., how do you vote? Green. Thank you, Honorable Raymond Smith Jr. votes green. Honorable Jimmy Yellow here, how do you vote? Honorable Jimmy Yellow here, how do you vote? Honorable Nathaniel Brown, how do you vote? I vote in favor. Thank you, Honorable Nathaniel Brown votes in favor. Honorable Elmer P. how do you vote? I vote green. Thank you, Honorable Elmer P. Begay votes green. Honorable Jimmy Yellow here, how do you vote? I vote green. Thank you, Honorable Jimmy Yellow here votes green. Chairman, we have four members voting in the affirmative, zero opposing. Chairman, not voting. Chairman? Thank you, Shane, with that. Four in favor, zero opposed. Chair, not voting. Be a, a motion carries. Index item on the agenda, action item, scheduling the budget hearings from August 5th, 8th to the 19th, 2022. Is there a motion? Is there a motion to schedule the budget hearings? Delegate Begay, motion. Okay, she's on that. Delegate Elmer P. Begay. Is there a second? Yellow hair. Second. Delegate Begay, motion. Delegate Jimmy Yellow hair. With that, the uh, questions, comments on the scheduling of the budget hearings, August 8th to the 19th. Now, I don't know if there are no questions. Uh, we just need to be up for a schedule there that those two weeks. So, uh, Ramona, a roll call vote. Sure, Chairman Henya, roll call vote on the scheduling of budget hearings. Honorable Raymond Smith Jr., how do you vote? Green. Thank you. Honorable Raymond Smith Jr. votes green. Honorable Jimmy Yellow here, how do you vote? Delegate Yellow Hair votes green. Thank you. Honorable Jimmy Yellow Hair votes green. Honorable Nathaniel Brown, how do you vote? Delegate Brown votes in favor. So. Thank you. Thank you. Honorable Nathaniel Brown votes in favor. Honorable Elmer P. Begay, how do you vote? Hello, green. Thank you. Honorable Elmer P. Begay votes green. Chairman, we have four members voting in the affirmative. Is there opposing? Chairman, not voting. Chairman? Four in favor, is there opposed? Chair not voting. Motion carries. We have scheduled our budget hearings. Uh, yeah, with that, yeah. that takes care of all the uh, business items on the agenda. So now we go back up to reports. Item 5A. Okay, Chair. Uh, 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 Peggy. So for the comprehensive budget hearing for Budget Finance Committee, August 8th through the 19th. What time do you want to start? 8.32? Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we do have um, a procurement code amendment. Emergency procurement code procedures. 
uh, presented by Ms. Kristen Lowe, our attorney from DOJ, and Ms. Uh, Ajua Adoje Denso, from uh, attorney from the tax unit also. So with that, um, Ms. Lowe. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, let me um, shift gears here. Okay. Um, so as I understand it, the there were some questions about um, what may have been done by the 23rd Navajo Nation Council in regards to uh, amendments the Budget and Finance Committee was working on to essentially overhaul the procurement code. And um, so what I, I have the um, document, uh, but it's, it's still in a very rough draft form. It, so it's not, it wouldn't be something that's ready to be entered into the legislative process. Not only that, but the document itself um, hasn't been looked at since um, December of 2018. So I thought what, excuse me, 2019. So I thought what I would do is just um, highlight some certain areas that um, the group went over and um, then uh, maybe give some recommendations from that point. Okay, so um, one of the main areas that the uh, group looked at, and I'm calling the group, I don't know if they were called, I think they might've been a subcommittee um, of the Budget and Finance Committee, but I, I don't remember the official name of it. So I'll just call it the um, Procurement Working Group. One of the main areas that um, that they looked at, and now I've just closed my document. Sorry, just give me just give me a minute to um, find the document. Okay. So one of the main areas was um, source selection and contract formation and selecting vendors to perform the services is, is always a difficult area. We have um, a variety of different types um, of ways to choose vendors. One is competitive sealed bidding, and that's probably the one uh, that we're most familiar with. And um, so departments and offices will prepare um, a request for proposal and uh, send that out. It's required to, um, right now, in our procurement regulations, it's required that newspaper advertisement be done. And that reflects, obviously, the um, regulations and the procurement code haven't been revised. Uh, but now we have a need to modernize that because most people aren't reading newspapers. So the fact that we're required to post notices in newspapers isn't necessarily the best way to capture people who might be interested in bidding. Um, and also, obviously, there's an um, advertisement expense that is associated with advertising in a newspaper as well. Um, one of the questions that they looked at is, um, do we want to set forth a, a certain time period and um, there's, there was no um, consensus yet as to how long um, that should actually be. Um, so that's one thing that 
would require some policy guidance from Budget and Finance Committee. Also, uh, one of the things that the working group looked at was right now um, we have the um, a threshold set at, um, or that rather, there's this maximum feasible price. So if What a department has to do is determine what the maximum feasible price is. And then if any of the bidders come up with a proposal over that price, like it's it's automatically um, kicked out. So if you're if you're it's kind of like the price is right. If you go over, you're it's automatically excluded. So um there was a thought as to if there should be uh, any flexibility with that or should it be um, required to rebid. Um, okay, there, uh, another thing is establishing evaluation criteria. That's another area um, that needs to be updated. And the group didn't really have, um, they didn't come to a conclusion on that. So that is something that is still up in the air. Um, there was, it was proposed that a system could be created and maybe that would even go in the procurement regulations or um, a procedures manual was even suggested. So that would be in addition to and separate and apart from the procurement regulations, but that is something that was just in the initial discussion stages. Okay, another a major area, and this is a source of frustration for many people, is the, the small purchase. So small purchase um, are those amounts Currently, that is those amounts that are um, under fifty thousand, and then what the proposal is to modernize it and have three levels of purchasing. So you would have a micro purchase, which would be a thousand dollars or less, and that would take out the requirement of competition. So um, if it's a thousand dollars or less the department or office could just select a vendor free of any kind of competition requirements. From 1,000 to 5,000, the requirement would be for two quotes, just two quotes, any two vendors, and then 5,000 to 100,000 would require a minimum of three quotes. And then um, also, there would need to be an update to the procurement rules and regulations so that we're giving guidance to the um, users, the divisions, departments, offices. Also, one of the things that they did um, with that was to take OOC and DOJ or Ledge Council uh, out of the process. So, um, one of the things that we would do is put something in there about who's responsible to ensure that there is in fact compliance with the procurement requirements um, and that would alleviate some of the frustration that uh, we hear about people being frustrated with the 164 process um, okay uh, there is um, a section on emergency, but I wasn't sure if um, the emergency issue, procurement issue that I was talking about was supposed to be regard in regards to the ARPA FRF, that we have um, specific procedures that were approved by Navajo Nation Council in that CJY 4121 legislation. Um, but just to touch on briefly, um, 
this section, the proposed section, um, would eliminate the need for prior authorization to, to determine an emergency. Um, and then the procuring party would need, just need to provide notice to OOC within two business days um, of contracting. And then um, the division director would be responsible for ensuring the requirements with that and making the decision that it is in fact an emergency. <clears throat> The only thing they did with sole source um, is to eliminate, looks like the Department of Justice review from the sole source. And um, for legislative branch contracts, the Office of Legislative Counsel would be the legal office that was signing off on that. Um, and they kept the division director and OOC to be involved in that, um, which is okay. But if that is the way um, leadership chooses to go, then there would need to be a significant um, revision and expansion to that section in the procurement rules and regulations. And then similarly, I think that idea of a procedures manual or a toolkit would be uh, really key because when I am reviewing sole source justifications or when I'm reviewing 164 reviews for procurement, I find sole source justifications are the primary area that I have to go back and forth on with the procuring party. Um, and that's also an area where DOJ gives advice to the Office of the Controller, the purchasing section. The purchasing section, they are advised by the tax and finance unit. Okay. Um, and then um, there's, there's a lot that gets into construction, which I don't have a lot of familiarity with construction um, procurement of construction services. Um, let me just see here. One of the issues that um, has come up is in termination um, and expiration of contracts. So Apparently, there's an issue with modifications to extend con construction contracts not always being processed, and then the contract expires. So there's a thought that some language would need to be developed to be able to resume, resume work with the same company multiple times for the sake of greater efficiency. But language had not been developed before the expiration um, of the 23rd Navajo Nation Council. Another thing, um, there was an idea to add more about contract clauses and their administration. So um, adding a new subsection um, prohibiting litigation, arbitration, or dispute resolution. Um, let's see what else. There's uh, a section developed to add a new section titled Payments and Retention, which would outline a time frame for contract payments and retention to ensure the contract performance. Um, funnily, there's a section in here, the Navajo Nation may not be able to meet the 14-day payment deadline, so this deadline may need to be extended. Um, and that would need to be something we would need to consult with OOC purchasing um, and the um, rest of OOC as well. Okay, um, there is a section on find a finance, fiscal responsibility. And... Um, 
that's a section that it's recommended to move into the regulations where we can spell it out in more detail and then also amend it easily. So because the procurement code is part of the Navajo Nation code, that would be something that's approved by council. And then the procurement rules and regulations are um, only approved by the Budget and Finance Committee. So that is something that it's definitely easier to amend. Okay. Um, those are the highlights. So I'm happy to answer questions at this point. Um, actually, one thing that I wanted to mention is in terms of recommendations, I know that Delegate Smith has put in a request to the Office of Legislative Counsel to do an overhaul of the Procurement Act, but I'm not sure if he requested any specific things to be included in that. Um, so that's something that should be discussed, but it's probably going to do, it's probably going to require a few work sessions to get a handle on where this council and this budget and finance committee want to go with amending the Procurement Act. And then because I know it's budget season, this project is probably going to be something that happens in fiscal year 2023. Um, and then they're also, in order to have the whole Navajo Nation be able to understand and um, make the changes that are proposed, there's probably going to need to be a delay in actually implementing it. So we wouldn't be able to say approve this in April and then by May be up and running with it because there are also this is also going to require changes to the procurement rules and regulations, as I mentioned, but also the NBOA, Navajo Business Opportunity Act. So this is probably a six to 12 month project. Chair. Okay, thank you uh, for the uh, presentation on the report. <laughs> is there a motion to accept the report? Motion, Vice Chair Smith. Motion by Vice Chair Smith. Is there a second? Delegate Yellow Hair. Delegate Jimmy Yellow Hair. With that, we do have a motion and a second. The floor is open for questions. Any questions? Chair, I have a question. Mm -hmm. This is Peggy. Uh, committee members, are there any questions? I think I heard somebody. Uh, Chair Henio, this is Delegate Crotty. I'm back on the line, and I would like to ask a question. Uh, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, um, Kristen Lowell, for the report. Uh, my concern, Chair, is um, regarding some of the items that were identified by Ms. Lowell, um, especially the 14 days for OOC to process payment. I'm looking at the timelines of when this language was approved, and now I'm looking at could there be any internal um, while we work with on the procurement policy? Are there any internal executive actions that could take place to expedite or to create a system to have this emergency pro pro procurement process? It seems reasonable to have something paid out in 14 days, but the norm for Navajo is like three to six months. Um, I'm, I just want to stand firm that there should be something or something internally can be considered, uh, considering how much ARPA dollars have been distributed, and it's been nearly a year, so last July 
council approved it for administrative costs signed into law, you know, the first or second of August, and we're still seeing these challenges internally. Um, what are some of the recommendations on how to move forward? Thank you, Chair. Hey, uh, thanks. Thank you for the question. Uh, Ms. Lowell? Chair, that is um, something that we would need to talk directly to OOC on, since that's more of a practical matter um, than a legal matter, at, at least at this point. Um, Delegate Crowdy's um, concern is well taken. Uh, I don't know if anybody from OOC is on the line that would be able to speak to that. Um, I, I, yeah, it's less of something that like I would want to see in the regulations or even in the code and more something um, that would need to be discussed internally. Sure. Chair Henry, put me to queue, Vice Chair Smith. Hey, thank you, uh, Ms. Lowe, for the response. Uh, Vice Chair Smith? Uh, thank you, Chair Henry. Also, thank you, uh, Department of Justice, uh, Ms. Lowe, on the uh, update on the uh, procurement code amendments. I know that the chapters always have this uh, problem especially when it comes down to services that need to be provided ASAP. And they're always told, nope, you can't do that. And it's an emergency. For instance, uh, one was uh, building a road to the cemetery, COVID-19 basis. And they were told, you got to go through the uh, procurement process, which takes days and months and probably even years. Uh, I hate to say that, but that's practically how things end up to be. Um, how do we amend that so that uh, emergency is an emergency where it would clarify specifically saying that certified chapters and non-certified chapters will be able to utilize funding because we have this big ARPA fund that's been uh, passed just uh, here with the Navigation Council and we're ready to uh, get the uh, <clears throat> funds out and there's uh, several emergencies that I could see on behalf of uh, utilizing the funding and how do we ensure that we can put that language in there saying emergency uh, procurement will be uh, amended so that there's no um, red tape going through three vendors and getting three quotations and on and on and on and then it has a uh, bumps in the road and hiccups here and there. How do we make it smooth so that they can get that service done ASAP? Uh, that's my question, uh, Chair Henio. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. Uh, uh, Vice Chair Smith, for your question. I'm back to you, Ms. Uh, Kristen Lowe. Thank you, Chair. Uh, in answer to Vice Chair's question, there was uh, an amendment to the procurement code in council resolution CJY 4121. And what that does is it allows expenditures using the ARPA FRF funds to be treated as an emergency. So there's a simplified process and that process is the procuring party. So let's say a chapter um, and just keep in mind that chapters that are not LGA certified um, can't contract um, on their own. This, so this is more toward LGA certified chapters. Okay, so the procuring party, so let's say it's Lupton chapter, they are using in your hypothetical, they're using these ARPA FRF funds 
they would be able to use the emergency procurement process, abbreviated process, set forth in CJY 4121. And essentially, the procuring party drafts a memo stating that this is used pursuant to the emergency and that they have looked at the BRD source list. So you have to always look at the source list. They look at the source list. They look at the priority one. Okay, there's no priority one vendors that meet the requirements. Okay, next you go to your priority two. There's no priority two categories that meet, that are able to meet the requirements. So then from there, you only need as the procuring party to contact one vendor who's not on the source list to be able to enter into the contract. So I think that alleviates a lot of the concerns that you have. However, I just want to stress that is only when using ARPA FRF funds. So if there's another funding source, this would not apply. And then um, if it's not using ARPA FRF funds, you gave the example of building a road to a cemetery. Um, again, construction is in my area, but I'm just gonna go out on a limb and say it's more than $1,000. So then that micro purchase kind of drops off. And then there's that um, other category. What, did, what was that between? 5,000 and 50,000. Yeah, um, excuse me, it's 1,000 to 5,000. There's your two, then you go up to two quotes. Um, and then if it's between 5,000 to 100,000, then you're looking at a three quote minimum, and that would be your small purchase. However, again, road construction seems like it would be something that is over that threshold. So if it is, that's still subject to the competitive sealed bid process. Chair, Vice Chair. Hey, thank you. Thank you for the uh, response, Ms. Lowe. Uh, back to you, Budget Finance Committee. Any further questions, comments? Uh, no, Chair, any other questions? Uh, Vice Chair Smith for a follow-up, then I'll defer to Delegate Ember and after that. Thank you. Okay, Budget Finance Committee members, uh, thank you, Ms. Lowe, for the uh, <clears throat> breakdown on CJY-41-21, which is basically covers the ARPA FRF only, and other funding sources doesn't be isn't is not covered. So how do we that's my question on it how do we amend that um, um, emergency procurement procedure because if there's an emergency let's say it's not related to the arpa funds it's related to inclement weather or another pandemic uh, something else how do we tweak that language so it's it's a it's a blanket for any emergency and all emergencies are unknown and we don't know when it may come to pass, but something that, that we can pull out and say, this is terrified in the emergency because it'd be a declaration made. It's not gonna be uh, hypothetically just thrown out there saying, it's an emergency, we need to do this. It has to go through uh, the tier of uh, Department of Emergency Management and then eventually the president of Nav in Nav 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 Nation signs it in or the chapter president himself uh, does uh, making a declaration through their uh, procedures. That's the question I have, uh, Chair Henning. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Vice Chair Smith. Uh, I'll get Amber Kanasma Karate. Yep, floor. Uh, yes, Chair, thank you. So uh, we already have the Chair Just in terms of my uh, follow-up for my initial question while 
Office of the Controller provides or internally, um, we, we don't know how long it takes for procurement. And, and why don't we know? We only know sometimes when we're checking on, on certain contracts or a vendor starts calling us or, um, or things happen. Um, is there a system, does Navajo Nation track these, these contracts? And how do we make sure then our own laws are being enforced? Um, because if it says 14 days, I would assume there would be someone keeping the program accountable to that 14 days um, to, to pay out when it comes to the emergency procurement. And my question, Chair, would be, where is this provision being used? Um, when we talk about COVID response, we now know, I heard, you know, possibly construction, but COVID related to um, the health response, it related to uh, like tourism and broadband. So how does, how does, how does economic development what are they doing or how are they using the emergency procurement to help um, with the economic development um, assistance or for future um, or economic development projects that were considered for ARPA eligibility? How would they have used this in the emergency, using the emergency procurement process? Uh, thank you, Chair. Thank you for that question. Uh, with that, um, those two questions, uh, first I'll defer to Ms. Kristen Lowe. You have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Um, so for Delegate Smith's question as to like, how is it, how is it done? Um, that's why Delegate Smith, I'm recommending uh, a work group or a group that gets together for work session and we can kind of discuss, we can all, if we're not in the same room, maybe I'll get on the same page as to what's needed. And then from there, the attorneys would need to consult with DED and OOC uh, purchasing. And maybe they would even come to the work session because they need to give that they need to give us input um, from practical perspective. I say uh, DED because uh, BRD is under the office of or the division of economic development. And so they're involved with making sure the re uh, requirements of the Business Opportunity Act and making sure that the source lists um, are utilized properly. And then DCD as well, because they get they get into construction. And um, construction is obviously a much more technical area. And then also um, DCD, in addition to CPMD, the um, administrative offices for the chapter, they would need to be involved. Um, so as, as a practical matter, that those conversations need to happen, I think, before le legislation is introduced into the process. Um, but then, I mean, once legislation is introduced into the process, this would just be something that um, goes to probably, um, it might even go to all the committees, but at a minimum, it would go to BNF, RDC, NABI, and Council. Okay, and then for Delegate Crotty's question, um, so what I meant by using the um, abbreviated emergency procurement process that's set forth in CJY 4121. So if any department 
is using FRF dollars, they can initiate an emergency procurement. And that comes, that still is subject to a 164 review. So as part of the 164 review, it's going to um, go to OOC purchasing, and it's also going to go to the Department of Justice for review. And all they need to do is set forth a memo that just explains um, they're using FRF funds, that they've checked the source list, and um, that's basically just a memo to the file. Nobody else needs to sign off on it. Um, just the procuring party put, keeps that memo in the procurement file and submits it as part of the 164 review. So as far as, like, say, for example, what DED would be doing, um, that would be something that DED would need to answer directly. And um, I think there was another part to Delegate Crowdy's question, but I missed that part. Chair. Sure. Okay, thank you, uh, Ms. Lowell, for your response. Um, there was a question for the controller's office. Uh, Ms. Elizabeth Gay, are you still on the line with us? Ms. Elizabeth Gay? Office of the controller. Okay, it looks like they're not on the call here. Uh, with that, let's move back to the uh, Budget Finance Committee. Uh, Peggy, did you have a comment or question? Um, just my question was just about the procedure of um, the overall uh, rulemaking process that will take place. Would this require public hearings or anything of that sort, Kristen? And then um, if, it, if it would require public comment and all that, how long would that process take? Um, slow. Thank you, Chair. Um, in answer to Ms. Nakai's question, so would it require a public hearing? No, I wouldn't say it would require it. I guess it depends how deeply um, BNF and Council wants to get into this. I mean, certainly um, the delegates here from constituents and um, certainly at the chapter meetings or the chapter officials bring up some of the difficulties in entering into contracts as part of the procurement process. So delegates may feel like they have a good handle on that um, already. I mean, that's something that could be done, but no, I wouldn't say it's required. Um, and as far as rulemaking, um, okay, so any changes to the Procurement Act and NBOA, those are going to be amendments to the Navajo Nation Code. So those will be, that'll be legislation that's gonna go um, through the typical legislative process. So anyone is welcome to comment in that five-day period. And actually, comments can be made after that five-day period. What the, that five-day period puts is a limitation that no legislative action can be taken before that point, but comments can still keep coming in after the five days. And then as far as the regulations go, um, again, it's, that is something that is up to BNF exclusively the regulations that is it it depends on how the committee chooses to handle it they can um you know just do it uh something with navajo nation government if they want to 
call in executive branch representatives, legislative branch representatives, judicial branch representatives, um, if they want to have an open public forum. But again, it's legislation, so it's something that is going to be drafted, put into the process, and the only legal requirement is the five-day period, Chair. Hey, thank you for that response. Uh, back to the Budget Finance Committee. Any further questions, comments? If there are no questions, further questions, comments, we'll call for the question to accept the report. Okay, with that, let's move forward to accepting the report. Uh, Ramona, we'll call vote. Chair, Chairman, roll call vote on accepting the report. Honorable Raymond Smith Jr., how do you vote? Three. Thank you. Honorable Raymond Smith Jr. votes green. Honorable Jimmy Yellowhair, how do you vote? I vote green. Thank you. Thank you. Honorable Jimmy Yellowhair votes green. Honorable Amber Kenneth Mott how do you vote? Uh, Senate Vision Delegate Crotty, I vote green. Thank you. Thank you, Shadeja. Honorable Amber Kenneth Mott Crotty votes green. Honorable Nathaniel Brown, how do you vote? Honorable Nathaniel Brown, how do you vote? Honorable Elmer P. Begay, how do you vote? Honorable Elmer P. Begay, how do you vote? He votes green by text. Okay. Honorable Elmer P. Begay votes green via text. Honorable Nathaniel Brown, how do you vote? Delegate Brown votes in favor. Thank you. Honorable Nathaniel Brown votes in favor. Uh, Chairman, we have five members voting in the affirmatives or opposing. Chairman not voting. Chairman? Thank you. Four in favor, zero opposed. Chair not voting. Uh, we have accepted the report. Thank you, Ms. Lowe, for your uh, presentation. Okay, next item on our agenda as we go on the list for reports is uh, item B. Item B, which is um, the FRS update, Mr. Tom Platero. Yes, this is sure. Yes, Mr. Chair. Mr. Botero, are you there? Um, <laughs> uh, Botero. Tom Platero, are you still there with us? It sounds like he's having technical difficulties, Chair. Yes, I believe it is because I can barely hear him. He sounds like a, a robot. Uh, well, he get well. He's getting his uh, uh, connection back on. Let's move forward to uh, Mr. Dominic Vial, uh, updating the FY23 budget process, and then we'll go back to Tom Platero. Mr. Vial. Mr. Dominic Bill. Yes. 
What's that? Wonder Rock is. Do you still have power out there, Peggy? Yes, but you can hear thunder here and there. Hmm. It's starting to rain here, too. Uh, Mr. Dominic Dial. Okay, let's move forward to um, our controller and Ms. Elizabeth Gay. Maybe that's what's happening with them. The first time I tried calling them, they're not responding. There might be some issues. Yes, Mr. Chair, I'm here. Can you hear okay. me? Okay, great. And then uh, you're, you're next on the reports for Ar ARPA Hardship Assistance Program. Yes. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Chair, Budget and Finance Committee. I'm here to report on the latest update on the ARPA hardship uh, program. I uh, emailed uh, Peggy the summary today of the hardship uh, check run. Um, I trust everybody receive a copy. If not, uh, let me know so we can email you. Based on that uh, summary, as of uh, today, uh, July 12th, for the past uh, five and a half months, we issued uh, 325,810 hardship assistance checks, amounting to 541,070,400 dollars. And uh, we reserve another 6,644,000 to cover 3,322 Navajos that are sharing CIB. And we reserve another 11,844,800 for this week's uh, check run. We anticipate to issue checks for approximately 8,000 new applicants for the ARPA hardship. And uh, we also comparing the initial budget of 557 million plus the supplemental budget for the resolution that was just approved by the council, appropriating another 120 million for the ARPA hardship assistance that provides a total of 677 million for the ARPA hardship. And that represents 33% of the 2 billion 79 million Four hundred sixty-one thousand four hundred and sixty-four dollars FRF funding or the ARPA funding. So, based on the budget now for six hundred seventy-seven million minus the five hundred fifty-nine million five hundred fifty-nine thousand two hundred dollars expenditures to date which are the check run and the reserve, there's available balance of $117,440,800. And that should be sufficient to cover approximately 60,000 additional Navajos that uh, will apply for the ARPA hardship assistance. And uh, I was informed that uh, there is a delay in uh, issuing CIBs for new applicants, uh, new enrollees, but uh, just be reminded that uh, the deadline for the ARPA hardship assistance program is uh, December 30th, 2022. Um, but of course, if um, um, there's a delay in the CIBs, 
we may have to revisit that deadline, given that we should have available money to cover those uh, Navajos that have not uh, applied for their CIB or newborns that have not received their CIB. So that uh, concludes my report, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, Ms. Begay, for the report. Uh, with that, is there a motion to accept the report? Vice Chair, motion to relate. Motion by Vice Chair Smith to accept the report. Is there a second? A uh, motion by Vice Chair Smith. Is there a second? No, uh, is there a second going once? Motion made by Vice Chair Smith to accept the report. Is there a second going twice? Motion by Vice Chair Smith to accept the report. Is there a second going three times? No second. Chair Hineo. Yes. Uh, there's a second part to this report on the donations. That's separate. That's uh, a separate item on the agenda. So Chair there's Hineo, no, a question. no second. Uh, so let's move forward. Uh, Vice Chair Smith, any question? So uh, the way I understand that these reports and prior counsel and as the speaker would say, set precedents, <laughs> we usually don't require a quorum. So could we open a door for questions on this if we don't get a second? Yes. Because it seems uh, like... Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Well, if there's no second, then we, um, I believe we do have a quorum. Let's, let's check. Uh, Ramona, can you do roll call, roll call for us, please? Yes, Chairman Hino, roll call for the Budget Finance Committee of the Nomination Council. Uh, Jamie Hino? I'm present. Thank you, Jamie Hino. Honorable <clears throat> Jamie Hino is present. Honorable Raymond Smith, Jr. I'm here. Thank you. Honorable Raymond Smith, Jr. is present. Honorable Jimmy Yellowhair. I'm present. Thank you. Honorable Jimmy Yellowhair is present. Honorable Elmer P. Begay. Honorable Elmer P. Begay. Honorable Amber Kennesbach Crotty. Honorable Amber Kennesbach Crotty. I'm um, Shannon. This is Delegate Crotty. Um, I'll vote red. Thank you. Thank you. Honorable Amber Kennesbach Crotty is present. Honorable Nathaniel Brown. Honorable Nathaniel Brown. Honorable uh, Delegate Brown is present. Thank you. Honorable Nathaniel Brown is present. Honorable Elmer P. Begay. Honorable Elmer P. Begay. Chairman, we have five members present upon roll call, one member not entering roll call, Chairman. Okay, thank you for that roll call. Uh, we do have a quorum and there was no second, so let's move forward uh, to item E, uh, close out of CARES funds, read to Lonnie Lake Enterprises and uh, Jacques Zacus Rondi, <laughs> the TLE Board Secretary. Is there a representative from Tolani Lake Enterprises? 
Yes, my name is Gary Baichetti. I'm the board president for Telenic Enterprises. Dr. Shina, thank you for uh, being on the call. Aldo, Mr. Emerson Horace from the controller's office. Chair Hania. Yes. This is Peggy. Yes. This uh, report, uh, we've been advised by the Department of Justice that we need to go into executive session on this report. Okay. But with that, let me need to see if everybody's present. Mr. Emerson Horace. Ms. Elizabeth Begay, are you there, interim controller? Yes, I'm here, uh, Mr. Chair, and uh, I believe Emerson is still trying to link. Yes, I, I was on mute there, uh, Chair Chair uh, Jamie Henio. This is Emerson, present. Okay, thank you, Emerson. So we do have um, uh, presenters here, and that. So with that. Um, uh, this requires a executive session, and therefore uh, we do need to go a motion and second to go to executive session. But with this, uh, uh, Department of Justice, Ms. Lowell, who will be uh, representing DOJ. Thank you, Chair. Um, as far as Department of Justice, it's going to be Mel Rodas and I. Okay, so I guess. Um, We'll be going into the executive session here real soon. Uh, Office of Legislative Council, Ms. Tapahi, will you be joining us? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Mr. Shana, thank you. So we do have um, uh, Mr. Baikiti, Ado, Mr. Horace, and then uh, uh, Department of Justice attorneys, and Ms. Tapahi, and then Peggy. So those will be the participants in the executive session, unless if I missed anybody. Uh, with that, committee members. Honorable we, Chairman. Uh, who's this? This is Gary, Mike Eddy. No, Gary, yes. Could, could I bring in some uh, uh, some of our people in this uh, executive session? Oh, uh, uh, for the record, who would they be? Uh, Marlon Stevens, our executive director. Okay. Uh, Jacques Saran, who should have been the presenter. I don't know, I don't know if he's having technical problems. And uh, Nelda Thomas, who's our accountant and bookkeeper, and uh, one of our contractor, who's uh, Nikki Kelly with her license. Okay. And okay. also a board, a board member, uh, Stan Robbins. Okay, uh, Gashina, the, um, do you have a, a email contact with uh, Ms. Peggy Nakai? Uh, check, see me through the Zoom. No, we, we won't be in Zoom. It will be, a, it'll be a, a, a virtual call. No, no, I don't. Okay, what we'll do is, um, uh, Peggy, if you're listening, um, Mr. Mr. Blake Kitty, would you uh, uh, announce your email address uh, so Peggy could email you the information? It's Gary, G-A-R-R-Y, at jelanilake.org. Uh, did you get that, Peggy? I was trying to get that. He went really fast. Do it again, please. Yeah, that's Gary, G-A-R-R-Y, at Tolani Lake dot org. Could you please spell out everything? Tolani Lake, does that have an E on it or? Okay. T as in Tom, O L A N I, second words Lake, L A K E dot org, O R G. 
Thank you. <clears throat> There's no space between Tolani and Lake, right? Correct. Okay. So G A R R Y at Tolani Lake, which is one word, dot org. Yes. What does she know? Did you get that, Peggy? Yes, thank you. Thank you. And um, one other question, who will be set, setting up the the uh, closed call? Mr. Chair, this is Mel. I just sent out a WebEx invitation to members of the committee, um, as well as Ms. Nakai and Ms. Bob Roth, um, Ms. Tapahi, Ms. Ol and Mr. Jason John and controller Begay and her staff. Um, I'm not sure if, if the committee wants to invite anyone else to, to the meeting, sir. Mr. Rodasa, uh, we have Tolani Lake Enterprises <clears throat> on, the, on the call with us, the um, uh, executive staff and uh, board president, along with other board members. Uh, so they'll be on the call also. And did you get his, the email address that we we're spelling out earlier? Um, no, sir. I apologize. I didn't catch okay. that, but I'm hoping that Ms. Nakai could forward it to um, Talani Lake Enterprises, sir. Okay. Thank Thank you. You. So with that, so the uh, Budget and Finance Committee, uh, there's a motion, need to entertain a motion and a second to go in executive session. Chair Hanyo, um, if I may. Uh, who's this? Uh, this is Loya Hanachni Henderson with uh, OLC. I will also be attending the executive session and I just wanted to put that on the record. Dr. Shina, thank you. You're with uh, the Legislative Council, right? Yes, I am. Dr. With thank that, you. Uh, is there a motion to go in executive session going once? Is there a motion to go in executive session going twice? Is there a motion to go in executive session three times? There's no motion. So we'll just continue. I guess we cannot hear the report because this requires an executive session. So we'll move forward on our agenda. Uh, next item on our agenda is item F which is um, uh, Ms. Uh, Dr. Fowler. Are you on the call with us today? Uh, Dr. Fowler? You. For some reason we can't hear you. What about now? It sounds you like you're here. muffled or something. Can't hear you. That was my uh, my AC was on. That's why it was getting hot. <laughs> okay, there's there was no motion for executive session. I called three times. Now next move up, move to the next agenda item, which is the uh, report on the uh, status hiring status of the uh, controller, Miss uh, Doctor Fowler. Are you on the call with us? Chair Hinio. Yes. It's Tomasita Woody. She's the department director for the per Department of Personnel Management. Uh, during the agenda, uh, Delegate Yellow Hair specifically called for Dr. Fowler. That's why I'm calling. Good morning, That's sir. Ready? This is, or good afternoon. This is Ralph Yelbegay, Public Information Officer with the Division of Human Resources. Unfortunately, Dr. Fowler is unavailable to attend this particular meeting due to a family emergency. However, um, Ms. Thomas City Woody, Human Resources Director with Personnel Management is available to address any questions the committee may have regarding this particular report. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Begay, for uh, giving us the information and uh, we hope that everything works as good for, Ms., uh, for Dr. Fowler and her family. So. With this, uh, Ms. Thomasita Woody, I do see you on the call here. So therefore um, you have the floor to give the report. 
Okay, thank you. Um, everyone um, has <clears throat> Um, in terms of a report, I'll just give you um, an overview of what the, what I understand the question might be, what is the status of the position of the controller with the Navajo Nation? Um, thus far, it's um, it has been posted since June 23rd of this year. Um, we did we do have a closing date of July 29th. And the position, currently we have no um, applicants who've applied for the position. And so um, I don't know if there's any other questions that the committee may, may raise or have. Hello. Thank you. Thank you for that brief report. Thank you. Uh, with that, um, is there a motion to accept the report? Is there a motion to accept the report? Delegate Yellowhair. Motion by Delegate Yellowhair to accept the report. Is there a second? Is there a second to accept the report? from Division of Human Resources. Motion by Delegate Jimmy Yellowhair to accept the report. Is there a second? Going once. Motion by Delegate Jimmy Yellowhair to accept the report. Is there a second? Going twice. Is Delegate McGay. Is Delegate McGay, can you hear me? Oh, oh, a second. Oh, uh, Terrence, what was that? Uh, I thought uh, my, uh, uh, my phone dropped for a while. So I'm trying to get back in. Okay. We, 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 um, we have, we, we heard a report from the social services. And there's a motion by Delegate uh -huh. to accept the report, and we need. To, I'm looking for a second. Oh, uh, I'll go ahead and make a second. But uh, Jerry, what about uh, the ones on Tanani Lake Enterprise? Are they still on? I, I believe so. I don't know. If we uh, tried to ask for a motion to go in executive session. There was no motion. I thought we just moved on. Okay. Can we go ahead and bring it back up? I can make a motion on that. Uh, after we my, hear the report. After we hear the report, okay, sure all right. So there is a motion right. thank thank you. to accept the report. I'll be the second, yeah. So that um, floor is open for questions for Ms. Uh, Thomasita Woody. Chair, sure, this is Delegate Crowdy. You have the floor. Uh, you have the floor. Uh, yes, Thank you. I am trying to look for Ms. Woody's report. Is there any written documents that I can review? Thank you, sir. That's my question. your question. Uh, Ms. Woody, were you able to provide a written report? Uncomfortable. Chair Henio. Yes, Peggy. Members of the committee. Um, there was a, an email that was provided by Ms. Woody, and I sent that out to all of you. Um, trying to see where the, I, I sent that out, I believe it was at 318. And it primarily says, good morning, Peggy, at the present time, position two, one, 270, controller. Currently, no applicants have applied. The closing date is July 29th, 2022. This concludes my summary response. Thank you. Thank you, Shana. Thank you, Anna, Peggy. Uh, so I guess uh, there was an email that was sent and disseminated to, to, uh, to, um, to, um, uh, regarding the report. So 
with that, uh, uh, they'll get Amber Did you get that? Unknown call. Okay. Uh, yes, uh, Chair, thank you for the floor. I apologize for that. We're also here at a bike um, kickoff with uh, the Tuska Mountain bike ride. So thank you. Um, I did hear that summary, um, Chair. How is DPM? How is DPM um, publicly? I have not heard any type of information that they are that the that there isn't um, a current application um, period is open for the office for the controller. This position also requires um, in, in other like corporate areas, they'll, they'll ask for someone to go and look like a headhunter or someone who can go and attract uh, someone of this caliber to join the nation. What efforts are being done by DPM right now to, to recruit um, any potential uh, candidates who meet the requirement? Thank you, Chair. I'm uh, going to enough for your questions. Uh, uh, could I, uh, back to Ms. Tomasita Woody. Uh, your response, please. Um, thank you for that question. Um, when we, when anytime we have to recruit, um, we usually will get a response from the department who is needing to uh, request for a recruit um, more than, more than any times the department will have to submit, um, utilize their own budget. And in this case, what we do is we provide the necessary recruitment onto our website. So in terms of efforts of recruitment, um, the responsible and respective departments have to request that because it does require, um, it's not cheap. So as far as, um, that goes, we don't have the budget specifically for this position. So it would have to be done from OOC or the um, another department. Thank you, Chair. Good evening, for your response to the question. Uh, but at the same time, so there, the, the question was, has there been any type of outreach besides this advertisement? And your answer is no. Um, not at the moment that I've um, noted, yes. Thank you. Uh, with that, back to uh, the Budget and Finance Committee. Any further questions, comments on this report? This is uh, Delegate Yell here to the chairman. Delegate Yell here, Ada, you have the floor. Okay, uh, this is a very important. This position's controller is one of the major we need for the Navajo Nation. Why there's until the last minute advertising until June 23rd and only one month. This should have been advertised way back in a year, almost half a year ago now. It's important to the Navajo Nation. This decision has to be made in this. I uh, totally agree with my Honorable Crowdy. I don't know, because I did be either independent or republic other uh, uh, other uh, newspaper for the big that then, but all who is failing to get to see uh, advertise is uh, Dr. Fowler should be involved. She's the vision, uh, human resource division director. Well, I have a concern on this one. Well, here and just we're lacking advertise. We need to do this advertise again. We need to do a good job from there, Dr. Fowler. That's my uh, my questions uh, to the chairman. And the hot idea, I think in the we need to hire a controller with no conflict of this. What's going on with the nation? We need a new a new blood to come to the Navajo Nation. It's not the chairman. Yeah, Thank you very much. Exchange here, Lashon, and offer your question. Uh, Ms. Thomas here, Woody? Um, absolutely. I, I agree with you in terms of advertisement. We can work with the controller's office to request 
that disposition uh, be externally. And there's, there is journals that we can advertise. We just have to find um, those particular journals that would be appropriate. So yes, we can definitely do that. That's not gonna be a problem. Um, we just need to have the information to us so then we can be of assistance to that. We do have several departments who, um, when they advertise you know, in the newspaper or wherever, they usually will get our feedback so that the advertisement is appropriate advertisement. In the meantime, yes, definitely we'll work with um, um, OOC and appropriate departments that would um, be of assistance to get us moving. Thank you. Sure, hey, it's Weiss, you're a question. Okay, now Mr. Woody for your response. Mr. Vice Chair Smith. Well, thank you, Chairman and uh, Budget Finance Committee members and those that are listening on board. This is an important uh, position for the Navajo Nation. Could it be the fact that the calibration of this position is so high that nobody's making any attempt to put your application in? Could we lower that so that we could have a bigger pool and <clears throat> select a controller? I go back to the days of uh, Mr. Bobby White. I'm not sure if he had that qualification standard, having that uh, degree in order to be a controller, but he was one of the exceptional controllers of the Navajo Nation during the time that he was within the Navajo Nation, providing control uh, work with the uh, Navajo Nation as a controller. Um, Ms. Fowler is not there, so we have uh, Ms. Woody. Would that be explored so that, you know, give a time period. If there's no applicants within 30 days again, then let's review that and maybe put the qualifications down to where we can get a controller installed. The acting controller right now is basically just holding the fort down until we Navajo Nation uh, select the controller. Hey, what the? So that's my question. And, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Vice Chair Smith. Uh, Ms. Woody? Oh, thank you for that. Um, when I'm looking at the minimum qualifications for the controller, um, it requires a bachelor's degree in accounting or finance and eight years of progressively responsible experience in government finance and accounting administration. Um, the preferred qualifications is a master's degree in business administration, accounting or finance um, with a CPA. And I think with the minimum requirements right now is, um, is very minimum. Is that like the very, very minimum? If you're looking at an individual whom you want to have come in with the necessary competence that is required to run um, the financial department of this organization, you're, you're going to need that, those particular um, competent people. Um, so the position is very, very, um, uh, yes, it is definitely required in terms of an organization, but I wouldn't, you know, as my recommendation and my years of experience looking at what this minimum requirement is, is, is pretty comparable for any organization. 
So if you're going to minimize it, you're just diluting the, the requirements of the position and, and the, um, the need for the organization as well. And those are my recommendations, but um, at the same time, um, it would be the, recommend, the recommendation of the council to express those and we can revisit it if necessary. Thank you. I've got a follow-up question, Vice Chair Smith. Vice Chair, follow-up. Oh, thank you. I know that we passed a resolution on the 23rd Council requiring that this position must have a CPA, period. Now I hear that what um, Ms. Woody read, I'm not saying we need to go lower than what is recommended on behalf of the uh, minimal aid of the Shnita. What I'm, rec what I'm saying is we passed a res legislation, now it's a resolution, specifying that whoever applies for that position must have a CPA. It is Libanina, so Ajit not so Siada Hijata, Shina Neshkan Strada, no, She Ako Abin Shasta, no, the Menemniki, Ada Duk, Sahot Al, legislation, Ada Duk, then yeah, Aljago, a husband, Chokadigi, a Hadashnigi, CPA, without Bangi, J, Ibnina, CPA, I see. Uh, it is it is requirement, Shinanda. Thank you. Thank you, Shina. Kena, let's just look for your follow. Um, back to Ms. Woody. Um, the you know attaining a CPA is by far one of the most difficult. Um, certifications one can receive. And um, I think that the question would then be if you're looking at lowering or even eliminating the CPA, that would be definitely a discussion we can explore further. Um, but at the same time, you know, right now we're not even getting, we don't even have any applicants. And so what we're find out, finding out when we're doing open and tell feel, um, applicants kind of see that as, oh, they're, they're not filling the position or nobody's applied. So we're putting closing dates on them. So we extend those closing dates at least every, every so often so that it tells the applicant that, you know, look, we need a person with the level of caliber that is required for a position in those um, so to apply. So we are working on, um, you know, implementing a, a closing date, but if there isn't anybody applying, we'll definitely have to look at that and work with the department and say, look, we're not capturing any person here. So we need to have another plan in terms of how to capture um, applicants who are interested in ensuring that they can apply for those positions. But as far as the question from Vice Chair Smith, um, thank you for that. And I think it would be good to explore that. Um, I would have to look at the legislation as well, if that is something that's been a part or um, an, a, a legislation that passed. So I will, I will definitely do my research on that. Thank you. Sir Henry, follow up question, Vice Chair. Thank you. Uh, back to you. Follow, follow up, Vice Chair Smith. Thank you, Chair Henio. The legislation has um, been passed uh, 2015, and it's uh, by the Budget and Finance Committee, uh, BFAP 12 15, which states that the uh, Budget and Finance Committee amending Title 12 NNC subsection 202 to require the controller to be a certified public accountant. Hey, Nadishna, either Zibani na, Kumpe Hazani Elia, Sodeh Randa, 
like um, as Woody said, it is hard to get the certification as a CPA. A call. Um, it's up to budget and finance committee members to make that determination because we're the final authority. If we really need to get a controller in there as soon as possible, maybe that would be one avenue. I'm just looking at the avenues. Hey, now, Dita Schnitt, D with that, Eggy. How about Ado? I don't know if it's being advertised as in the position saying you must uh, have a CPA. And I hear otherwise with uh, Ms. Woody saying it's the minimum qualification. Well, if they see the minimum qualification, then why aren't there uh, a slew of applicants putting their application? Or did they know that this is a requirement for CPA? So they're saying, well, I already know it's a CPA, so there's no sense in me trying to apply because I only meet the minimal standard and I don't have a CPA. So what's the use of me even attend, attempting to do that? The other thing might be is that uh, and they always say you're overqualified or you're underqualified. And maybe that's the attitude too. Uh, Chair Henio, thank you. Chair Henio, can I respond? Thank you, uh, Vice Chair Smith, uh, for your follow-up question. Uh, so with that, I'll uh, we'll defer back to uh, Mr. Thomas Ida Woody. I, I just wanted to clarify what um, Vice Chair Smith had said. Um, in terms of the CPA, it is a requirement as part of this position. Um, the special requirements indicate certification as a certified public accountant and a favorable background um, check is one of the requirements as well. So I just wanted to follow, follow up with that. And then also I did receive the um, resolution of the Budget and Finance Committee of the Navajo Nation, 23rd Navajo Nation Council. And I'll review this a little bit further. Um, and then I can offer some recommendations if, if that is um, what the committee chooses. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Ms. Woody, for your response. Uh, with that, so back to the committee. Any further questions, comments? Delegate Yellowhair. Chairman. Delegate Jimmy Yellowhair. Are they up to floor? Okay, thank you very much, uh, Ms. Woody, for your resp responding. This is a uh, very important position. It's the nation's, it's what we really need as controllers to be um, hired immediately. My my uh, position is uh, there was a very a great a great controller a mastermind which is Mr. Bobby White. I'm, I'm very proud of what he what he had done for the Navajo Nations with this a permanent trust fund. That was his idea. His hard to console to prove it, but there's a uh, sign into law. I'm proud of the Mr. Bobby White's a mastermind a controller. And he's not a CPA, but he's a master. I think he's great, a great controller. It just makes a lot of common sense. It will be the best. With no influence, we need to look for it. Has this been advertised out, outside newspaper? Miss Witty, Ashley, or the dog advertised outside? I thought he can have his authority. He doesn't out on hold neither. He could carry every thousand on the Nike. So, 11 years, I saw Tahune. What a is not a kid, but all in the holdings and they don't hold later. Not on the not on the other. No, shall we not? A just while you work for human resource, and darkness maybe you have limited response at the other. So, John, he holds that a credit of the person, um, sweetie. Uh, so now this kid, uh, the chairman, yeah. Hey, thank you, uh, Shinanda. Uh, Delegate Jimmy Yellow here. Back to uh, Miss Woody. Response again. 
Sure. Um, thank you so much for that question. Um, Honorable Yellow Hair, it's not that DPM is, um, we have a lot of positions that we're responsible for advertising. Yes, we know that the controller position is, is one of those. And um, in relation to any type of advertisement that we send out externally requires us to have um, monies available to do that. Um, DPM does not have a budget specifically for um, those departments that would initially be responsible for external advertisements. Um, so we rely on those departments to provide us um, the necessary information. So if we're going to do, say, for instance, advertising in a newspaper, we can do that, provided that we work with those departments that would um, allow us and utilize their funding source. Um, BPM, again, does not have the budget for that. And I think maybe that's something to think about if we're looking at the overall organization and advertising those, we're definitely, um, we definitely can have those discussions with budget and finance and, and including that in our budget as well. So we can assist as much as we can to those positions that require, um, you know, the, the in-depth um, advertisements that would cost the organ um, our department. Um, so it's not like we're not trying to do that. We do have a lot of positions. We are uh, working with departments, like I said earlier. We are, um, if those, if certain positions need to be advertised, we're definitely um, um, offering guidance and assistance as well. Um, but as far as advertisement, <clears throat> one of the things I can say, uh, which will maybe doesn't mean anything, but to me it does, um, we will have hopefully the system that is gonna help us um, <clears throat> work through those issues that we have with recruitment, a human resources management system. The system basically will allow us to advertise um, to different external uh, sources, like say for Indeed, or we could um, not just that, but all types of external advertisements that would be for free and they would assist us. At this point, um, we did an advertisement for just, uh, it was for the human resources management system requisition or the, um, the, the advertisement for that and meeting the obligations of, of that. And it cost us around um, about $5,000 just to do two, two weeks of that in the, um, the, the, the Gallup Independence. So it's not cheap. So we just have to make sure that there is funds available for those. So, you know, it's not like we're not trying to do our due diligence. We're basically um, hoping that the departments would have the necessary funds to help us and assist us in that, in that manner. So I hope that answers your question. Thank you. Follow-up follow -up questions. This is Delegate Yellow. Chairman. Okay, and I'm just, uh, waiting for your response to the questions. Uh, with that, we do have a follow-up question from Shnada Delgit to me here. You have four. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, Ms. Witty. I appreciate it. But uh, your response looks kind of like excuse that that's what we do in Navajo Nation. Could you get him uh, Navajo Nation? Could all Navajo time advertise us on the be a like 24 positions, like 25 positions are vacancy in Navajo Nation. So one with the one of the branch has that position and they advertise for 25 positions advertised. How could that be? I think in the first place, uh, you should have communicate with the uh, office of the controllers. I can do a, a good job to advertise. This is this kind of generic things what you guys have been doing. I hate to say this. And that's my concern, um, sweetie. Should the chairman. Thank you for the floor. Uh, 
Uh, thank you again, uh, Chairman Hinu, Budget Finance Committee members, and those that are here with us this afternoon on this important topic out of Ms. Woody. I'd like to make a directive uh, after this um, vote on the uh, report again, uh, Chairman Hinu. Uh, I'd like to make a directive to uh, personnel office on behalf of the uh, OOC position, if I'm in order. Uh, yes, Vice Chair, after we accept the, um, the report, you uh, yield the floor to you. This, uh, you. Any, further, any further questions, comments? Um, Vice, uh, this is Thomas Hita, can on, I? Please hold on, please hold on, till I call upon you. Uh, Committee members from the Dow Budget and Finance Committee, any further questions, comments? Uh, that, I'll defer back to our presenter, Ms. Sanwiti. Okay, um, I'm reading part of the, the, res or the legislation that was enacted. And the oversight is um, the Law and Order Budget and Finance committee if I understand that. So when you have the oversight, you know, specifically talking about the responsibilities from DPM, we, we certainly take those um, seriously. So now that from what I understand is Vice Chair Smith is going to put um, a directive in order. And I think that the, the committee itself putting that directive to us and then establishing where the funds would be appropriated so that we can do the advertisement is fair. Um, that would be my response. And it's not an excuse. Um, we definitely take what w is given to us and we'll work through it. Um, like I said, we do have a lot of important positions within the organization. And if we're given the opportunity to work through this with the committee, then we then we absolutely honor that. Thank you. Thank you for your response. And uh, Budget Finance Committee, we do have, still have several reports ahead of us. Uh, so with that, any further questions, comments? Uh, Vice Chair Smith, have you contacted the Legislative Council to have them draft your directive for you. Oh, thank you, Chair Henio. Uh, yes, I did uh, email a brief request on a directive. Um, hopefully, I can add a little more language to that. So I'll be trying to get that done as soon as possible. Um, Chair Henio, did the presenter say that their oversight is Law and Order Committee? Or what was that? I, I, uh, I, I thought, would you clarify that please? Thank you, uh, Chair. Okay, I believe she's, uh, she was uh, reading the legislation from 2015, I believe that's where she's getting that information from Vice Chair Smith. But uh, I'll defer back to Ms. Woody. Uh, where did you uh, get the information? Is that from the legislation you're reading? Yes, sir. Chair, this is Kristen Lowell. May I please clarify? Okay, thank you, uh, Ms. Woody, for that uh, clarification. Uh, back to Vice Chair Smith. Uh, hopefully that clears everything up for you. That's, that's, I guess that's the way the legislation was written. Uh, Ms. Lowe? Chair, um, the legislation that um, Ms. Woody is referring to is actually an exhibit to the 2015 legislation. And that legislation is CAU 34-11. And um, that's a council resolution. So if you look at the top, it says relating to law and order, budget and finance um, and Nabiketia committee. So uh, that was council resolution. Whereas the one from 2015 is just a budget and finance committee resolution. And I'm not seeing a reference to law and order in that particular resolution as, um, as oversight. Chair. Okay, thank you for that clarification, uh, 
Ms. Lowe. Uh, the, with that, the Budget and Finance Committee, any further questions, comments? Uh, Tenoy, I'll call for the question to accept the report. Uh, uh, we need to move forward, Shanda, uh, if we make your questions brief. I'll get your hair. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Anyway, last one dollar. Is this only one time that was advertised yeah, to Sweden at one time? And then uh, uh, yeah, my, my first uh, comment was a, uh, is this has been advertised outside newspaper too, besides Navajo Time or Independent here in Gillum. Has this been advertised? Has it been tried? I was born as Tony ordered the advertised at Liado, did it under a side of the advertised at Liado between June 23rd and July 29th. According to not this kid on this to determine. Yeah. Okay, hello, Delegate Bill here. Miss Thomasita Woody. Um, no, it has not been advertised to external sources. As I said and stated that those, if we do the external sources, we require that there's a budget um, also intact, but in terms of anything that we've done externally to advertise, no, we have not, but we can certainly start working with um, this committee and OOC or any um, department that would assist us and we would definitely um, advertise or assist in advertising. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Woody, for that response. Uh, back to the committee, any questions, comments? With that, let's move forward to roll call vote to accept the report. Ramona, if you would lead us in roll call vote. Chair Chairman, here you roll call vote on accepting the report. Honorable Raymond Smith Jr., how do you vote? Green. Thank you. Honorable Raymond Smith Jr., votes green. Honorable Jimmy Yellowhair, how do you vote? I vote green. Thank you. Honorable Jimmy Yellowhair, votes green. Honorable Amber Kenneth Bacardi, how do you vote? Honorable Amber Kenneth Bacardi, how do you vote? Honorable Nathaniel Brown, how do you vote? Delegate Brown votes in favor. Thank you. Honorable Nathaniel Brown votes in favor. Honorable Elmer P. Begay, how do you vote? I vote green. Thank you. Honorable Elmer P. Begay votes green. Honorable Amber Kenneth Bach how do you vote? <laughs> Chairman, we have four members voting in the affirmative. They're opposing. Chairman not voting and one member not voting. Chairman. Thank you for the roll call vote. Four in favor. Is there opposed? Uh, chair not voting. Uh, the Kayla Masudi for uh, being on the call with us. Okay, with this, uh, we do have one more um, report on our agenda. Then before we go back to uh, back up again, uh, item point of order. H. Uh, Vice Chair Smith, what's your point of order? I had a directive, oh, uh, Chairman. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. I was just um, looking at the rain outside. Yes, Vice Chair Smith, uh, you have the floor, but before I recognize you, um, Ms. Tapai, are you complete with the uh, directive? Yes, Mr. Chair, I sent that to Honorable Smith. <laughs> that was close. Okay. Okay, thank you. I don't know if you heard that lightning strike, but it's pretty cold here. Um, I need to get off the get off the uh, the air here. The we got the other to get the hot new day. So about that, uh, Vice Chair Smith, did you have the directive back to you? Okay, Chair. Uh, my point of order was uh, backed up by lightning. 
Chair Henry, uh, Chair Henry, uh, my directive has been uh, completed. It was sent to me at 3.56 p.m. I don't know if that can be sent out to uh, Peggy, that it can be read into the record, uh, the directive. Vice Chair Smith. And um, with that, Ms. Uh, Mr. Pahi, uh, can you meet your phone, please? Thank you. Uh, Peggy, uh, if you have the directive, would you please read that into the direct the record? No, I don't have the directive, Chair. Okay. Uh, Vice Chair Smith, uh, she doesn't have the directive. Maybe uh, uh, Mr. Pahi, would you uh, give uh, Peggy a call or an email? Doing that right now, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you, Mr. Pai. Um, Peggy, when you ever get when you receive that email, uh, you may proceed to the record. Okay, it says the Department of Personnel Management shall review the requirement in BFAP 1215 for the controller's position to be a licensed CPA and to make recommendations to the Budget and Finance Committee as to what amendment is needed to this requirement to facilitate the hiring of a permanent controller. Said recommendations shall be provided to the Budget and Finance Committee within 45 days of this directive being issued. No, thank you. Uh, is that your motion, Vice Chair Smith? Yes, it is, uh, Chairman Hane. Thank you. I'd like to share a motion by Vice Chair Smith to issue a directive. Uh, is there a second? Delegate Yellowhair, second. Okay, second by Delegate Jimmy Yellowhair. So with that, we do have a motion and a second. The floor is open for questions, comments. Any questions, comments on the directive? Uh, then I'll give you a game. Delegate, sure. delegate, delegate, you have the floor. Um, I haven't get there at all. The directive yet now, but um, um, what was the, the most uh, uh, what's the, uh, the intent? But what's the, um, the very the significant intent regarding this um, um, directive? The uh, uh, vice chairman. Oh, the the yeah, I see. But you age directive. the department of personnel which told us the BFAP dash twelve fifteen grad base plus on a letter state of controls position. Even in a grad license CPA what that be so called. It is even in a in a niche. Uh, that application applicants. Uh, that don't they need to be in ko <laughs> Uh, CPA that the Nenegi license digi to look at the bone it's not a so hey you have minimum qualifications hey uh, they have that uh, minimum qualifications I should die if it's out in each case either they care thank you let's share Smith for your clarification uh, with that uh, any further questions comments on the directive I have a follow-up I'm going to finish the game um, I'm 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 uh, um, ask this question to our legislative council. Um, 
there's already a um, resolution or the res- there's already a, a legislation that was made and passed by the um, Budget and Finance Committee for the, um, the criteria and then also the, um, the qualification for um, hiring a um, controller um, to have a license. Call license legation is uh, I think I believe that it's 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 something that uh, yeah that you have to have so we kind of understanding that uh, um, the reason why the um, the license is like right now today um, the ARPA funding that we're, we're that, that we're um, talking about it and we're trying to utilize it and trying to expand that. The authority uh, to lie within the, um, the 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 controller and that controller. Um, um, pretty sure that they, if he ha- if he or she has a license. And I'm pretty sure that they, they have to go by the uh, the guidelines of federal treasury. So, uh, and then also to interpret how these fundings should be uh, um, executed. So right now, on the uh, previous um, um, con- former controller, um, Perlene Kurt, she has a lot of authority where because she's even her license. Nobody had any license within the Navajo Nation and she has that authority to say this is not the way to uh, spend money and with that CARES funding and a lot of uh, um, the leadership were disappointed about it uh, because uh, there was a directive uh, I mean, authority uh, which um, former um, controller used that because uh, she has a license and she 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 was using that, so I believe that you know if we um, impose this uh, about putting another um, directive on it to lower the the qualification, uh, uh, my my question would be: uh, Is this directive going to be um, supersede or is it? Uh, is it gonna? Um, this is just one the budget finance committee directive, but uh, the legislation you know, uh, that was made is by um, the resolution from uh, budget finance committee. Is it was well, it supersede or is it more needs more? Um, like, is it gonna be the, how it's gonna happen? Is it gonna really the, change that um, immediately or? Is, is it, is it, how can 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 uh, legislative council maybe uh, say some comment about it? And we'll go back my 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 question, uh, Chair Henry. Okay, Senator Yogi Elmer Pige, Mr. Pahi. Yes, Mr. Chair. There's a question yes, from Mr. Delegate Elmer PBG. Um, I'm sorry, I, I would need uh, Honorable Delegate Begay to repeat his question quickly, please. Chair Hanio. Chair Hanio. Uh, wait, repeat your question. No. Okay, um, um, Mr. Tup, uh, Ms., uh, Tupahi, um, my question was, um, right now that we understand that, uh, there was a legislation and resolution that was passed by the, um, budget and finance committee to, um, the criteria and uh, a qualification for um, hiring of a, a controller, but now today we're doing a uh, only directive. So, well, that supersede that uh, the because the 
I know there was a, just a, a written um, a legislation that was made. Right now, we're just going to make a, the directive. How effective is it going to be? Has uh, understanding that um, right now we're working with a, a billion dollars, and this is a, a lot of money. And then we had to go by um, a lot of guidelines, federal guidelines, what we had to, the way we're going to be spending this money. So I believe that um, keeping the um, the license um, of uh, hiring of a, 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 um, a controller is essential today, and because of them um, and understanding that the, the controller by by law that she's the president or the chairperson for the um, investment committee. So uh, all this, uh, is it, is it um, thinking about it is, it, is it, is it appropriate or is it more effective if we do a directive or how, what's going to happen? Because we're just not lowering it because just to hire the uh, uh, controller as soon as possible. So the, um, that will be my question. Uh, can you do do a comment to that? So I will I will fully understand what we're doing today. Thank you. Hey, Mr. Pai, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and and I apologize. I I needed a, a repeat of that question. I understand what Delegate Begay is asking now. So the the directive only says that DPM will review the resolution by the Budget and Finance Committee. The resolution being BFAP 12-15, requiring the controller to be a licensed CPA. So the, the DPM will review that and make recommendations within 45 days to Budget and Finance. Um, it is up to Budget and Finance Committee after that 45 days period whether they want to amend that resolution or do a new resolution or rescind that resolution. Um, it is up to Budget and Finance Committee what to do. It is simply, uh, the, the directive is simply to have the Department of Personnel Management review and to come up with some recommendations as to what would be needed to facilitate the hiring of a controller. Um, again, um, it's just recommendations and it's going to be budget and finance uh, committees uh, action that will that will uh, change the previous resolution or or leave it the same. Uh, back to you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you, Office of Legislative Council, for uh, bringing that forth. I don't know if we still have uh, Chair Henu on. He said that he was experiencing some uh, weather out in his area. <laughs> oh, there it is. I'm just, I'm the, uh... Okay. Uh, I'll let you have the whole meeting. Koshina, uh, Chair Henu, you have the camera. Thank you, Chair Smith. I keep getting muted here. Uh, I was trying to talk at the same time I know I'll need it. <clears throat> but if there's if there any further questions, comments on the directive. Uh no, yeah. I'll move towards our roll call vote to accept the directive. Uh, Ramona. Uh, yes, Chairman Henyo, roll call vote on the directive, honorable. Raymond Smith Jr., how do you vote? Totless, totless. Okay, thank you. Honorable Raymond Smith Jr., vote screen. Honorable Jimmy Yellowhair, how do you vote? Okay, Yellowhair, vote screen. Okay, thank you. Honorable Jimmy Yellowhair, vote screen. Honorable Amber Kenneth Brock Crotty, how do you vote? Honorable Amber Kenneth Brock Crotty, how do you vote? Honorable 
Nathaniel Brown, how do you vote? Dear, what information I vote was there? green. Or is thank you, Honorable Nathaniel Brown votes green. Honorable Elmer P. Begay, how do you vote? I vote green. Thank you, Honorable Elmer P. Begay votes green. Honorable Amber Kenneth Barcardi, how do you vote? Chairman, we have four members voting in the affirmative or opposing. Chairman not voting and one member not voting. Chairman. Okay, thank you for that roll call vote. Director Fastens of four in favor, zero opposed, chair not voting. Okay, we'll go back to the next report, which is item G, and that's with the Navajo Nation Emergency Management. We have Mr. Harlan Cleveland on the line with us today. On well, Navajo Nation uh, Department of Emergency Management. Uh, do we have uh, Mr. Robert Willie, controller's office on the line? Good afternoon, Mr. Chair. This is Robert Willie from the controller's office. Okay, uh, I'll defer to you first to give a budget balance uh, information on the, the Navajo Nation donation fund account. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I did send out uh, a memo. Um, it's dated today. Um, and it does give a, a brief summary of the donations account. Um, it gives a brief history. Um, hopefully the committee has got that. I'll give you a few minutes to look for it. So I believe uh, um, Peggy uh, Nakai did send that out. So I'll, I'll, I'll continue. Um, the, I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, go ahead, Mr. Willie. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, so the, the memo was dated June 12th. It gives a brief history of um, the donations that were set up. Um, there's the GoFundMe, which was set up by the Department of Justice. There's the Heartland, which um, is going to the COVID uh, Navajo Nation website, uh, asking for donations. And of course, there's um, um, checks and um, wires that are being um, um, accepted also here at the controller's office. So those are the three funding sources um, that um, are available for the donations. The total amount that had been um, collected and accepted by the president and the speaker uh, in the cases of the, where it was over $1,000 was $8,893,839. And um, these were assigned back in 2001 in January. In um, the council resolution CJY 5250 was passed to, to house these um, particular donations. Um, the Department of Emergency Management was um, the responsible party to develop the fund manager plan, um, which was um, to get to the uh, balances of the account, I had attached exhibit A. Um, currently, there is um, there was a revised budget, as I said, um, $8.8 .8 million. The actual amount that has been expended um, up to the end of June 2020 is $2,536,465.16. There is $258,849.58 of encumbrances. And currently there's an available budget balance as of June 30th, 2020 of 6 million ninety-eight thousand. $524.26. As far as actual expenditures, um, I was hoping that emergency management would be able to um, join the call and, and go over those, but um, you have a summary detail of um, what this uh, program does currently have. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd be happy to entertain any questions. Okay, thank you, Mr. Willie for the um, information. When you said June 2020, are you mean, do you mean June 2022? I'm sorry, I, I, if, I, if I did say 20, it is actually uh, June 30th, 2022. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, for um, catching that. Uh, Christina, thank you. Uh, so with that, um, uh, 
from the controller's office. That's the balances that we currently have. Uh, the move into uh, Department of Emergency Management. Is there a representative from Department of Emergency Management on the line? Navajo Nation Department of Emergency Management. Okay, so with Committee Shanda, we only have uh, Office of the Controller on the line to give this report. Uh, with that, is there a motion to accept the report from the Mr. Robert Willie of the Controller's Office? Delegate Yellow here. Motion. Shanda, Delegate Jimmy Yellow here. Uh, there a second. Vice Chair Smith. Second by Vice Chair Smith. Okay, with that, uh, we do have Mr. Willie. He's the only presenter on the line. Uh, nobody from the Department of Emergency Management. Floor is open for questions. Chair Henders, Vice Chair Smith. Uh, Vice Chair Smith, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair and you and Budget Finance Committee members of the Navajo Nation Council, and also uh, Office of Controllers, uh, Mr. Uh, <coughs> Robert Willie, excuse me. <coughs> Thank you for uh, presenting this and giving us a document that we can uh, refer to on the donations uh, that was uh, provided. Uh, currently, we have a balance of uh, Six million ninety-eight thousand five hundred thirty-four dollars and twenty-six pennies as of June thirtieth, twenty twenty-two. Chair Henio, I, I was hoping that emergency management would be on board because uh, this donation is related to COVID nineteen and its monetary donations to the Navajo Nations for COVID nineteen, which. COVID-19 has really caused an impact on our family members, Navajo folks that are out there in Bay Sedo, Puta Secunda, Lehuna'ad. They're told to stay home, wear their mask, wash their hands, get their vaccination, all this. And the donation that is here by GoFundMe and emergency management is in charge of this, however, they're not here to answer any questions. As we well know, I don't know if I don't know if there's folks out there that are staying home. They don't want to go anywhere because unless they really have to, and they are abiding by that, maybe that's why the numbers have decreased. Good for them. Good that they're Staying home. Akunda. Nanda. Dina Yolanda. Say the shingles that a you don't kiss the kid. That's one. A yo. Cut not not him. And now they're experiencing water that's running into their homes. Ako. My question was to. Uh, Emergency management. It's not going to cost millions of dollars for one to be requesting to get their roof shored up or repaired or uh, make it uh, waterproof because of the inclement weather. How can we help and assist them? For instance, later, why runs that? We have a uh, elderly, 97-year-old grandma, Bania. Marshy was original sita. I don't debate it. The doctors me. The eyes they took the knowledge on. They did about ado. They shall own it though. Connacht, you know, she got a con the hune. Shall own it. Put on sunda. Tway a hune at all. With a trade on sunda. She asked Cardinal. He that eggy jay. They can't as the national, but then 
あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あ
Okei, okay. se on lehdistölle. Jaheni, I think his call dropped. I don't see him. Uh, Delegate Jimmy Yola here. Are you still there? Delegate Jimmy Yola here. Delegate Jimmy Yola here. Let's just so wait to, for him to get back on the call. Um, with that, uh, committee members, any further questions, comments? Chair uh, uh Peggy? I just sent out the uh, BFD 43-20. It was in 20... 20 that this uh, legislation was approved and it shows you the the uh, uses um, it says expended expended only for COVID-19 response related efforts of the Navajo Nation and they are consistent with general purposes for which the funds were donated to be promptly expended um, let's see And it doesn't really, but it's several pages long. So I send it out to the committee members so that they can see it. Did you get the uh, email? It's BFD4320. I believe we all received it. Uh, with that, um, any further questions, comments, committee members? Uh, Del Gediel is back on the line. Oh, Gushin, there you are. Uh, go ahead. Okay, Chair, yeah, thank you very much. Appreciate it, Chairman. Okay, uh, uh, budget, Mr. Robert Willis, okay, forward E. Lagi. The expenditures, Guinness, on Ropez on the Sogi. Oh, yeah, quite travel expenses. Company, they learned that I got strong Isla. Aro kuna e ya supplies. Sani dilde revival ya izro bahni. Ano there's no money for supplies. Repair and maintenance. Sigi e fifteen fifty thousand five eighty six. Repair and maintenance gonna forty nine thousand six eighty six dollars. Ila hundred peso. Aro zi one thousand five hundred. Kuna e do yu peso sinne. Contractual services kuna. A revised Ilya, a two million three hundred thirty five thousand five sixty four. Shows two million and nine hundred and fourteen dollars because the Konana open comment say encumbered hundred sixteen thousand eight sixty eight. Book I see two hundred seventeen thousand seven eighty two. And the last out of assistance, the key based on the door use in the six million two fifty nine and six eighty nine. Shows any six. 486 and 465. Out of open comments, you can encumbered 141,981. Capesos in the Lee, 5,631,242. Out of capitalized outlay, you get 250,000, 203,000 revised. Eight out of two, you can lie, you can lie, you do open that the kitty or by ocean. He quite resolution to declare key because he pays to us. Indeed, I'll try Jiggy. A cocoa out of a kinet so five percent, six and nine percent peso from that. So peso guy three could all six million and ninety eight thousand five twenty four. He needed a head out of choice in any two thousand in each three not this kid. Honorable Raymond Smith. Quergi or Yahoo Lender. A condemned lay of eight letters in Niniki, 
my question goes to the uh, legislative council under the uh, efd-43-20 uh, within the uh, 1002 purpose deed the uh, uh, 1004 fund management it talks about the uh, funding all allocate allocation process it has one, two, and three listed in there. And uh, the department shall allocate funds consistent with the general purposes for which the funds were donated. Okay, those funds were donated for the purposes of the combat COVID-19. And it is because the whole one, so I call it as a donate, not need it, number one. Number two, again, no, the department may determine allocation of funds based on the needs identified by any Navajo Nation government entity. Emergency management. Uh, <laughs> A segi priority, a opportunity, a covert action, I did kid the chair here. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Mr. Pahi, Legislative Council. The only one thing to be um, used for. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, all of the funds in the in all of the money in the fund uh, is to be for COVID-19 related relief. Um, there are some uh, sources, uh, provider of funds who specifically designate COVID related purposes for those funds, such as to buy masks, such as to buy other personal protective equipment, um, things of that nature. Um, but the um, funds are for COVID relief. And if you take a look at 1001 establishment, uh, you'll see that the apartment, Department of Emergency Management is the one that administers all the funds and um, can prioritize uh, COVID relief efforts. And using and use prioritized use of the funds in accordance with their uh, prioritized prioritized efforts. I hope that answers the question. If not, um, I can clarify. They quit. The music quit. Yeah. <laughs> 
Mr. Chair? Hey, um, could, could, can you hear me? Oh, oh what did you say? Okay, I electric is going in and out here at my house. Um, uh, Mr. Pahi, does that complete your um your response? Um, I believe so, Mr. Chair. I think I was muted, so I don't know how much of that you got. Okay, well, I I lost connection here. Electricity went out for a brief period. So um, uh, my internet's out, so hopefully I can still get, maintain this call here. Um, any further questions, comments? Uh, committee members, any further questions or comments regarding uh, the report by uh, Mr. Robert Willie? Sure, Henry. Uh, yes. Vice Chair, go ahead. Do you have floor? So, um, CIC should be emergency management that is a coach. I put it that it ain't a hard enough. So, not on his dad, Neda. A code on ha os nanaro. O yalba des nil. A code did that egi a nighty kid con ladies. Mustang a hard shan also. A penina deep. I just get past a whole lot of door, yeah. A cold did it, oh, yal, a agent on us, and the key, or the dunna dog, and so he she banat or afigi, he to bend on the stone with that, to that eggy, a agent cut or was eggy, eight a dunna hazard, eight a zoot out at the knee, so could emergency management, and say that she had see, they'd have had a shinch and a kiddo, be yali with a job, a dog, yeah, a cold and quit the quiet, yalco. Bend on Nishigi, so lampy sota. What are the little port mixing and ah? I did not die stay. Chitty, ah? What are we at this? The door that wants this kid. Other than they legislative council by the shadow, dip it in dot iso, south and dog, and so the yarn to dot plato, I just see a ha, uh, bado on the so, a could that egg in him must on his cheek. Pashi. But with that, um, any further questions, comments? I don't know, yeah. I'll call for the question to accept the report. Ramona, if you at least roll call vote. Yes, Chairman Hanyo, roll call vote on accepting the report. Honorable Raymond Smith Jr., how do you vote? I vote red. Thank you. Honorable Raymond Smith Jr. votes red. Honorable Jimmy L. here, how do you vote? I vote red too. Thank you. Honorable Jimmy Yell here votes red. Honorable Amber Kenneth Bakkardi, how do you vote? Honorable Amber Kenneth Bakkardi. Honorable Nathaniel Brown, how do you vote? Honorable Nathaniel Brown, how do you vote? Honorable Elmer P. Begay, how do you vote? I vote green. Thank you. Honorable Elmer P. Begay votes green. Honorable Amber Kent Bacardi, how do you vote? Honorable Nathaniel Brown, how do you vote? Chairman, we have one member voting in the affirmative. Two. Delegate Brown votes in favor. Thank you. Honorable Nathaniel Brown votes in favor. Honorable Amber Kenneth Bacardi, how do you vote? Chairman, we have two members voting in the affirmative, two members opposing, and one member not voting, and it's a tie. 
on the vote. Chairman Hino. Thank you, Chief Gela. Thank you for the roll call vote. Uh, two in favor, two opposed. Uh, with that, uh, uh, the chair will be voting. Uh, since this is a report and it was given to us by Mr. Robert Willie. And with that, I'll vote green. Okay, thank you, Honorable uh, Chairman. So the vote is three in the affirmative and two opposing and one member not voting. Chairman? Thank you. That is uh, completes our reports, but uh, I did uh, state that I would go back to Tom Platero as he was having technical issues. Mr. Tom Platero, are you still um, on the call? Yes. Motion? Judge, don't give a game. Okay, hold on. Um, I did hear um, a motion. Uh, uh, Vice Chair Smith, was that you? Yes, uh, Chair. Motion adjourn. Motion to adjourn by Vice Chair Smith. Uh, is there a second? Order, order. Chair. Uh, what's your point order? Point order, job. I requested to have the Kanani Lake Enterprise to go back on the agenda, remember? Yes, I did, but as I was going back up the line, Vice Chair Smith's motion to adjourn, and that takes precedence. So, uh, motion to adjourn by Vice Chair Can we Smith. go ahead and do that? No, uh, we have a motion to adjourn on the floor. Uh, motion to adjourn by Vice Chair Smith. Is there a motion? Is there a second? There's a motion to adjourn by Vice Chair Smith. Is there a second? Uh, second going once. Motion to adjourn by Vice Chair Smith. Is there a second going twice? And motion to adjourn by Vice Chair Smith. Is there a second going three times? At then, there's no um, second um, to motion to adjourn. So uh, going back up, uh, Mr. Tom Platero, are you back on the call with us? Yes, Mr. Chair, I'm on the call. Uh, Kashina, I did say I was going to come back to you uh, for the report uh, because you we were having technical issues. So with that, are you up the floor to give the report? Yes, Mr. Chair, uh, since last Tuesday, there are a few, a few things that the broadband office has been working on. One of the things is we've been coordinating, or the FRF office has been coordinating with the broadband office. We've submitted the plan of operation uh, to begin the 164 review process. It's over at Navajo um, Nation Department of Justice. Thereafter, it'll go to the office of the president, and then we'll be seeking uh, a sponsor uh, for the uh, a draft legislation. We did put in a request uh, to our consultants to update the Navajo Nation ARPA funding that's not directly part of the two billion. Uh, once we receive that, we will make the committee aware of it and forward it to them. Uh, the FRF office has been working to get uh, uh, information, uh, more information on the website. Uh, we are having our staff review it. Uh, we are going to be placing our first advertisement to publicize the uh, in an FRF website that should be in Thursday's Navajo Times so that we can try to get more traffic. Uh, that is uh, where we get the majority of our work. We do also have another staff member on our crew, uh, Mr. Raymond Holt, that will be working on how we can communicate with uh, individuals that speak uh, Navajo as their primary language. So we'll be doing that. We did reach out to the uh, Department of Economic Development. Uh, they did provide a response, uh, but in the interest of time, uh, we will go on ahead and, and uh, request to uh, present that in writing at a, at a later time. Uh, uh, the director, um, Mr. J.T. Willie, provided feedback, but it's not in writing, and I and I believe the committee will prefer that in writing. So we'll try to get that ready by the next report. Uh, we did um, get the uh, uh, the request that came from uh, Delegate Smith. We are uh, preparing letters that will go out to each of the uh, people that will be uh, programs. I'll be preparing the budgets for the uh, 1 billion allocation. Those will all be ready. So once uh, the legislation is signed into law, 
we'll release those and our goal is to try to get those all set up within a week and a half, two weeks at the latest so that we are coordinating all of those activities. Uh, uh, in a nutshell, Mr. Chair, that's the report from last Tuesday to today, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Platero. Uh, is there a motion to accept the report? Delegate Begay. Motion by Delegate Elmer P. Begay accept the report. Is there a second? Is there a second to accept the report? There's a motion on the floor to accept the report. Is there a second? Going once. There's a motion on the yep. floor to accept the report. Is yep. there yep. a second? Yeah, by yep. Delegate yep. Jimmy Yellow. Second. Okay, second by Delegate Jimmy Yellow here. So we do have a motion and a second to accept the report. The floor is open for questions for Mr. Tom Potero. Are there any questions for Mr. Tom Platero? And if there are none, um, move to call for the vote. Yeah, roll call vote to accept the report. Yes. Uh, motion, does Delegate Brown. Okay, um, there's already a motion and a second. So, but that uh, roll call vote to accept the report, uh, Ramona. Yes, uh, Chairman Hania, roll call vote on accepting the report. Honorable Raymond Smith Jr., how do you vote? Green. Thank you. Honorable Raymond Smith Jr. votes green. Honorable Jimmy Yellowhair, how do you vote? Honorable Jimmy Yellowhair, how do you vote? Honorable Amber Kenneth Bakrati, how do you vote? Honorable Amber Kenneth Bakrati. Honorable Nathaniel Brown, how do you vote? And then I, have I vote in favor. And then I have a lot of Thank you. Honorable Nathaniel Brown votes in favor. Honorable Elmer P. Begay, how do you vote? Honorable Elmer P. Begay, how I'll do you vote? Green. Thank you. Honorable I'll vote green. Elmer P. Begay votes green. Honorable Jimmy Yellow here, how do you vote? I'll vote green. Thank you. Honorable Jimmy Yellow here votes green. Honorable Amber Kenneth Bob Crotty, how do you vote? Chairman, we have four members voting in the affirmative. They're opposing. Chairman not voting and one member not voting. Chairman. Okay, thank you. Um, so I roll call vote four in favor. Uh, zero opposed. Chair not voting. We have accepted the report. Thank you, Mr. Platero, for staying on. Okay, the next, uh, going back down again to the uh, next report that we skipped. Uh, was uh uh Peggy, what was the next report? I'm taking the pipe. Are we going back down the uh, agenda? Yes, uh, so I think, uh there was technical okay. difficulties so, for a, a so presenters and then after Tom Platero, who's that? Item C is the update on the FY23 budget process by, by OMB Dominic Vial. Oh yes, uh Mr. Dominic Vial. Yes, sir. Okay, your next um, item C on the report, which is uh, the FY23 budget process. We did um, pass a motion to set our hearing dates for the budget comprehensive budget oversight hearings. But I'll give you the floor to give your report. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chair, committee members. Um, I heard. Um, Chair Henio make reference to the fact that the power has been off and on. Well, down here at the museum, in our section of the museum, we've been out for like two hours. We just got back on just a few minutes ago. So 
I missed most of the discussion over the last couple of hours. Um, but anyway, I'll be very brief. I know it's almost five. The pursuant to the BIM, the and the passage of the budget resolution, the budget process is completely underway now, and all of the branches pursuant to the BNF resolution have gotten their planning allocations. And they're doing their um, their allocations internal to their branches, and then to the respective divisions and so forth. And uh, most of the budgets pursuant to the budget calendar were due last week, but because of um, because of the late start and getting assembling all of this information including the IDC, the excess permanent fund income, and getting the various schedules on fiduciary proprietary special revenue funds. It's uh, taken a bit longer than we first envisioned, not only OMB, but uh, the respective branches and divisions. But nevertheless, everything is underway, and we're um, reviewing budgets. We're shorthanded down here on OMB, in the budget section, as an example, we only have three, three individuals on board with three vacancies. So we're doing our best to to uh, work through that and get get everything staying staying um, staying um, on schedule as best we can. As an example, tomorrow the executive branch budget hearings will start at OPVP. And there's a schedule, so internally that process is underway. Presumably, although we haven't heard from them yet, the two other branches, legislative and judicial, will be um, involved in the same, same activity. So as I said, that that's it, short in a nutshell, and we're moving towards getting all of the budgets reviewed and corrected as soon as possible, and uh, targeting the um, branch budget hearings, and ultimately the branch chiefs and respective staff. They'll go ahead and make final um, decisions on their internal budgets, all leading to the Oversight Committee budget hearings the week after the um, Council Summer Session next week. Mr. Chair, very quickly, very brief, and a minute and a half, that's the update at the moment. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bial, uh, for your brief report. Uh, committee members, is there a motion to accept the report? This delegate Brown motion. Motion. Delegate motion by Delegate Nathaniel Brown to accept the report. Is there a second? Delegate Yellow Hair. Delegate Gay. Okay, second by Delegate Jimmy Yellow Hair. So with that, we do have a motion and second on the floor. Any questions or comments for Mr. Bial? Are there any questions or comments for Mr. Bial? I have to know you uh, call for the question to accept the report. Uh, Ramona, roll call vote. Yes, Chairman, roll call vote on accepting the report. Honorable Raymond Smith Jr. How do you vote? Three. Thank you. Honorable Raymond Smith Jr. votes green. Honorable Jimmy Yellowhair, how do you vote? Delegate Yellowhair votes green. 
Thank you. Honorable Jimmy Yellow here votes green. Honorable Amber Kenneth Bacardi, how do you vote? Honorable Amber Kenneth Bacardi, how do you vote? Uh, Shadow, this is Delegate Cardi. What's the vote on? Yes, uh, Honorable Crotty, the vote is on updating the FY23 budget process presented by Dominic Vial. Uh, yes, thank you, Steph. That keeps muting me. If you could allow me to speak, um, thank you. Uh, so, Shada, this is on a report. I'll vote green. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Amber Kenneth Bach. Crotty votes green. Honorable Nathaniel Brown, how do you vote? I vote green. Thank you. Honorable Nathaniel Brown votes green. Honorable Elmer P. Begay, how do you vote? I vote green. Thank you. Honorable Elmer P. Begay votes green. Chairman, we have five members voting in the affirmative. Zero opposing. Chairman not voting. Chairman? Okay, thank you. Five in favor, zero opposed. Chair not voting. I accepted the report. Okay, next on the list is the uh, Tolani Lake Enterprises. And with that, we did have a WebEx uh, set up for the um, <clears throat> call in. And so, but therefore, we need to make sure that we have everybody still on the call. So, with that, Mr. Uh, Gary by Katie, are you still on the call? Um, yes, I am. Okay, thank you, Mr. By Katie. Aldo, with every, all, everybody that you named off, are they still there? I believe most of them are. Uh, Jacques was going to be our presenter, but I think he's having technical problems with uh, his phone. So uh, it's just more or less going to be a verbal report or um, uh, request, more or less. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'll do with that. Nambo uh, Nation Department of Justice, Mel Rodas. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair. This is Mel. Okay, thank you. And then that, but that WebEx is still good though, when you said out earlier? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. And then uh, Ms. Uh, Lorleen Tapahi? Um, yes, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you. Uh, so therefore we do have everybody, and this is a executive session. <clears throat> so we need a motion and a second to go into executive session to hear this report. Is there a motion? Motion, Delegate Begay. Motion by Delegate Elmer P. Begay. Is there a second? Delegate Yellowhair. Second by Delegate Jimmy Yellowhair. So we do have a motion and a second on the floor to go into executive session. Um, Mr. Mike Kitty, how many minutes or hours or days do you need? Um, we're hoping that should take uh, a few minutes here. Um, first, I'd like to inter may I introduce myself. Okay. So with that, um, like how many, 10, 20, 30 minutes? 15. 15 minutes. Yeah. Is what so that, uh, you know, the Adelgate Elmer PBK, 15 minutes. Is that good? Uh, Abiga, how? Okay. Abiga. Okay. Ado, Nadal, get Jimmy on here. Nadal, Abiga, yeah. We hold in a second. Okay. Abiga, get Okay. Abiga, Abiga. Okay. With that, uh, let's do a roll call vote to go in executive session. Ramona? Yes, uh, Chairman Hanger, roll call vote on going into executive session. Honorable Raymond Smith Jr., how do you vote? Green. Thank you. Honorable Raymond Smith Jr., votes green. Honorable Jimmy Yellow here, how do you vote? I vote green. Thank you. Honorable Jimmy Yellow here, votes green. Honorable Amber Kenneth Bacardi, how do you vote? Honorable Amber Kenneth. This is Delegate Cardi. I vote green. Thank you. 
Thank you. Honorable Amber Kenneth how do you vote screen? Honorable Nathaniel Brown, how do you vote? Delegate Brown votes in favor. Thank you. Honorable Nathaniel Brown votes in favor. Honorable Elmer P. Begay, how do you vote? Honorable Elmer P. Begay, how do you vote? I'll vote green. Thank you. Honorable Elmer P. Begay votes green. Chairman, we have five members voting in the affirmatives or opposing. Chairman, not voting. Chairman. Okay, thank you. Uh, five in favor, zero opposed to go to the executive session. It is 5.03 p.m. and we'll come back out at 5.18. So that we're in executive that session. One. There's a WebEx, sure. WebEx uh, invite that was sent by Mr. Mel Rodas. I think they all call in on that site. Chair sure, Hemiel. This is Peggy. Thank you. Um, Delegate Walker wants to be included in this uh, WebEx call. Oh, and then, and then info. okay, and then don't forget there's two parts to this executive session. That's uh, according to DOJ, their advice. Well, let's let's move to executive session quickly so we can come back out then. Read the other part. Okay. I'm looking for the number.
I don't know who the host is, but you how, have the control board there. How do I get a... Hey, Stan? Yeah. I think they're going to come back to this Zoom meeting after they finish. Yeah, I'm trying to get off the call here. Okay.
Gary, are you still on? Yep, still here. I'm still here too.
Hello, uh, Ramona, are you still there? Yes, uh, Chairman Hino, I'm here. Okay, yeah, I'm uh, back on the slides. I, I went and tried to buy some chips and uh, a Coke, and when I came out, the ride was gone, so I can't get back on, so I figured I'd just come back over to here. Oh, okay. I, I did try to get on that um, webinar, but it kicked me off, so I was just waiting on this line. <laughs> Same here. I, I got kicked. I got my call dropped, and I tried getting back on, and spent like 10 minutes being on hold. So, but I'll be here, though. Okay, I'll be online, too. Mr. Henio, this is on stand. Um, we're we're still on the line too. We're still in this um, uh, Zoom. Okay, Shina, yeah, nah, thank you. Uh, we'll wait for them to come out at executive session. I think Vice Chair Smith has on that side, so uh, we'll wait. Okay.
Ramona, are they still in the executive session? Yes, Chair Henry, we're still in the executive. Okay.
Chair Henry, are you still there? Ramona? Uh, yes, uh, Vice Chairman, I'm here. Is uh, Chair Hanio still online with us? He was earlier. Just, uh, he is online. Okay, we just exit the, yeah. we just exit the um, executive session, so we'll be coming back over and we'll be doing a roll call here shortly. Okay. Chair, I believe we need one more for quorum. And we do have a, a vice chair. I mean, Shazet Elmer Begay is all, also on the call. So you have quorum. Chair Hineo, are you on the call? Yes, I am um, back here. I um, I went inside to get a bag of sunflower seeds and a bottle of Coke. And next thing you know, I couldn't get back in, so I just ended up going back to the site. The committee exited the executive session, Chair Hineo. Oh, I was waiting for that. So I'll be, I'll be, I'm here on the line right now. All right, Chair Hineo, you can go ahead. We have four. Yeah. Okay, we're back on record. Uh, so it's that time. Um, I'll leave some guidance as far as um, who made the motion to exit executive session. Uh, then we'll go from there to take a vote. Mr. Sure, Henio, the motion was uh, Honorable Elmer Gay, second by Honorable Nathaniel Brown. The vote two to one. We exit at 7.09 p.m. Thank you. Now that we're back on record, and uh, we've heard the report in executive session. Um, is there a motion to accept the report? Chair, did you want to do roll call? Oh, yeah. Chair, did you give a motion to Thank you. accept the report? Uh, so let me do roll call to establish a quorum for the record. Uh, uh, Ramon, if you would do a roll call, please. Sure, Chairman Hingo, roll call for the Budget and Finance Committee. 
of the Navajo Nation Council, Honorable Jamie Henyo. I'm present. Thank you, Honorable Jamie Henyo is present. Honorable Raymond Smith Jr. Present. Thank you, Honorable Raymond Smith Jr. is present. Honorable Jimmy Yellow here. I'm present. Thank you, Honorable Jimmy Yellow here is present. Honorable Amber Kenneth Bokkrati. Honorable Amber Kenneth Bokkrati. Honorable Nathaniel Brown. Honorable Nathaniel Brown. Honorable Elmer P. Begay. I will agree. Thank you. Honorable uh, Amber Kenneth Bokkrati. Honorable Nathaniel Brown. Chairman, we have four members present upon roll call and two members not answering roll call. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you for the uh, uh, roll call. We do have a quorum, so let's continue. Uh, there's a motion to accept the report by instrument. Uh, Delegate Elmer P. V. Gay, is there a second? Is there a second? There's a motion to accept the report by Delegate Elmer P. Begay. Is there a second? Going once. I have a motion by Delegate Elmer P. Begay to accept the report. Is there a second? Going twice. Motion by Delegate Elmer P. Begay to accept the report. There is a second going three times. Uh, Chair, this is Delegate Cardi. I'll second. Dr. Sheena, Sheena, thank you. Uh, second by Delegate Elmer, I mean, Amber Kinesla Cardi. <coughs> Delegate Amber Kinesla Cardi. So with that, uh, we do have a motion second on the report and pretty much heard a lot of the uh, information in the uh, executive session, so therefore, uh, are there any uh, open questions for the open uh, session here? Uh, then I uh, call for the question to accept uh, the report. Uh, speaker, uh, excuse me, uh, Chairman, this is Doug Gale uh, Yellow here. Doug Yellow here. Um, yeah. Are there any questions question for the open um I guess um, back on record. So anything that was discussed in the executive session should remain in the executive session. So go ahead, Shinanda. Okay. Um, are you uh, well, not very satisfied with the questions that we raised? But uh, about a lot of just responding, a lot of control. It should be a piece of all, piece of misuse of funds. It all your Julia and Hello. A hotel and not the Tolani the Enterprise. Please be careful on your 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 discussion. What your if you anything that's in the effective session, please be brought on your comment. Uh, hold on, I'll get Omer, I mean, uh, Jimmy over here. Thank you, Chair. Um, Delegate Cardi, I'll 
I'd just like to make a uh, maybe a directive uh, to um, um, OOC. I think um, the contact person that was given to us is the Emerson, and how they could uh, maybe the, um, get together, um, try to contact the. Um, uh, we can do that after we vote to accept the report. Oh, Gushina, all right. So with that, uh, if there are no questions or comments, I'll uh, proceed to roll call vote to accept the report. Uh, Ramona, if you would lead us in the roll call vote. Sure, Chairman Hingo, roll call vote on accepting the report. Honorable Raymond Smith Jr., how do you vote? Three. <laughs> Thank you. Honorable Raymond Smith Jr. votes green. Honorable Jimmy Yell here. How do you vote? I vote green. Thank you. Thank you. Honorable Jimmy Yell here votes green. Chair Hineo, I think she can. Okay. Um, Peggy, go ahead and do the roll call vote. Okay, this is a roll call vote for the closeout of CARES funds regarding the Tolani Lake Enterprise. Uh, Vice Chair Smith, how do you vote? Green. Thank you. Uh, Jimmy L. Hare, how do you vote? I vote green. Thank you. And then uh, Elmer P. Begay, how do you vote? I vote green. Thank you. Um, Nathaniel Brown, how do you vote? Nathaniel Brown, how do you vote? Amber Crotty, how do you vote? Delegate Amber Crotty, how do you vote? Okay, um, Daniel Brown, how do you vote? Amber Crotty, how do you vote? You have three members voting in favor, Chair. I think I lost three in favor, they're opposed, Chair, not voting. Uh, motion carries to accept the report. Uh, moving further, back to uh, Doug Elmer Begay. Uh, you have the floor for your director. I, again, none of them. The, Terhenio, I just wanted to um, um, make it a uh, um, directive, and we listened to the the the, the, the procession, and uh, or some a lot of clarification needs to be done, and, I did that. and then working in cooperation from um, OOC and also to uh, uh, to United Lake Enterprises. I know that we found out that uh, the sightings. The site that, that uh, there was a uh, sighting that was um, made by the former um, uh, Baker Tilly, that was a former uh, 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 finance uh, financing uh, firm, the Navajo Nation, but they're no longer here. So um, then, where did the OOC just interpret that? And what was decided? And so I think um, I'm not sure if. I, I believe that I think OOC should really um, um, assist, coordinate with the um, uh, Lake Enterprises. How to, how to straighten out and get to to get to the resolution. I know we we heard we heard uh, the uh, um, some misunderstandings and then some um, some of these uh, missing documents receipts and things like that. I think. How do we get to the res how do we get to uh, to resolve this? What's the resolution? So I think uh, uh, I believe that uh, if they know if the OOC knows how to go about it to correct it, 
I think they need to work with Tenlai uh, 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 Enterprises. So either you indicate or they will be the director made uh, that they need to help assist uh, the Navajo uh, people uh, that were really working for for the people. So I know that it's hard uh, under the uh, uh, working with the federal funds and regulations. So ADHD indicator, and then um, DOJ should assist you from there. That nobody uh, really mentioned how who owes who from DOJ was going to be the contact person for that. ADHD, yeah. so that will be my director. Um, Daniel, thank you. Uh, were you able to contact legislative council to write put that in writing for you? Uh, no, I didn't. I didn't write it down. Okay. Um, Ms. Tapahi, are you still online with us? I am, Mr. Chair. Okay. Um, th th there's a directive that needs to be. That is uh, sponsored by Delegate Omar P. B. Gay, which is for the uh, Office of the Controller, uh, now National Department of Justice, to uh, work with Tulane Lake Enterprises to resolve the situation that's currently at hand and uh, to uh, complete the closeout of the CARES Fund. So that's a directive that you could put that in writing, and um, then we'll go from there. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, is there a deadline for that? Shanda, uh, Delegate Elmer PBG, is there a deadline for that? I would say that uh, as soon as possible, maybe the, the, they can report it back to us at the next um, budget and finance meeting. Uh, August 2nd, August 1st is our next BNF committee meeting. So, so it's going to be August 1st, then maybe they can report back to us, start working with them. Thank you. You know, by August 1st, uh, Mr. Pai. August what? I'm sorry. August 01. August 1st, okay. okay with that motion for directive. Delegate Yellowhair, second. Delegate Jimmy Yellowhair, second. So we do have a motion and second on the directive. And with that, committee members, there any questions, comments on the directive? Uh, then I do the roll call vote to accept the directive. Ramona? I guess uh, Chairman Hindio, roll call vote on the directive. Honorable Raymond Smith Jr., how do you vote? Green. Thank you. Honorable Raymond Smith Jr., votes green. Honorable Jimmy Yellowhair, how do you vote? Delegate Yellowhair, votes green. Thank you. Honorable Jimmy Yellowhair, votes green. Honorable Amber Kenneth Bach how do you vote? Honorable Amber Kenneth Bacardi, how do you vote? Honorable Nathaniel Brown, how do you vote? Honorable Nathaniel Brown, how do you vote? Honorable Elmer P. Begay, how do you vote? I vote green. Thank you. Honorable Elmer P. Begay votes green. Honorable Amber Kenneth Bacardi, how do you vote? Honorable Nathaniel Brown, how do you vote? Chairman, we have three members voting and the affirmatives are opposing and two members not voting, Chairman. Three in favor, zero opposed, chair not voting, director uh, has a due pass. Thank you for the roll call vote, Ramona. With that, we have completed our agenda for today. Uh, last item is written analysis, uh, motion to uh, adjournment. Motion to adjourn, Delegate Begay. Motion to adjourn by Delegate Elmer P. Begay. Is there a second?
Delegate Yellowhair, motion second. Okay, second by Delegate Jimmy Yellowhair. So would you have a motion and a second on the floor to adjourn? Uh, that uh, is a long day, 7.30 p.m. So that, we'll call the vote to adjourn. Yes, Chairman Junior, roll call vote to adjourn. Honorable Raymond Smith Jr., how do you vote? Three. Thank you. Honorable Raymond Smith Jr. votes green. Honorable Jimmy Yellowhair, how do you vote? I'll vote green. Thank you. Honorable Jimmy Yellowhair votes green. Honorable Amber Kennesbach Crotty, how do you vote? Honorable Amber Kennesbach Crotty, how do you vote? Honorable Nathaniel Brown, how do you vote? Honorable Nathaniel Brown, how do you vote? Honorable Elmer P. Begay, how do you vote? I vote green. Thank you. Honorable Elmer P. Begay votes green. Chairman, we have three members voting in the affirmative. Zero opposing. Chairman, not voting. Chairman. Hey, thank you for the roll call vote. Uh, three in favor, zero opposed. Turn not voting. Uh, we are adjourned at 7.30 p.m. I can't launch the Budget Finance Committee members for uh, being on the call all day long. Yes. And then I'll just end up for the 24th Navajo Nation Council that's still here with us. And then uh, our uh, assistant uh, legislative advisor, Ms. Peggy Nakai, our legislative reporter, Ms. Uh, Nelson, <clears throat> and all those that were on the call with us.